And a warm welcome to today's coverage of the 2023 Triton Super High Roller Series from the JW Marriott right here. Grosvenor House on Park Lane, London, England. Alina Jad alongside Randy Liu, and we are full steam ahead, it feels like, at this point here in the series. Randy, you and Henry obviously rounding things out yesterday. Very exciting stuff. Don't give it away, but we're going to be taking a little bit of a replay I don't know how you're going to talk about it without giving it away. Should we just go to the tape? Let's go to, to the, the tape. Yeah, let's, let's do that. All right. We're going to take you to yesterday's coverage. It really was something else. This was the 40K Mystery Bounty event. 38 players made it down to day two. What a treat we had on our hands, though, in a very protracted final table in particular when we got down to three-handed. Here's how it all went down. Johannes Stravar, who had the chip lead for the bulk of this final table, it felt, up until his departure, would open a pot with ace-queen suited, and then out of the big blind, one cannot fault the stack of Kiat Lu Chun with the blinds at 50 and 100 for thinking a pushback on a chip leader would be a good idea. But unfortunately for him, he was dominated, and the flop left him exasperated, and the turn left him drawing dead as fist bumps got issued. 3.2 headed Strava's way and $82,000 Chun's way, courtesy of an eighth place finish. Seven then remained, and of course, all eyes were fixed upon Phil Ivey, whose participation here at this final table drew so much attention. On this occasion, it drew the attention of Alex Boyka's ace four of hearts, which was bottom pair on a nine high flop. Nine paired on the turn. Everything seemed like it would be smooth sailing until suddenly a tidal wave in the form of an eight capsizing Boyka's hopes as the Belarusian took down seventh for $111,000. Then Daniel Devoris, ace deuce, facing a small blind jam from Ivy, asking for all of it. Really took his time before ultimately deciding that the range of hands, especially in this format, that Ivy would be willing to jam with from that small blind could be performing poorly against an ace-deuce on the flop. The fives held on the turn. Devoris was drawing to a chop in the form of a heart, a clean winner if he had hit an ace. And regrettably, none of the above as he was left to claim $149,000 as the rest of his stack was claimed by Ivy. And then Eric Wasserson, the Triton first-timer, who will be playing in the Luxon Pay $250,000 Invitational later on here at this festival. The absolute coldest of decks. Aces for Straver, kings for Wasserson, who looked stunned. The flop was no help, nor was the turn. And Eric could smile, knowing that $190,000 would be headed his way regardless. Fifth place finish. But obviously, a nasty way to depart. Leaving behind four players. And then Strava, who we mentioned, had the big stack for a lot of the run, found himself in turn with the under pair. Nines against Jacks. King, queen, three board. It all looked bad. The turn stayed the same, and the Dutchman needed Nina to pay him a visit on the river. She was nowhere to be found as his stack was absorbed by Ivy, who began to really look like he was in a good spot with three remaining. Starver taking down the 190000 for fourth, of course. Then Chidwick was among the top three, found himself all in with 10-5 against Queen-3 as... Stacks leaned out with the blinds at 300 and 600,000. Espenjorstad went from three threes to four on the turn as Chidwick denied a title. $287,000 went his way for that third place finish. They played three handed for many hands, well over 60 of them by my count. And then it was Ivy's King Deuce suited up against King Jack as Jorstad had him covered. The tug of war looked like it might come to a close here in a 13.5 million chip pot. And then all of a sudden on the turn, Ivy picking up the flush draw. Needed a heart. A deuce would have done the trick. And instead, the ace of clubs would send Phil Ivy home in second. $435,000 going his way. But it was Espen Jorstad, who is no stranger to winner's photos, 
World Series of Poker main event champion. So excited was Henry, obviously, here at the desk. Personal friends with him. And 639000 for the victory and the title. But you guys were treated to that epic four down to one that really just had everybody gasping for air. Yes, myself included, of course. Um, you know, we were four-handed. Johanna Stravo had a massive chip mm -hmm. lead against the other three uh, phenomenal players. But then his stack would dwindle. Other players would double up. You would see that our champion, uh, Jorstad, getting down to about 2.2 .2 big blinds, and he would run it up, run it back down to the bottom. And everyone maintained, took the chip lead at some point with a massive increase uh, above the second place guy, and then they lost their chips. It was just big hands. Bad hands getting there all in pre-flop, you know, big folds, big laydowns, and, and big moves. I, I mean, it's just incredible. I think somebody mentioned that pocket aces got dealt 10 times when we <laughs> were forehanded and below. I mean, that's just an insane bit of variance there. And obviously, we saw the kings into the aces. A lot of big pair versus under pair, just cooler type of spots. And then the lead changing hands with a lot of double ups, things just really drew out, but it was a real delight, obviously, for those who had the opportunity to witness it live. I want to focus a bit on Espen. Uh, you know, this is a man who you might have been tempted to think has won the World Series of Poker main event, Randy. What is there left to prove? And yet, he decided not to just sit back, drop the mic. He's come to Triton. He has decided to try to really cement a sense of legacy. And I know for us, it's obviously nice to see someone that cares really, truly, deeply about uh, building a resume and leaving a mark on the game. We know there's a lot of players who they go to World Series the main event, they win it, and then you know, they, they've won so much money, they're, they're pretty much done, they'll play here and there. Uh, but Espen is one of those guys that wanted to kind of make a name for himself. Like, look, I want to play against the best. Where do you play against the best? It's the Triton Super High Roller Series. And, you know, you saw him talk about, well, to my left is Makita, to my right is Jason Kuhn, and we got Phil Ivey, and he knows that he can compete with them. It means so much to him to have won this title against this field, especially in an epic three- or four-handed play. And, you know, it's just... You can see that he was very humble about it, but very proud yeah. of his achievement. Yeah, I think that's a really good way to describe it, actually. And he should be proud because Phil Ivey is a lot to take on, heads up. So experienced, uh, a career that really has kind of transcended multiple eras in poker. He was denied, of course, the chance to join Makita Badziakuski on the four-time winner list of Triton champions. Still stuck on three, courtesy of Espen denying him. But the fans, the chat, I mean, is there anybody that they want to see more at a Triton than Phil Ivey? Look, we had polls running in the chat, right? Like, who do you want to win? Phil Ivey was, you know, obviously the phenomenal favorite. <laughs> and we even had d in the chat watching uh, the stream and he was commenting Sorry. like oh man that's that, that's a good play or whatnot and you know you know it's important when all of the pros who don't normally watch these kind of feeds are in there and just excited to watch their the favorite player yeah. Phil Ivey go to war you would think that they would be incredibly apathetic they sit and play a ton of poker they've watched plenty of poker what is there left and yet Dean Eggs right there to cheer his good buddy on from back in the day let's zoom out a little bit further from the top two to the top three as Chidwick who was denied the Ivan Liao Player of the Year award in season two courtesy of that incredible run by Jason Kuhn in the last stop he ended up dethroning uh, Chidwick. Ten podiums in terms of top three finishes, but only one win for Stevie. You think that that's the kind of thing that's even entering his mind when he gets down cl so close to a title? Look, we know Stephen Chidwick is one of those players that always plays his best on every single hand, um, but you know he is also susceptible to variance, and he is still clearly winning. He's getting his top three up prizes all the time, was supposed to win that uh, Ivan Lau Player of the Year award last season. Unfortunately, Jason Kuhn did take him out. But I don't think he's annoyed. I, it's just a little bit, uh, maybe he is a little bit annoyed, but he's the type of person who's got good composure and will always play his best poker. And you know what? Maybe he'll get a title I here. Mean, first off, let's go on the record of saying if pieces of Chidwick are available, sign both of us up here at the <laughs> desk immediately because that's going to be a profitable investment. But obviously, it is a bit surprising when you look up and you see just one lone title given how strong a player he is. Okay, we do still have the bounty draw from that event to come. That's going to take place tonight during the dinner break of the 50K. That event number five is underway right now. Prizes are going to range from 40K to 400K. I believe Espen has five bounties in total. The expected value of each of those envelopes, Randy? 70,000. I mean, we're talking about he should make 
350k to add to the 639 this could be an almost cool million that espen walks away with if the numbers kind of uh, add up but the most envelopes the chip leader for the bulk of it strava how many he had nine, and, you know, he was on pace to get even more, although he did bail out in fourth. Yeah, I mean, nine envelopes is going to be wild to see him squeezing, and we do have some fun coming your way. We'll get <laughs> to some of the bounty rules once the uh, draw happens. We certainly hope that you will join us for that. Now then, let us turn our attention to the matter at hand, that which we are here to cover today and deliver coverage of. It is event number five, the 50K eight-handed event. 112 total entries were compiled, 73 of them unique, 43 players coming back for day two after a relatively short day one. Randy? Yeah, it was a shorter day one. You know, like sometimes there are some adjustments in the schedule, but I think everyone just kind of wants to see what happens with Phil Ivey in that last event. Maybe that was what it had to do with. Maybe other things. Who knows? 20 players were paid. Min cash is going to be 73,000. I say were paid, are going to be paid. First place is going to be 1.35 million as suddenly we're breaking the seven figure barriers and moving forward as the buy ins escalate throughout each and every Triton series. Uh, this festival, of course, drawing so much interest uh, through the convenience of being in london part of it a lot of poker players call this neck of the woods home and flights pretty easy from anywhere you are on the world to get down here the chip leader ignacio moron chavero a guy we've seen at the top of the boards he was there in the 40k at the top for a while yeah he definitely was i believe he got super cooler than and um phil ivy hit like a jack uh, to win like a multi-way all in I that was the jacks queens ace king hand. i believe that was the huge one. right there on the final table bubble yeah, so obviously he's clearly disappointed, but uh, is clearly uh, he's currently at the top in this 50K. He's looking to kind of have some redemption. One of the really strong players out there. Hasn't made a name for himself yet at the Triton Series, but I know he's a very accomplished cash game, high-stakes online player. And uh, the excitement isn't going to stop at Trevetto's procedures because we've got the return of who else but Dao Min Fu, the man we call DMP affectionately, his first event here in London. But why Ken Yong? This is a stop where we expect him to perform very well. Wykins had a good history here in London, and if you look at it, he got first in the No Limit main event, as well as second in the Short Deck main event. So you bring in big buy-ins, you, you come out with Wykin Young, and I'm sure he's hungry to kind of make another deep run here. Yeah, no doubt about it. We've got a Triton first-timer up toward the top of the leaderboards, by the way, in Germany's Leon Sturm. He's played a few events thus far, failed to cash, but obviously making a bit of a mark. Hot on the heels of Chavetto is Sturm with $1.2 in front of him, and then Wykin, 940000 rounding things out. Let's get a look now at the Triton Poker Plus app, where we find the two featured tables, which we will be bringing your way. Let me zoom in first and foremost on Table 5, where we find the Year of the Notch, DMP, Strava, Holtz. I mean, just look at this. Chock full of prospective excitement. I'm really excited about the player on the top left over there, Tan Xuan. That is a man who will put you to the test. It doesn't matter who you are. You're, you're a pro. You're, you're a recreational player. This is the guy that w just wants to see you squirm in your seat. Yeah, he really does. And he is one that won't squirm. Doesn't matter what situation <laughs> you put him in. Cash, tournament, really doesn't matter. Okay, then. Let's turn our attention to the secondary feature, which is the red table. See if I can get my app out there. And that's where we find boss, Paul Pua, along with the likes of Smith, Seidel, Greenwood, JNT, Ole Shemian, Alex Panikovs, and the world's finest cappuccino stirrer in Garagnani. I don't know if you remember it, but really a delightful moment. Not perhaps the thing to focus on about nice. him, but when you, look <laughs> at that, nice, <laughs> when you look at that landscape there, boss is going to have his hands full, isn't he? Yeah, you know, obviously uh, a star-studded cast, as you can see. Um, big names like uh, Seidel, who one of these old-school players who tend to rise to these Triton stops. And JNT is always one of those guys who can make some peculiar plays and throw off your opponents. And looks like he's uh, stacked up to 795K quite nicely. Yeah, JNT, 795,000, 53 big blinds. And him with Tan Xuan would be something, wouldn't it? If we get the two of those guys <laughs> locking horns in a few stop spots. Redraw is going to take place at 24, once again at 16, and then at the final table as well. As we get set to send you right down to the arena for today's coverage, certainly glad to have you with us. Randy and I will be here for multiple levels, and uh, hopefully you will as well. And there it is. The first look at the chip counts at the feature. Barbero, the Argentine, 800,000, going to be the mayor in this town. Fedor Holst, who picked up a title already here in the 25K. 51 bigs looking to threaten for another one. Jamil Wakil, 
under the Canadian banner, third in chips over here. Had the chance to chat with him a little bit yesterday as he and Ponikovs were railing that heads up match between Ivy and Yorstad. Very composed and gentlemanly young man, but I would imagine he's looking to decompose the competition out there. Good luck, guys. Good luck. Do you think Fedor parlayed some of the first place money into that suede jacket? You, you, you think he literally just bought it right after he took the W? I mean, listen. If you put first place money in my back pocket, I might make my way through Mayfair, New Bond Street, visit some of the boutiques. You know, you and I went to New Bond Street earlier today but for a very different reason. The much affordable, more affordable reason? Yeah, I just had to repair my suitcase. <laughs> I wasn't buying anything. <laughs> 28 pounds, the quote, by the way. <laughs> 30,000 on the button, the open from Schwen, as you start to get a sense of what he likes to do. Dominated by Barbero, who with Jack-8 suited, is going to flatten. Then Wakil wakes up to the aces. You know what you like to do with aces? Shoot it up. Yeah. How, how high caliber is 130 here as we see both of these guys folding regardless based on their hands? Normal sizing, right? Not anything yeah. that indicates... This is one of those spots where it looks pretty squeezy, right? You know, it's dealer button versus small blind. You're like, please, just disrespect me one time. Yeah. Hey, Tan, I've heard about you. It'd be really nice if you decided to earn your reputation in this pot. I'd love to see some Johannes Strava redemption have to have a after last well. night. Thank you. Cold if you have it. Yeah, I want a glass of ice too. Can you bring me change? Thank you. Give me 15, one five. Schwen back at it. This time from the cutoff. Barbero not wanting to play the ace eight off from the button, but did call with the jack eight suited from the small. Randy, is that inconsistent? It's two different style of hands in a sense that the jack eight suited kind of has more playability. It also doesn't have the reverse implied odds of, oh, an ace flop and my opponent's holding bigger. Mm -hmm. So with the jack eight suited, it also has this little straight draw flush draw kind of situation. It, it most people don't play offsuit aces that isn't like ace 10 plus. I don't know, man. You, you, you're checking out the sweat jacket. I, I, I think maybe. You think it's fresh minted? I think it's fresh. It looks unworn. Should we check for a tag? <laughs> he wouldn't be the guy to buy and return, would he? <laughs> it's like, well, after this event. <laughs> no. Pocket eights here. Min raise. Blinds 10 and 15,000. 15K big blind Annie, by the way, not to be overlooked. And no takers until Tan Schwen. Ace four suited in the hijack. Made the call. Wheel draw, but no heart on board. One over card to the eights here with 100,000 in the middle. Yeah, the ace four will likely continue anyways, despite no heart on board. Draw to a clean straight. Does see a check. See if he checks this back or fires away. If you do fire the flop, you do multi-barrel to turn at a decent frequency to kind of kick out these pocket pairs loaded in the queen. As played, would expect that Fedor continues with two eights. So 
with a check call of 35,000 and a second over card rolling off. 170 in the middle, another check from Fedor. He's playing pot control, and I doubt that Holtz doesn't know what he's up against here in Tanshuan. It's quite interesting as technically it's a decent card to barrel, but it's hard for you to represent the king as played. Really nice card for Fedor Holtz. Yeah, perhaps even harder now that a second king has rolled off and we've checked back. Let's see if Fedor wants to fire. If he's firing, it's more for a block bet, trying not to be faced with a big bet, but usually check is the standard play as he does. Nice win. I think with some frequency, Fedor expects that Schwen is going to be getting after some pots light there. Maybe not with that specific run out, but always nice to give a guy who you know is got a little more heart maybe than your average <laughs> opponent. He's, he's got a, a lot more heart, maybe too. Some rope. You know, obviously Fedor is an amazing player, but a confident Fedor off of a fresh win, that's, that's even tougher. Yeah. Thank you very much. Really enjoyed the uh, winner's interview with him at the table because, you know, we touched on the idea of apathy amongst pros who are kind of, you know, so used to being in and around poker as we see Schwen with the ace-queen offsuit opening. Actually have some joy out there. And, and it really was authentic. Fedor was exactly where he wants to be. It's, it's a guy who knows what his passion is and loves the game, even after all the ups and downs. Um, and there's still a lot left in the tank, you know, <laughs> much to the uh, chagrin, perhaps, of uh, everyone else out there who's got to deal with him. You know, they're like, <laughs> buddy, how about retirement? Have you considered yeah. that? I mean, he did for a little bit, yeah. and they were happy. He comes back. Multiple final tables, now a win. Here he is, defending against a Schwen Open on this occasion as they lock up once more. Backdoor wheel and diamond prospects, but the ace and the king make things less attractive as the 35K C bet from top pair allows Tan to claw back. Some of what he passed along earlier. I was a little short. Very strong. You? Good, quick. But good. <clears throat> I had a haircut before. <laughs> so I didn't have that much time. Where do you get it, the haircuts? I'll tell you in a second. First, let me try to clip Joseph some people with this A7. What? Joseph of Mayfair. It's cool. <laughs> Jack 10 suited for DMP. Looks like he may have paid a visit to the Burberry boutique. Yeah, I didn't see the collar up earlier. Maybe he's also a little chilly out there. London, Barbary, yeah. He's going to get cooled off by this Glass. ace king. Barbero apparently also noticing. We all got the same mind. How much? Just not the same bankroll. That's the problem. Three bet, 260,000. To be expected. Let's see us. Dalman Fu wants to get involved. It's definitely a type of hand where you kind of want to see some flops. Jack-10 suited. It is a quite a large sizing. But we know Dal's not shy of action. He's playing from the middle, which is always troublesome as your ranges are weaker than normal. Good discipline there. Yeah, you know... Especially 
in position. That's the kind of hand that we certainly would expect Al Minfu to continue with, but maybe the sizing was just a bit too big. It was quite big, but remember, in the last stop, he looked exhausted in some of these uh, tournaments, but here it seems much more fresh. Right the well, at that last stop, there were some well. cash games that really went around the horn virtually right up until the next day's tournaments were starting. So people were very light on sleep. This time around, though, it looks like DMP has gotten some shut-eye. Ready to go. Bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Fedor right at home, 9-7 off suit. Tan's got the dominating seven. The speed at which he three bet this A7 offsuit. Tan does not care who is opening his pot. He's got Fedor dominated and into the muck. There's nine seven offsuit, not interested at the higher price. Yeah, he does play rather quickly, too. I, I mean, and it's kind of that street poker instinct vibe that you get oh from God, him. He's like, yeah, listen, I'm not running numbers today. in my head. I'm just oh, looking yeah, over. I'm, I'm from, reading the spot. The I'm reading you. Oh, you Let's go. Street uh, poker no, is a pretty good description. Some bad movement, movement, movement at yeah. the gym. And it hasn't been. Yeah, I did a lot of massage, but still, like yesterday, I did again. And it's not helping. No, I did again, how you call it, and press, and I was not ready for it. Yeah. So stupid. Perhaps a little injury at the gym. It's not that bad, though. This is why I stay away I from these places. Great. Sometimes it tricks you. But you, you do the massage better, part of it. Absolutely. Quickly, I think recovery is important. Again. <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm recovering from, but... I've been doing some, like, yoga and stuff. So. Oh, that's good. Like, stretching, not really. Yeah. Yoga, Just some... Raise and take it there for Fedor. Where do you live now? Um, I don't know. I have an apartment in Vienna, and um, my stuff is in Vegas. You live near Fedor? Not really. No? Which district is here? Kind of. That's where I live for American. Oh, you do? You live with the... Pardon? Any of the guys there? Fabian or no? It's close. Yeah. But for you guys, it's... Yeah. But there's two other clubs there. But they never travel to live shows. Oh, really? Who are they? I don't know them. Yeah, Adrian and Hannes. Where where you live there? Um, I live on the main street. It's very easy. Yeah, I'm, you know, uh, Redback. Yeah. Uh, so it's the main street and then the side street in it. It's a good coffee shop on the corner. Yeah. Cool. Or a coffee road too. You a fan uh, of Vienna? Yeah, um, there, you know, I haven't there, right? been as we sit there, back and kind of soak there, up the I'm conversation there. Barcelona. I rented with him. Mm -hmm. Fedor. It's cool. We have a place in Europe. I, li I love it. Ace high against the sixes, which defended the big for Wakil, who checks. I'm a bit tired of America. Did you live in America before? Or? I mean, I was living there. But... I mean, I like it, but I don't like it during the the summer. See, bit of 25k gets summer called. In summer in Europe is the best. It's way better, and winter is for me is way better in America. Yeah. Like a million times. Mm -hmm. I just made some I want to be on the summer in Europe and in the winter in USA. The only flush draw. Yeah. That's my plan. Yeah, it's a good plan. All the games, you have like the best, like mountains. The mountains there are better than here. But, like bigger altitude, probably better powder too. In America? Yeah. 
better snow. So I'm just gonna do that. I heard Austria has some good places, so I need to go check. You guys go so over the stuff? Uh, I ski. I went into Austria a couple of times. River card? Uh, Brings the flush. I don't have too much to compare it with because I only went uh, in Austria. But yeah, it's good, but it can be quite busy on the slopes, I guess. I don't know if it's. Uh, and yet it is Fedor who is betting 45,000. might be Randy. bigger, uh, more space for everyone. And. Yeah, I need to be a bit lucky with the weather. So. One. Yeah, yeah, but it's not that the busy slopes is everywhere. Wakil, impressively picking it yeah, off. You should try it out. They, they have some close ones to Vienna as well. Yeah, then, probably not. I'm not going to spend any time on the winter in Europe. Yeah, OK, fair enough. I'm not going to go. No, no, no. I'm going to South America in December for a month, and then I go back to America. At least there is something like a, a triton or like a a triton or a, what is it or a EPT. EPT, but what? If Prague, but then uh, no, I'm not going you, to Prague. You have to win thing. I'm not going to Prague. Go Vegas. I go. Yeah, I'm gonna maybe go to. I don't know what I'm gonna do honestly. Maybe I go to first World Series, and then I go to main. Um, Vegas, the 10K yeah. men. That's what everybody's gonna do, I think. You gonna Oasis? Right. Yeah, I, I wanna go win and Fedor? I will wait for the schedules to see if I go. Uh, 125. Um, first. Opening to 30, and Wakil now re raising from the small blind. He got aces two times so far. Yeah. Not that anyone's counting. I'm sure, he is. Yeah, I, I haven't seen the schedule either. But the win is very, very good, that one. And there is a million dollar bind. Yeah, they have a lot of high stack stuff, I think. Uh, no, you know, I will not play. I just talked to Phil Nagy, he told me he's gonna put me in. Yeah. <laughs> well, on camera. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you, Phil, for buying me in, in the one million. I appreciate it. Thanks for the <laughs> for the free roll. Jack 10 offsuit. Thanks for the raisable hand in the cutoff, says Barbero. No Jack 7 here in the big blind. He's out. Calm yeah, action so far. Fuck. Yeah. I don't. I, I, I would. By the way, I, I just can't. I think it could possibly be it's like. It's hard to have King succeed. The worst case scenario is like, hey, you can't come back to Spain or something. But like, even that would completely shock me. I think other countries have more of a concern if like you don't pay taxes. First check in on the secondary feature. You have no claim to it. Where it looks like things are chatty here as well. Uh, yeah, because I, I didn't know. Life is tough. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's gonna work out. I know. Mm. My plan was yesterday was a lot of exploits, today just GTO. Just GTO? Yeah. Five just. Dan Smith. King seven suited, cut off. Sometimes when you play GTO you're exploiting. Looks like he's not rocking the bagels cap True. today, it's unless he got it, it in multiple it colors. Oh, it was a different seven. color before, right? It wasn't yeah. this brownish tan. <laughs> if this hat says cream cheese on it, <laughs> uh? <laughs> I'm just saying. Seidel. Charlie Carroll is going to be very happy about that. <laughs> Flats the button after the, Where is he, by the open way? limp oh, from the right. cutoff. He's growing some Randy, which he did. King he seven. For limp. I don't know. He he did know. Unorthodox on stuff. Mm -hmm. He did? Busted very early. Huh? Busted very early. Ah, didn't rebuy it. 
I interact with him a lot on uh, Twitter, but uh, <laughs> many times he will just do want. Do you do? Huh? You want five, four, like, four interview board. or podcast with him? No, no. <laughs> Three separate King X's. Just, like respond to his tweets. Only one of which. In a good way. Rates to proceed. I mean, not out of J and T. Although it's a check from Greenwood's top pair for I the mean, time being. You're arguing; it's still not disrespectful. But I mean, no. I, I so you support? You supporting I, or arguing? No, I'm, not, I'm not supporting or anything. I'm just, uh, you know, he says something. I, I just. What about that? What about this? Uh, ah, okay. Give your point of view. Yeah. So you're following a lot of social media. After the round of checks, a delightful I'm turn card for Greenwood as the queen <laughs> pairs. I'm What's only JNT getting that's strange threading? information from my students, you know, when someone posting something. Don't blame them, by the way. Don't blame Greenwood either for trying to get somebody world. to stab at this. <laughs> and perhaps his favorite customer. I can imagine. And so far as JNT can be like a little that, bit right? sticky. Yeah, I would say Spade like draw. Or Smith. Of what he <laughs> <laughs> flat. And the fact Very, that he limped uh, pre. Exclusive. Check post. Now all of a sudden flatting when the queen pairs on the turn. Might draw a little bit of attention from the field. Yeah, it's quite hard to interpret what kind of range he might be up against. But in the end, though, Greenwood does have trip queens, nine kicker. Dan Smith's got 155k back. Greenwood doesn't want to let these two players get a free shot at a spade, a straight draw. So he's going to come in for check raise. <coughs> JNT kind of trapped in the middle. He still has to worry about Dan Smith behind him, so he's going to lay it down. The way the action is, it kind of seems like Greenwood's got a Queen X at a pretty high frequency, so the king wouldn't be an out too often here. But if you can remove full houses from Greenwood's range, which you can't do 100% of the time, but make them improbable as played, then you have a greater argument for proceeding with the spade draw, knowing that you're not drawing dead. It seems like he's trying to calculate how often he is up against a boat and drawing dead. If he makes the spades, is he going to get paid off? Is there ever a chance he's up against the bigger spade draw and he's just drawing extremely slim? He's got 10 big blinds behind. Call is made for the extra 65 as JNT ducks out. And this is a bit of a problem card potentially, Randy, on the river for Dan Smith. Yeah, because Dan does pick up a little bit of showdown value in case he was up against some kind of bigger spade, draw to ace of spades that whiffed out. Big decision here actually for Greenwood as his kicker is unlikely to, to, to ever be better if, in case he's up against another queen. Perhaps he checks sometimes to induce from the spades. Does he value bet himself? Looks like he's going to value bet himself, hoping he's up against some kind of slow play cutoff limp. not to go, I guess. But, like, for you, it's... I mean, for me, it's worse. I'm European. No, but, like, if... If you receive word that everything's fine, you just go. 260k, the jam sizing. Yeah, note the way Greenwood there set himself no up for this pot size right. one SPR situation. Next to it, well, whatever. the actual yeah, truth is he's only got 90k behind. It's nice to Smith. walk in Barca. It's like probably Not exactly. uh, 90k effective, yes, yeah. an oversight. I mean, I, I can hang for like. Wasn't it given, though, that that would be the case given while, JNT was still involved when he made here. the check raise on the turn? True. Uh, I don't know, just go somewhere, wait, and then. I miss home. I know, me too. 
I pretty much haven't been at home since Bahamas. I was there two weeks or three weeks. So, a lot of travel. You've been in Vegas like two weeks, right? You can feel Dan Smith's wait. pain here. The price he's being laid went well, and then I is good. Mm. The problem from is the price I'm is so good. In the, in the call. And he does make the call, and good that'll luck. be that for Dan Smith, who issues the GGs. Short-lived day in the 50K. Limp, 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 limp. Call for Dan limp, Smith. Limp. Check, 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 check. I can confirm well, it's cool. not a cream Do cheese hat, Holly. No. Oh, yeah, yeah, I just call. need free flop. Limp. We could have hope. Okay. Call. <laughs> You're like this. <laughs> oh. You haven't seen before? No. It's so nice. Yeah. I was railing Aspen yesterday, and that was so clear what's happening. Amazing. Yeah, yeah it's, it's great. Just like... But not on this one, only on this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, it's fine. Maybe after here. <laughs> you got the budget. You mean publicly as in Twitter? I mean, Twitter is not like publicly, but you know what I mean. On the record. <laughs> uh, follow them is one of the bad things. No, 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 no. One of the bad things can happen for a minute. Have you engaged? Actually, I don't think they were at that time. Still, I don't think it, but I just don't like anyone who asks me. I think probably I will refuse. <laughs> don't like the attention. Blind versus blind here. JNT with the ace 10 limping, and Linus Lolliger with the jack nine suited makes it 45 to go. Hello. Two sixes. Two diamonds and a nine. Oh, such a nice number. Six it's still an okay board for J and T to still check well, call back. <laughs> you expect the big blind to just have some dust polarized. I would have to see about this kind of paired board. It's 69 both ways. Like, yeah. You didn't know it works that way. You know. <laughs> That's why it's 69. 35k C bet, the right <laughs> size to retain this ace high, which has picked up a gut shot straight draw on the turn. Now 175,000 in the middle. The Jack Nine does have some vulnerability, <laughs> but he will check back. <laughs> now six is full of nines on the river. Six. Quick check there from JNT, and mm -hmm. there is definitely value have to be had with Linus's hand. Lessons? Ideally no, targeting the 8x. Because it was controlled. I'm very bad at thinking. Right. Oh, he's snapping quickly, it looks like. Yes. J and T. A misstep. 120k is no diamond on the end. Perhaps unblocking was JNT there, thinking there's some busted combos. Yeah, I was like, wow, 69. Hey, Linus. So nice. You have Able to get full value from the Frenchman. Snapped you off with ace high. We're going to get an opportunity to talk about Linus's getup, by the way. I mean, I don't know if you missed the pearls. I saw the pearls. The He's new short sleeve satin. He had pearls on neck and wrist. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get a view back later. Meanwhile, Fedor has opened hijack, ace three suited. Tobias Schweppe with just 130,000. 
Sub 10 bigs. Mulling over these two fours. Well, Fedor's stack has shrunk a bit, so in theory, he does raise a lot, but his range will narrow a bit with this kind of 20 big blind stack size. Five seconds. All in. All in now. Still gonna fight. Another 100,000 required as Schwecht does jam, and we've got German on German violence here at the feature. Never fun here if Ace-3 suited. <sighs> Trying to do some math. You're never really in a spot where you're in great shape. You're not going to expect, like, Ace-2 to jam on you. you got to think about all the pocket pairs. You do okay, of course, and against the King-Queen. It was a bit of a tank jam might come into play. I need a massage, but I don't think I can't afford it with this uh, buying tritons. <laughs> tritons. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nacho might not be able to afford the massage, but Fedor decides he can afford to make the call off of a stack that isn't all that deep, 255 back. Another 100 was a lot. One over card to the fours, and the fours are a bit of a problem insofar as they do block the wheel prospects for Fedor's hands. 300,000 chip pot and an ace on the flop. Could it be that the hot streak continues for Fedor, already one title under his belt here at this festival? Diamonds lurking. And there they are as the jack comes in in yeah, diamond yeah, form. On the, yeah. on the, on a fact not lost on Tobias. A nervous grin on his face. Can he connect? No, he cannot. Queen of spades on the river. The GGs are issued as the field whittles further. Down to 35 players. Yeah, that's quite rough. It's very rare you get it in good with two fours that clean. Mm -hmm. Might have checked. Might have checked. Brace the flop. <laughs> Actually, I don't know. Maybe I would have win the hand on the jack of diamonds. <coughs> no, I don't check race against that stack. Yeah, he was shallow. Yeah, he's sharp. Yeah, I would check <laughs> Ace five for Dow. Yeah, Dow's got a pretty nice stack of 700k. No reason to play this up front though. Who you play with this time? Invitation on. Invitation. Um, <laughs> However, when I come back Vietnam, the cancel. You cancelled? Yeah, because Why? I I don't I don't know I can't come back to London. Why? One one week ago I come to London with my wife. Yeah. However, I must come back to Vietnam. Oh, you must come I back. I will attend uh, the wedding of my friend. Yeah. So I don't know I can I cannot come back to London. Now you're here. Yeah, but I'm you're here, but um, see, uh, London invites invite, uh, Michael Sawyer. Whom? London. Min raised? London. Got three bet by Tan Chuan, and that three bet sheds two sevens for Wakil. Lunan? Yeah. Lunun. Oh, Lunun. Lun -lun. <coughs> Lun -lun. You know Lunun? Lun? So you don't have a partner now? Uh, I Maybe uh, my friend from Vietnam. Too, th oh. too tight. Thing. Oh, he plays good. Yeah, maybe. Are you ready? <laughs> I lie to myself. Flipping like, you know, back over to the secondary. <laughs> <laughs> Just impossible. Wally, they heard you want to talk about Linus Love. We're going to get another look. Yes, sir. First look, though, is at Seidel. Like, He's got oh, 1.8 million plus in career uh, trade <laughs> across <laughs> nine what caches. What, what he's using? Carol, Carol, so so. That was more of a few helmets over, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Seen some more limps lately at this uh, table. Linus with Owen? queen five of clubs. Yeah, kind of an interesting and unexpected approach. Yeah, Pedro jamming the pocket threes, and Paul's in a spot where he should feel pretty comfortable getting this in against the, the short stack who's rather desperate with 12 lines. Does need to consider what kind of range Linus is limping with as it could be some traps as well. That's got the ace jack in trouble. More often than not though, Paul is gonna to wanna to continue here. Boss, jamming it over the top of the Garagnani jam as it'll be just the two of them. Two overs against pocket threes in a 390K pot. Ooh. Bottom set on a 3-5-7 board, and this is not looking good for Paul Pua. Ace on the turn, and that actually leaves him drawing dead. <coughs> He's only drawing what I did? to a chop. Courtesy of 4-6, exactly. Yes. Wow, a lot. <laughs> Once he ran into... Bottom set. The good news, of course, is that he has Garagnani covered. The better news is that Garagnani, at least for his sake, is going to be doubling up and then some. You had to call. I had to call. Yeah. The Brazilians, by the way, have been very close-knit on the Triton tour. Randy have observed them each evening after play concludes having a group meal yeah, together uh, right here in the tournament area, debriefing about oh, the day's apparently. action, maybe asking one another <laughs> about some spots. More like, how can we make their life hell, the other players tomorrow? Because they are the most aggressive players out there. Oh my gosh. Hmm? Hello. More pocket aces, this time 40, in the hands of Sam behind. Greenwood, who is asking some questions about who's got what. 45 plus 10. 45. Before he decides. 54. How to do his thing. I'm making it 45. I didn't say anything. A little confusion here, but it is Greenwood opening up 45. Okay. It's annoying you didn't wake up for him, Paul, but you don't want to run into the two aces. Did commit one small blind. Just 45K back, though. New blind level 10 and 20,000. 20K big blind Annie. <coughs> Save yourself. Consideration, too, is that when he comes along, the big blind get a good price. He's going to commit, and he is in bad shape against these two sure aces. Boy, this is painful. <laughs> what? Getting a chuckle out of his plight, but obviously there's nothing funny about the spot that he's in with just 13% equity. 45 to win 50k pop. Seven? Top Seven set diamonds? as he runs into... Sets Diamond. everywhere and runs oh out of options. A one-two punch Paul? delivered to Paul Pua. Again, triple six. Mm. Short run from today. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Most of sets in this series, I saw pocket sixes. Really? Mm -hmm. I had twice. Uh, Leon Sturm had three times. During Sets one hour. Sixes? Mm -hmm. That's like crushing hand. Do you, do you have a pocket set? pair that hits more wheel. sets? No. They're saying sixes. No, come on, stop. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. That's not I didn't say it. They that's said it. not a thing. All right. Sorry about that. No. so close to having what I want. Huh? It's so close to have it, like, you need to wait for your decision. What 
Is that what? If he hits 60, then it can be raised. A little post-mortem there as we get a look at Chavetto hauling one in. I hear Paul talking to Tan. Oh, yeah, giving him the update, of course. Chavero, King Do suited. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? Yeah, it, it's <laughs> just a <laughs> glass of water being poured, Randy. I would relax. Yeah, it was very soothing. I thought perhaps you were alarmed. Not soothed. As we see Chavetto. King Do suited. Doing big stacky things. Here at his second ever Triton Festival. First time he joined us was in Cyprus in 2022. Went one for four with a sixth place finish in the 30K six max. Finished ninth in the 40K mystery bounty on the final table bubble. Picks up two for the ride on a nine high two heart board where he's up against a set of fives and a gut shot. Wow. Could see some action here. Oh, we're definitely gonna see some action. Just depends on whether Ignacio is going to bet. He's going to check. I mean, yeah, not so. you don't believe him. Curious to see what kind of sizing these two fives go for. I Clearly, he's got the best hand. Easy. Doesn't really want to price out his customers, so he put in, I puts in a one-third bet. <laughs> There's a chance Fedor continues to 8-6 as I well. I with the rest hand, and I, when I check, I had the worst hand. You couldn't load, you couldn't turn at ace high. That's, that's why you don't believe him. You don't believe him. I was right or not? Yeah. Keel <laughs> in position, 50k bet. Fedor does was not I continue, right? and it's back over to Chavero, who started this mess. I was right? Yeah, you don't believe. You couldn't ace high. You don't believe him. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Don't believe, wait. <laughs> oh. I was trapping him. A little gutter <laughs> ball for Chevero now on the turn. The extra 100,000 slipping into the middle. He would have gone in even on that, and I would have called on the other rivers. Looks like he's contemplating last. a lead, actually, as the ace is yes, more favorable enough. for the pre flop raiser <coughs> in a lead position. Yeah, he's just going to just lead out big here. He wants to apply pressure to get these pocket pairs to just to lay down. And as played, Ignacio can clearly have like the ace kings and ace queens. That would check call a small bet on the flop. Nice slow play here from Jamil. Yeah, very much so. And as he goes from firing to calling. And now the hearts come in, but pair the board, Randy. This is problems for Ignacio Chavetto. He does have Jamil Wakil covered, but his king high flush is up against fives full in a 610K pot that is going to be growing to much more than that. I cannot imagine a world where he does not lose the rest of the stack here. He might just lead out Jam himself. 60. And actually puts out a 10% chip bet trying to induce. Problem is he's actually inducing from a hand that's got him beat. Very much is the problem. So 
so downsized. And when we downsize this much, Randy, occasionally we expect the raise to come in as a result of perhaps reading the situation incorrectly as we're weak. Right. So if there's ever a chance you'd bet folding hand, if you downsize like this, you tend to call a lot more often knowing that you induce. So even if Jamil goes all in here, I'm pretty sure Ignacio would call it off rather quickly with the, the nut flush. And Jamil's going to just slide all but one in there. And I'm sure Ignacio believes his opponent could have a full house here, but there's worse flushes as well. He's just going to reshove and try to get the last chip. Yeah. So somewhat predictable outcome there, and you can see the excitement on Jamil Wakil as he is scooching forward in his chair, eager to haul in this massive pot, taking a huge bite out of Chavero, Most who was up at the top of the leaderboard to start this day. We'll let the dust clear and slip it over to the secondary feature. Ten suited for Leon Sturm. Second in chips. Nice suited connector. Couple sixes straight in there. Honokov's getting a bit short. King Deuce off suit. You're playing everything. King 4 3, all oh, heart board. The, the Jack 10 yeah. fails to improve as Seidel, the only well. caller. High chance, yes. So weird. It's yeah. the hard draw. Second pair, no follow through from Sturm. Seidel's hand's starting it to look pretty good. just be like, wow. It's amazing. No. No, no check back, not. however. I mean, I'm not. Prepared. A welcome four of spades on the turn for Eric. Yeah, not too bad for Eric here. Of course, it could have been like some overcards to his pair of sixes. So if 200k event will gonna be nice, in the end it's gonna be just average because everyone gonna jump, right? Yeah. Awesome. A great run out for Probably. the two sixes with the action as played. Well, there's no way it's gonna be good. Kind of. Yeah. I mean, it's still good. But maybe not amazing. For you, it's always good. Right? I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Are you gonna play? I think so, yeah. Oh, no, yeah. Ah. I haven't decided. You get invited in some of those cash games? Really nice run out Sometimes. for right. Seidel as the board double pairs. I would think Seidel would want to extract value from A6, but it looks like he's going to play cautious in case he's up against a better pocket pair. Are you giving enough action? I, I Just a smooth here. shutdown post flop. But I guess you get some fun games during the year, right? Sturm, as mentioned, first ever Triton Series, played the first three events, failed to cash in all three. Played the tournaments, you play 12 hours a day, there's almost no room for cash games. He is now third in chips behind Ole Shemion, the fellow German. Cash games, 50 hours straight, there is no room for tournaments and too. 1.68 <laughs> respectively for the two of them. At the top, Jamil Wakil, the overall chip leader after that huge yeah, I like double. Tournaments. There is like schedule, you know when to wake up, when to, when you're gonna finish. I like that as well more healthy. Yeah. <coughs> Onikov's just looking for a spot to put in chips, but in the small blind here, not ideal with 10-7 offsuit. 
fault. Yeah, his 180 will wait for a better situation. Seidel's 45K yeah. open. <laughs> Gets no action. Galignani's deuce four, not adequate. Have you played a lot of like very long sessions of cash games? No. No? I don't play live cash games. I played like uh, 20 hour sessions. Live? Online? Online? Say did that last time, right? Oh, 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 oh you mean um, even, even, even if I'm folding? Yeah, okay. I've played a couple of 20 hour tournaments. Yeah, me too. Maybe not 20. No. Do you remember in the right after the lockdown, there was this uh, massive ACR schedule, like a lot of like six hundred dollars. I've been not playing online during like two weeks, or well, maybe during months when the COVID started. Really? Uh huh. Ponikov's picking up ace five on the button, nine blinds. Should be pushing this one in. Just balancing his timing range. Looks like he was balancing oh, things during COVID as well. Mentioned that he didn't play. Yeah, the time you would expect time? to yeah. be playing more. I was very surprised by that as well. Yeah, hence Pedro was like, really? Well, really, you got two nines here in the big blind? This is going to be tough to look up at for Ponikov. Says Sturm's got the right kit. To possibly shower the Latvian. Yeah, I spent time in Japan during that moment. What? Sick. No formal. King 6-6 six, six board. Ponikov's showered courtesy of a nine on the turn. He was hunting an ace. But that hunt ended abruptly. Oh, As Alex mentioned that he neither. was spending was time power. in Japan during COVID, perhaps involuntarily, because as I understand, that was one of the most airtight borders around How during COVID, and it took them behind. a long time to open things back up. Yeah, I feel like he was going to expand on why he was there a bit more, but no, it comes he needed to ace on to get there. That, that comes as a suck out, not a set. I don't know. The set meter is like... Pretty strict. Yes. How do you think well, his that, Japanese that is his, after that much time? Six hundred dollar million. Better than yours? Sumimasen. They were running like <laughs> every Sunday. <laughs> How about this? And the first, Sorry, now. Wow. The first revelation or something they were like to me earlier today as Randy no and I enjoyed too. some fish and chips for lunch. That Randy it studied fish, Japanese. It's, it's fishu and chipus. Wow. Really. Stick to English. Issue <laughs> <laughs> and chipu. Oh, man, dude. I'm not wrong, though. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> You're not. Maybe there's another word for it, but sure. The boss stack of Jamil Wakil, newly minted after that massive collision against Chavero, goes to work under the gun, King 8 suited. And you're starting to get a sense of how he feels about being thrust to the top of the leaderboard. That 1.8 isn't going to be collecting dust, it would appear. But Fedor Hulse, ace 10, not afraid. Yeah, he's to not push afraid. Back. Like, you know, he doesn't need a big stack to still apply pressure. Ace 10 is actually a pretty good hand to attack with, as it's kind of too weak to flat call. But then you still have, like, playability if you do get called by the 3-bet. Ace blocker, of course, helpful. Nice pickup. It's always scary to play against someone who's rather aggressive with all stack sizes. Is You're not like, oh, he needs a big stack to start activating mm -hmm. um, high frequency. Fedor at all times. <coughs> <laughs> What's that? I said I told you you should make 50k. <laughs> you, were, you were debating. Yeah, you did tell me. There you go. 
a long way to go. Apparently, Wakil was, was debating whether to enter this tournament. Fedor convinced him. Yeah, and he three bets him. Notice how before Wakil found himself at the top of the leaderboard, I don't remember Fedor saying that he convinced him to play. That's true. If all of a sudden he ends up showered, that's <laughs> probably not the story you're telling. But all of a sudden you look up at the leaderboard, you see your man that you convinced to play up there, and you feel like letting everybody know. That's so, my guy. So if Wakil just goes out now, does he go... Sorry, I convinced you to play. <laughs> Unclear. This is clear. Jack 10 suited. Yeah. Takes it upstairs. Wakil defends the ace three. Comes up empty on a jack seven six board. Top pair, however, for Straven. Really Excuse nice. Me, I think water for me, Hand on his I board texture. I think one of the coffee that you did with a little bit of uh, less ice and more coffee. Please. Less ice, more coffee. So he wants a double shot. Sounds like somebody it? can make the ice coffee. Yeah, he's well, he's. Uh, nobody say. Everybody say no. I can't do it, bro. Just get a ice, <coughs> ice and a like a shaker. And that's it. No science. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it doesn't work. I don't like it. Yeah, it depends. Yeah, it could be. It could be okay, but it depends if the coffee comes very hot. Then it'll melt it right away. It, it melt. It melt the ice. It just makes it watery. Yeah, it gets watery. Yeah. I didn't realize everyone was a barista. <laughs> they are really passionate about yeah. these barista techniques. It's just a nice coffee, right? Like you get ice, a cup. You pour in the coffee, some milk, and then you serve. I feel like but there might be more to the science. It. I can make it. You can assemble it. I don't know if you can make it as Strava makes it 40,000. Fedor Flats with his ace queen. Under the gun and under the gun plus one. And of course, when you see that kind of action, King Jack suited does need to be a little bit wary, but perhaps not when it's sitting as deep as Wakil, as he will join the party, dominating Dao Min Fu. Look at the price being laid to yeah. Fu, just 20 for a shot at 130. Yeah, but he's thinking the other option as well is just, there's a lot of chips in there. Maybe just take it down pre and gamble it up. I don't think he's throwing a time bank to, to fold this hand. Hello, Dao Min Fu, doing Dao Min Fu things. Yes, sir. I'm actually going to start with Fedor. He's going to get action. The question is from who? $355,000 k jam. Obviously, it looks tremendously strong for Dow to be willing to do this out of the big blind against an under-the-gun opener, a flatter behind. Fedor is in a really tricky spot now. Yeah, with the party starter out of there, it would have been a bit different, but Stravara has made the call. And I think it's precisely the call by Strava that is wow. troublesome to Fedor. Because Johannes would do this maybe from time to time, looking to trap. He would do Fedor it in the whole range. Exactly. Looking to trap uh, Fedor and then possibly even Joaquil. Although, it's good, for you. it's good for you. The bigger candidate, of course, would be Holes in terms of traps. And Ace Queen and King Jack, both in the muck. As Dalman Phil will take two <laughs> overs and diamonds up against two sevens and out flops the sevens. <laughs> DMP. You have sevens too? Fedor would have had trip aces. Wakil would have had aces and jacks with a better kicker. Quad, quad aces. aces for Fedor would have been the case. Take a seat, sir. Thank you, thank you. 
Very lucky, yeah. very lucky. I want, I want to Alibaba. <laughs> what was that? Yeah. Did you say Alibaba? Or what do you say? Well, I know the legend of Alibaba in the 40 Thieves. A lot of money out there. Thank you, Dula. Maybe he was kind of genie in a bottle adjacent with the metaphor as it certainly felt like one of his wishes got granted in that pot there. DMP, over 800,000 now in front of him. The way he played the hand maximized the results. He just call Fedor's in there, drip aces. Uh -huh. You know, he loses ships. Or Strava folds. DMP is out. Really just played perfectly for him to get this 800k stack. Really did. Well, whether you play perfectly, recreationally, professionally, there is one place to get your fix. And that is GG Poker, where you too can qualify for Triton events. Daily Triton free rolls are available, as well as a handsome sign-up bonus offer to new players only. Simply use the code Triton underscore 2023. Get yourself a full welcome bonus, including a Global Millions ticket for 50 bucks. Just deposit a <laughs> minimum of twenty dollars, and we'll get you there. You folded what? What's wrong with you? What, are, what, what kind of game are you playing? You have ace. Yeah. It's, it's not a winning strategy to fold quads. It's lucky. Yeah. Maybe I, maybe I should. Go back to the, get back to studying. Maybe you should get back to studying. Yeah. You don't know that quads are not a full, not a call. Everyone need a link fade or a halt as we got this pot developing. Nacho's got two nines. Schwen, the opener. Out. King, queen. Good luck. Barbero Thank ripping. <coughs> 425. No, 435. Yeah. Would appear to be too much for Tan But not that big, not that. Pocket sixes, that huh? No, I'm way more win. Into the Four mark. sides, four sides. The king queen win. You're such okay. a savage. You're such an animal. Yeah. <laughs> Raise, call, call, all in. Yeah. You don't give a fuck. Right open in pocket seven. <laughs> I'm very happy. I... <laughs> pocket. Pocket uh, queen. Pocket oh, yeah, king. thank you. Oh. No, you wanted yeah. to see sevens <clears throat> or ace queen? Yeah, or ace queen? <laughs> yeah. Ace queen, ace king, that's pocket perfect. Seven, yeah. With like all the dead money, it's good. Oh. Pocket seven, what, what is he doing calling with pocket seven? He saved you because he calls you. Snap. That was the spot. That was the spot to trip it up, Pedro. Not all in call, that was not the spot. ICM is for poor people, Pedro. What are you doing, really? Uh, I should. Now I go back to Vienna, I can give you some coaching on that if you want. Please. Did you need? I'm gonna I'll make pay for it. Barbero. <laughs> Two queens. That's a very generous offer. I decline. <laughs> As Ike offers to pay <laughs> you have to for Nacho to coach me. <laughs> I really should make it work like a lot. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's the so good. The nacho. No, so we make a website so nobody cares about ACM anymore in the world. So people spas start passing super hard. And we make money out of it, but we just all donate to the website. Like, let's put 1K each, whatever. I think it's very, very nice idea. Yeah. Well, the idea might be nice, but the flop is not, as Fedor has made aces up I, I could make against these two queens. Really good, bad content. So sitting on top two in this spot. A lot of check raising, actually.
you want to extract value from like the big aces when you're holding top pair two with the ace you know there's no overcards that can come out that your opponent would multi barrel on so you do see a lot of fast plays in, in this spot yeah no diamond in hand obviously is a slightly annoying proposition for fedor Pan might not be over just yet, though. Barbero may call one and kind of see if his opponent continues. Once he calls, he makes a statement that I've got at least an ace, and if the big one was check-raise bluffing, usually wouldn't continue to do so. Not an ideal card with the third diamond for Fedor. Well, obviously, the two pair are not counterfeited, but the flush is a concern. But more of the concern actually is that his opponent might get a bit scared as people do check raise flush draws. So his opponent might be able to hero fold like some ace X's, of course, two queens. So it's more of an action killing card problem than uh, afraid to lose. Ninety thousand in the middle. Usually you see small here, like a third pot. Let's see what he comes with. Half? Yeah. Now Barbero has Fedor covered. Betting one fifty five off of three seventy five is a statement. Yeah, Barbero was mainly trying to pick off the diamonds now that the diamond comes in oh sorry there really sorry. isn't much he beats unless fedor was just recklessly check raising random cards the only bluff i can really even see is like a five six little gutter ball check raise but right wisely lays down the two queens yes they were good they had to go to look at them back again i always look back Oh. In anger? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes enjoy. You got lucky. You got maybe lucky. maybe you got lucky. Who knows? I think you got lucky. Maybe I got lucky. Ninety five percent that you got lucky. Yeah. That's a. Uh, can't wait for the coaching video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure. Maybe I got lucky actually. Maybe you had pocket tens, no diamonds and I have better on that. Okay, it's the top of those Barbero's got his hands full, by the way. If he wants to get into a little bit of a verbal hard, sparring hard war with Yeah, he's Alexa. got the banter. Yeah. Fedor. Hit me. <laughs> Haxton <laughs> offering to pay <laughs> for Nacho to coach Fedor <laughs> is an all-time classic. Trying to soften the field a bit. There it is. But it's like the indirect needle, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, that's really nice of you. I, oh, but wait a minute. <laughs> yeah? But you played the this tournament. Long way to 40k go. open from the 10-8 suited. 10 Schwen <laughs> plays all parts from <laughs> all spots. I'll take it. Sitting on just north of 20 binks I to start it. this one off. Haxton defends. 9-5 flops bottom pair. More than we can say for the 10 high. As long as you're chip leader by the end, that's all that matters. Yeah, yeah. Right now, not so much. Not that much connection for the 10-8, but he is under the gun, so they tend to see that pretty high frequency on King X boards. <coughs> the earlier you raise, the less of these kind of middling random hands you have, so your range is naturally stronger on King high boards. Sure. Board pairing 
Racing seven on the turn. Sometimes we see players lead on these middling cards pairing or bottom ones as there is a range advantage for the big blind. The main reason is because the preflop razor doesn't have a 100% frequency of C betting pairs lower than top. And of course the big blind will have all of the pairs out there. It does decide to check. See if Tan Chuan's got another barrel. Rarely do you see 10-8 barrel here because well, 7x has trips, king x never folding. Yeah, rarely do you see 10-8 barrel, but rarely do you see Tan Chuan get too shy in a spot. Granted, the check back over here, but... That comment sounds like a Nacho new training video. Like, what kind of <laughs> comment was that, I, Here's Here's what I'll tell you. When we were observing him in cash games, the way that we described it was controlled aggression. Yeah, I didn't get one. He has a vibe of being reckless. There is, it's very easy, given the way that he plays, yeah. to think maybe this is a guy out here blasting. But there's a lot going on when he makes his decisions. And you saw the check back on the turn. Not the highest level check back, but nevertheless, it's not one of these... Let me just go three streets and hope Check. kind of affairs. And the shutdown. Ike able to show <laughs> the fives. Take that one. You know, I, I like the term thinking maniac, too. Thinking maniac. I don't know if you've ever heard that one, right? Like, a lot of stuff may seem maniacal, but there's a lot of thought that goes into it. It's just a lack of fear oh, in certain not? spots where other oh. people might skew more conservative. <laughs> So we see 10 and 25K with the 25K big blind Annie, the new level. Thanks for telling me. What? Thanks for telling me. I didn't know. Yeah, you got me watching the stream. Otherwise, everybody will be at the table watching the stream. Yeah, it makes for bad TV. <laughs> <laughs> no one talking, no one looking up. No, it, just, it didn't start yet. That's why I thought no one was. Yeah, yeah, I just saw him on the TV day when I was like, it was Yeah, no, it's about to start. Get a walk. What would be your favorite topic to teach? You did. Maybe other big blinds. Invoker? You come after, but his <laughs> not so much. I know it was the cards, mm. but still. No, I, I know I where you're really coming want from. To, but for bad content. I mean, hmm. Oh, for bad content. Like what? What would be uh, the one. number one? Uh. strategy content. Yeah. yeah. Me? <laughs> Everyone would believe you. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, and when people refute you, just double down and uh, yeah. keep, keep pushing. Yeah, I can make some truly horrible bounty content. I don't feel like this King-10 suited is going to lay it down, especially against Tan Chuen. It's 33% or 25%. Ace Jack yeah. jamming the small blind. 355,000. Call it 14 bigs. Chavero had the chip lead at one point. Sub 20 bigs. Let me kick this one off, and the King-10 suited indeed does call, recognizing that Schwen would be incentivized to 
rip in here from the small blind with a fairly wide variety of holdings. This one has the King-10 behind, a 3-2 favorite, playing for 735000 Shot better with a covering stack, but not by a whole lot. And the nine high board fails to improve the King-10. Schwen looking for a hold. So far, so good. Can he fade the six-outer? Yes. Deuce of diamonds and the unraveling. For Chavetto continues, Randy, not at all the way he wanted to start his day. Yeah, you have to remember that he final table bubbled the other day. Today started as the tournament chip leader. He's down to 110,000 in chips. Of course, the bulk of his chips were passed over to Jamil Wakil. And he had the king high flush on a paired river card. Wakil's flop set turning into a boat. That is going to be a dangerously doubled stack for Tan Xuan, who I think really likes playing from in front. Give him a big stack, and he's very happy to keep it in motion. Yes, he's the type of player where he's a short stack, just trying to spin it up. But when he's big, he's just attacking relentlessly. Mm -hmm. It's going to make everyone else at this table a little bit more uncomfortable with that double up knowing that you can't just raise recklessly as he'll either flat you or, or three bet you. Ace King though would welcome a three bet behind him if possible. 21 big blinds here in the cutoff. King gets no action, despite being the cutoff opener. Sometimes the late opens get played back at. Maybe some more liberal defense out of the big. Well served not to be tussling with Ike on that occasion. <laughs> Haxton's Triton resume. Over 7.38 million in career earnings. 24 caches. How many titles do you think he has, Randy? Zero? That's right. Yeah. Surprising. I, I know. I, I know he's been playing it ever since the, the beginning, as well as the short deck events, too. Just hasn't been able to close one out. Started off pretty well at the last festival in Cyprus. In the first three events, he cashed twice, 19th in the 20K, seven-handed, 30K in the mystery bounty, or the fifth place in the 30K mystery bounty, rather, and then a goose egg from that point forward as he went 0 for 12 0 after for 12 going is. 2 for 3. That's rough. Jack 8 of clubs going to push his last chips in, and Wakil is going to be priced in. 10-3 suited. Feels... Only fair for Wakil to be giving Chavero a spin with what were once his chips. Just ahead of both hands. King five suited. King five? Oops, recovered, queen. and somehow Barbero, the man lamenting not being involved in this one with yeah. queen five. Yes. Chavero really loves to hear this conversation right now. His torments of life's on the line. Thought slop open ended, but trip tens for Wakil. I think I might have thought of something better. Mm -hmm. I think I might have thought of yeah. something better. Teach. How to catch Pretty collusion. Bad flop so for like the Jack eight. How to collude. Drawing live though. <laughs> but teach it completely wrong. Eight outs. So people start cheating, but badly. <laughs> that would be funny. How? Seven or queen, not uh -huh. available. How to and catch collusion. I, I yes. think I don't Joaquil know. finishing so what he started as he is the man that claims Nacio okay, Chavero's pelt. Um, I'll tell you what, those so were long odds on the like board, Randy, for Chavero to be showered putting a lot of money before in the, the first break. Meanwhile, secondary feature action where Linus Love <laughs> showing love to pocket fours. 
Queens, Queen for Roberto Perez, whose countryman was dispensed over at the feature moments ago. Well, Perez has got a currently a 100% cash rate. Yeah, first ever Triton Festival, finished 19th in the 25K GG Millions Live, 20th in the 40K Mystery Bounty. Yeah, Roberto is actually one of those unknown players that are extremely good online and in cash games. Love to see him make some deep runs here in this Triton stop. King, Queen, Jack, two spades. J and T looking pretty good on this flop top pair of the flush draw. Sure is. Roberto with the ace queen. Got position. 55. Ace of spades is always nice in hand. Call. Middle pair, Broadway gutty, turns in to aces and queens inconveniently as the pocket fours bow out. Although, Torrell doesn't love it either. Yeah, Roberto does improve a base queen, and it is nice in case he was up against King X, which he is, but needs to play cautious with the 10 out there and the spade to take the lead. Yeah, how about it? The check back pot control from Perez just in case there was some 10x, as you mentioned. In Torrell's I love range. the sizing here because 10x actually bets the turn at a high frequency in position. So he's more likely up against two pair, which you can't bet too big with the flush coming in. I love that reveal. It's like one card. Not sure if I'm good. Then the second one, flush. Yeah. <coughs> so handsome sizing there for JNT. Came in with a pretty decent sized stack. Sixty-six thousand eight hundred in career earnings at Triton for JNT, whose first ever Triton cash came right here in the twenty-five K GG Millions Live, where he finished. 12th place. This is third event in London thus far. Fast action system being explained to the players, Randy. Walk us through it. Well, if you were listening, they would. She would have explained it perfectly. Well, we can't really hear an okay. unmiked TD. So, unopened pots, 10 seconds to act. Mm -hmm. If you want to extend your time, you've got to use the red time <laughs> chips first. But if someone opens, then you get the full normal pre-flop timing. Straightforward enough. Her explanation was a little bit more thorough, but you get the gist. Only two of those time banks offered and can only be used in the unopened spots in order to extend yourself past the 10 seconds that are allotted. As Randy mentioned, once the pot is open, then those red time banks no longer. And the idea is to prevent stalling. Because you'll see like players just trying to squeeze into the money or, or go for that pay jump. I was playing with a German. I've been playing high stakes for a long time. Uh, here? No, in uh, WSOP. That's his name. Uh, very famous. Uh, All in. All in. You have to give me some sort of in. Massive staller. Greenwood jamming the 10-9 from the button. Give me a visual hint. Pleased to pick up the orbit's worth you of tokens. Have it, right? No, no, no. Look pretty German. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's, he's not giving me much, is he? Uh, you could, you yeah, could I just don't remember his name. You could say hair color, height, anything. 
like hair color, height, skin color, German. <laughs> like, okay. So, um, uh, does that mean blonde? Yeah, I think that's yeah. the stereotype. Uh, blonde. Rays, okay. Feels like they wouldn't be too good at guess who. <laughs> Fair. All right, Jack Nine suited for Garignani in the big blind. Under gun open. Slightly out pipping that Jack Eight. Obviously, might be expecting something different in Sturm's range. From out pipping to pairing on a king nine four board where there is no diamond. Pretty dusty texture for Leon. If there was a diamond on board, he's more likely to continue. Looks like he's still going to kind of do one of those one and done unless he picks up equity on the turn. Four to K sprinkle. Yeah, just trying to shed anything that's not in this area code. Yeah, there's a lot of those hands, you know, like the ace X's that are small. So far, standard. Next type of card that's going to not allow multi-barrels too often. Trip Kings would look great. Pair of nines, not too bad, as well as the flushes that do arrive. It is crossing Pedro's mind to come in with a lead from time to time. Although you do lead more often on the middle or bottom card pairing. Five seconds. 55. So he is going to bring in that quarter pot lead. Oh. Nice line there from Garagnani, avoiding the check back and perhaps a bit of Merc on some rivers. Does a lot of murky rivers, you know, oh, yeah. hearts, uh, heart with overcard to your nine, right. queen of hearts specifically. Were you just mentioning this guy who just calling or what? Yeah, like he was, it was, uh, I don't know, insane. Like, but it was a tournament with shot clock or no shot clock? No, it was the, I think, uh, 10k6 max. It was like, um, 70 paid, was like 85 left he started and it was just mind-boggling. I mean, he was very good at it, but it was like everybody wanted to murder him. Bye. Oh, <laughs> a crime yeah, scene. They were rather bad at being strict about it and when the floor gets called two or three times, they should reduce him and oh. stuff. They don't really do that, I guess. Greenwood jamming the Queen 8 suited. Ace 10 should look pretty snappy in this spot. Yep. Sturm, plenty deep enough to give Greenwood a spin, and two live cards will be decent enough for Greenwood's purposes here as he's got 40% equity. How much was this show? <coughs> 205. And top two, it's, it's monotone all clubs, and the never easy calls come in. Time. Now all of a sudden added outs for Sturm, a lot for Greenwood to fade here. <laughs> Ace, tenor, club. Oh, and there is the four of clubs. You say so, I'll take it. I felt that one coming, Ollie. He just had, I know I there's too many outs, too but many like outs. it's just the way it came out <clears throat> felt like destiny. He flopped too much. GG, man. Obviously, none of what we're saying right now makes any sense. It's all <laughs> completely <laughs> absurd, but not a big deal. Even our pros, regulars on the Triton. Everybody tour, knows ACR is the best poker. Not immune in the to world. a bit of superstition as we see the pre-flop action here. Yeah, yeah, yeah I need a the whole slip from the small <laughs> Haxton shot it up to 75 on the flop. A check call of the 55k bet from Haxton. You just saw the check check. 
On the deuce three, four board where Fedor doesn't interact whatsoever and yet floated, hunting one of the two over cards or perhaps the diamond draw instead. The board now double pairs. Haxton with the best hand with king high, Randy. Yeah, I would think that Fedor would want to attack here. It's kind of a funny board though where it, what kind of value are you showing up with in the race pot? So just going to try to show down to queen high and could have been a tough decision for Haxton. Sure. But should be pretty content with the check with king high. Although he might think he's up against ace high a lot. Had Fedor bet, the five of spades would have been a bad card for Haxton to be holding, obviously. He'd want Fedor to have some of those 5x combos that were... I mean, actually, Ali, it's actually both cards would have been bad as he's got the diamond with the king that blocks the flushes yeah. as well. So it just would have been a mandatory fold unless he's got some kind of read. Uh, maybe you should get some coaching from Nacho. <laughs> you didn't want to get bluff raised. <laughs> Poor Nacho. <laughs> he's just getting obliterated. Oh. There. Now see. Look at the chip counts here. Jamil Wakil still sitting at the top of the leaderboard. Hasn't been all that involved, although he did polish off Chavetto. 1.9 million in front of him. Straver, well behind that at 800,000. Barbero, 13 bigs, 335. And you would think maybe Wakil has the luxury of getting a little bit more aggressive. But when you look out there and you see Tan Xuan, Dao Min Fu, and then Paxton holds Strava, I mean. Uh, maybe I still wait for the nice kit. And, you know, it's just uh, it's a star-studded field as usual, and players are just willing to splash around. Makes the game so much more interesting. I know. It's just more fun. There should be at least one per round. Today is particularly chatty amongst both tables, despite the raise in price to play. These fives won him a one big pot against Chavero earlier. Different spot. Under the gun, the ace queen. Almost all in for 300. Uh. The fives. Respecting that sizing. Also respecting the position. Too many players act behind him. It's larger than 10 blinds, open jam, ace 10. Rather tricky. Only one player to act behind him, but still, it's small blind versus under gun. You still need a proper holding. He would have to think Nacho is jamming rather wide to continue. Oh, so maybe he far, does. Pocket fives oh, and the a7 of clubs have found the muck, yeah. but the ace 10 does not, as Haxton wants to make sure that. Schwen doesn't come in behind them, so he jams, giving Barbero protection, Hold but the he's the one that needed protecting here as the ace queen dominates in a 720,000 chip pot that Barbero desperately wants to take down to stay alive here in event number five, the 50K. Eight tray deuce, couple of spades looming. <coughs> Turn. Yeah, fuck it, fuck. Brings that business to a halt. Nacho. Why? Why would you try to play good? Just play bad. Needs to avoid the ten. As Fedor chimed in, saying, "I folded the a7." <laughs> and <laughs> Barbero. I was like, "What the fuck?" And there was no chop. I was like, Thankful I that he again. did. Well played, the the the, the flip of the car. Thank you. I'm seeing something going in my favor today in my life. I cheat on this service. The universe is sending me. I'm a good person. Yes. I think it just proves it's random. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the but troll you, corner. You stick to Max. I stick to ICM is for poor people, okay? Of Olsen. Paxton, a real savage peanut gallery. 
I'm very superstitious. I hate, I, I, in my head, I, I was losing that 100%. I always lose some missed deals. I Finally, I broke the, the curse for the first time in my life. Missed deal? Like a fucking miracle. Maybe there was something that happened before we swapped tables. Awesome. Actually, your complaint to win ratio is extraordinarily. <laughs> No, but no, 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 but uh, it happens to me so many times. Every, every time you win an all-in, I just hear you complain about all-ins you lost in the past. Oh, well, miss deals. <laughs> miss deals. The, this time it, the, the, it went bad for Ike. Oh. Maybe he had a shock, though. Me? All right, so we got a button limp from Isaac Haxon, keen eight suited, 10. Trying to figure out what that range is with 10, seven in the small. How much you play, Mike? I believe it was 380. Thank you. Uh, Ace in the big for Barbero, fresh off the double. Yeah, 380. Randy. Well, he feels that Tan's range is definitely very weak to just over limp, but not so sure about Isaac's. So we're just gonna check back. 100 in the middle. I just want to make it a fun experience for the audience, better. so I say something, you know? Not that I'm not complaining, I'm just... I mean, I kind of was, but I was <laughs> not complaining. I was telling me what always happens to me. <laughs> but you know what? I'm going to shut the fuck up now. <laughs> Axton not complaining either on the Jack-6-3 no, board. He's happening. got the king-high flush draw. Two checks in it's front of him. Flicks 25k out there. More words from Nacho coming, I assume. Hasn't laid down yet. Slight best hand does continue. Seven on the turn. Barrow still in front. Axon with the flush draw, the eight also overpairing everything but the jack. Extra added outs because the big blind check calling does have a wide range, of course, since it was checked through pre flop. So Nacho could easily have like a 3x, 6x, some guttered at the seven. Might be a nice spot 100. to put in a multi-barrel, two-thirds pot. Hi. 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 Sorry. It's a bluffer. True. It's a bluffer. I saw you on TV bluffing. Semi-bluffer. No. No more TV? Oh, fuck. I the just want to. The viewers are so disappointed. Wait, they won't have you can to you entertain them with stories of times <laughs> you lost on missed deals. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I got to talk so we something. Wish like, I mean, I speak so much. I got I to gotta mix it up. You know, it can't be like really important content for the audience. No, you would run out. I understand. You understand? You, you, I got to mix it up. It can't be all like really changing like life-changing stuff, you know, coming out of my mouth. I have to speak some nonsense too also. Right? I understand. Yeah, it, it makes sense. I don't even talk that much and I still run out of things to say. <laughs> you open that piece of trash? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what do you think we're at? A, ba a blackjack table here or what? <laughs> I think that's what happened to me. I don't know what I was doing. Even with the dead jack, it's better, right? <laughs> you will have jack 10 or ace jack? I think I would have had ace jack. I'm not 100% sure. Ace jack? I think so. Yeah, it's the same. same. <laughs> easier call. Much easier call. Yeah. You could have fucked me. <laughs> you see? You see? You see what I'm saying? You see? If it would be so you, upsetting. It would be so insane. Now, if you fall and you would have 100% call with ace jack and I would have not doubled, you see? But the universe has a plan for me. <laughs> I see it. 
Look at DMP just loving it. As are we here you in the booth, and we certainly good, hope you are as well at home. He gets or he gets a shock, and you still double. That's running good. I might win this one now. I feel it. Strava. Looking to win this one, as in this pot. Raising under the gun, King Jack. Oh, pocket 10. Oh. Pocket 10. Pocket 10. <laughs> 210, close. Close. Well, whether you're joining us on Twitch, the Triton oh. Poker Plus app, or of course our YouTube channel, Ali Najad and Randy Lou, glad to be bringing you coverage of event number five, the, the 50K. The good thing about not going is we can go and watch no the limit stream and event. I can see how Eight max. Federer bluffed me on the ace-deuce, three-deuce. Triton Super High Roller Series in London, JW Marriott Grosvenor House on Park Lane. If you're enjoying... So if I make a good fold, I'm going to be really happy. And if you bluff me, I'm going to be really happy. I mean, what happy. did you fold? What you're watching, well, and for that matter, what you're hearing. I don't think so. Give us a like, give see. us a subscribe. You folded an ace? Help us and you will see on the stream, keep buddy. the content train oh. running as Nacho Barbero is covered by the two tens of Tan Chuen, but let's see how bloody this one might get. Yeah, time to shut down a conversation for him as he does three bet. Rather small three bet. See how Tan proceeds here. Is he suspicious because of the small sizing? Can he maybe just call? Four bet obviously in play as well. A fold would be heroic. Another 70,000. I don't think the hand can hit the muck, but can it just hit call? No. Schwen jams. Snap call from Nacho. Ace, ace. The disaster that Schwen <laughs> was hoping to avoid. As the first ace gets rolled over, you're praying there's a king behind it. I've got a bad and even then, about this one, we are vulnerable. Uh -huh. <laughs> you, you faded five shots at a 10 against me. I don't know if you can fade five more. I think ace is coming. I'm in ten. Creating some anxiety, perhaps, for Barbero, who says, I think the 10 is coming. Looking to go reverse with the superstitions. Spades are covered. King 9-5. Jack of diamonds. All tidy for the time being. Why you make? Why you want the pain for Nachita? Just a little, <laughs> little massage. <laughs> why you want the pain for Nachita? Just a little massage. Oh. This is too, this is not. I saw that I was losing this one. And suddenly, Six. that gym injury Six. isn't really bothering Six. Nacho Six. quite Six. as much, is it? Wrong too, by 25. That's why you got confused. 35? I made it 125. Yeah. You say 120. It, it doesn't matter. Nacho has doubled twice exactly now, this. Randy. Yeah, you're right. He's he looks that fine. You were thinking this one was 20. That's 25. No worse for the wear. He thought if he corrects you, it looks too strong. And he's not. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he he so like, whatever. Just shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> or I change. I shut the fuck up. <laughs> you had a bad feeling, like huh? You want your friend, Nachito? It's not about what I want. It's just the feeling I had. Oh, you're like me. You have feelings and stuff over the hands. No, I don't believe that. Like, I think you're more like on the mat, like the solvers and things. Sometimes I just have a feeling. You know when I had a feeling against a green well, the other ten day? Chuan. He was sick. I, I stood up. I has a feeling, to and it's not a good one. Very deep in a tournament here, and comes I knew 100% I was losing. Ten on the river. I like, I stood up way before. Sometimes, you know, this one I had a really good feeling. Bad feeling. I go to a break, chilling. Goodbye, guys. Bye, audience. I love you guys. Keep watching me. I'm still playing with Pedro Holtz. 
And I text on Imagine that. <laughs> okay. Parting See, words from Nacho. As the break is right around the corner, but not before we play this one where Raquel in the cutoff makes it 50,000 to go. Strava a small blind. 190. Ace 10. You kind of felt like maybe the three bet was in play, and there it is to 190. The ace jack is rather tricky here, cutoff versus small blind. It's a hand that you could take a three bet in. You can also just fold this if you feel like your opponent's range is rather strong. It's a trouble hand post flop too. You can also sometimes actually four bet jam if you feel that your opponent's small blind is being reckless. So he is going to make the call and two off two ace is going to difficult. go into a flop here. Yeah. Three to come. 430k pot. Queen three deuce. Neither player improving, although the ace of clubs interacts far nicer than the ace of spades does with this board. Yeah, the ace of clubs that might actually activate him to continue if the C bet does come. It is still rather dry texture. A lot of C bets from the small blind. But actually going to check. Must feel that Queen X is rather heavy for the cutoff call or the pocket pairs when it fold to one. Now Wakil, with action ceded to him, mulls it over but checks back in a great way after the eight of hearts comes off on the turn. If Johannes could find a bet, he most certainly would take it down a lot of times. The thing is, it's quite hard to check the flop and start betting on this texture. And sometimes the ace-10 is actually good. Yeah, some showdown value, perhaps. King-X combos that would have called the three bet that haven't paired that queen. Yeah, like king-jack, king-10 specifically. Yeah, coming to mind. We blocked the king-10, but still very much in the realm of possibility. Don't think the ace jack feels too good about this spot, but then again, he might not think a better hand would ever fold. And do we not presume that the sort of sevens, sixes kind of hands would have been more willing to see bet on that board texture? So we don't need to necessarily put pressure? That's true, but you also will see those kind of hand even flat pre-flop yeah. rather than just three bet. Yeah. The way they ran down this board, it seems that like it's just going to go check, check. They got like a weak showdown value, but just enough. And as played, you wouldn't really expect someone to just start value betting. A bet from Johannes at this point, Randy, certainly would be tethered more to the idea that he wants to clear out some very specific hands that have him beat. Ace Jack would be one of them. And you see a little wince on his face. He did think about it. Yeah. He knows end. that hand would have folded to a bet. Right. Well, what a lovely note on which to finish this first frame of play here in the 50K for Canadian Jamil Wakil at his first ever Triton Super High Roller Series. 0 for 3 so far. Looking to punch his ticket into the money. 70 big blinds deep, over 2 million. Very different situation, of course, for China's Tan Xuan. Three big blinds, just 85,000. Those blinds going to 15. And 30 with the 30K big blind ante as we bring you back to the desk. Ali alongside Randy. And how about Jamil Wakil? Randy uh, kept it pretty clean out there. Ended up obviously with the perfect river against Chavero. Polished him off and has looked tidy. Yeah, he's been tidy. He's been solid, you know, just playing good poker and just letting everyone else just chatter away. Yeah, and by everyone, we mean Nacho Barbero and, of course, Haxton and Holzer having a field day. I think right now on the scorecard, advantage those two. All right, we two are going to go to the break, as will you, as will the players, but don't go anywhere. Continuing coverage from right here at the JW Grosvenor House on Park Lane comes your way after this. <laughs> GG 
poker. Why? Why? So right. many players. This is a crazy. It's a new one. Broke the Guinness World Record. Welcome to the World Series it's the of best Poker. poker song. The biggest event. poker song. Now larger than all of the GG Poker. Traffic reaches all time high. Jump, 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 jump. No way. What's the best way to master GTO poker? At GTO Wizard, we have blogs that will teach you the art of learning poker, starting from the big picture and working your way down to the finer details. Then we teach you how to implement these new skills at the table, step by step. At GTO Wizard, we have all the resources you need to learn how to crush the competition for free. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players. Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live-action prediction options on the Triton Series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top-up, up up to $250. Become a part of BetACR.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience. To chatty. Yeah, because I hadn't moved. Life is tough. Yeah. <laughs> Everything is going to work out. I know. My plan was yesterday was a lot of exploits, today just GTO. Just GTO? Yeah. Just. Dan Smith. King seven suited, cut off. Sometimes when you play GTO, you're expecting. Looks like he's not rocking the bagels cap True. today, unless he Is got it, it in multiple colors. Oh, it's a different color before, right? It wasn't yeah. this brownish tan. <laughs> if this hat says cream cheese on it, <laughs> I'm just saying. Seidel. Charlie Carroll is going to be very happy about that. <laughs> Flats the button after the, Where is he, by the open way? limp Probably from the cutoff. Growing some Randy, which he did. Somewhere. King Got seven. I don't know. He he did did know. Unorthodox mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. He did? Busted very early. Huh? Busted very early. 
Ah. Didn't revive him. I interact with him a lot on uh, Twitter, but uh, <laughs> many times he will just want. Huh? You want to do an interview or podcast with him? No, no. <laughs> Three separate King X's. Just like respond to his tweets. Only one of which. In a good way. Rates to proceed. I mean, not that of JNT. Although it's a check from Greenwood's top pair for I the mean, time being. If you're here. arguing, it's still not disrespectful, but. I mean, no. I, I, so you su you supporting I, or arguing? No, I'm, not, I'm not supporting you or anything. I'm just, uh, you know, he says something. I like just. What about that? What about this? Ah, oh, okay. Give your point of view. Yeah. So you're following a lot of social media. After the round of checks, a delightful I'm turn card for Greenwood as the Queen <laughs> pairs. It's JNT that's threading. Information from my students, you know, when someone posting something. Don't blame him, by the way. Don't blame Greenwood either for trying to get somebody world. to stab at this. <laughs> and perhaps his favorite customer. I can imagine. So far as JNT can be like a little that, bit right? sticky. Yeah, I would say Spade like draw. Or Smith. No <laughs> flat. And the fact Very, that he limped uh, pre. Exclusive. Check post. Now all of a sudden flatting when the queen pairs on the turn. Might draw a little bit of attention from the field. Yeah, it's quite hard to interpret what kind of range he might be up against. But in the end, though, Greenwood does have trip queens, nine kicker. Dan Smith's got 155k back. Greenwood doesn't want to let these two players get a free shot at a spade, a straight draw. So he's going to come in for check raise. <coughs> JNT kind of trapped in the middle. He still has to worry about Dan Smith behind him, so he's going to lay it down. The way the action is, it kind of seems like Greenwood's got a Queen X at a pretty high frequency, so the king wouldn't be an out too often here. But if you can remove full houses from Greenwood's range, which you can't do 100% of the time, but make them improbable as played, then you have a greater argument for proceeding with the spade draw, knowing that you're not drawing dead. It seems like he's trying to calculate how often he is up against a boat and drawing dead. If he makes the spades, is he going to get paid off? Is there ever a chance he's up against the bigger spade draw and he's just drawing extremely slim? He's got 10 big blinds behind. All is made for the extra 65 as JNT ducks out, and this is a bit of a problem call. And welcome back to continuing coverage of the 2023 Triton Super High Roller Series London. J.W. Marriott Grosvenor House on Park Lane, just outside of Hyde Park. And uh, not quite just outside of the money as we continue to work our way toward the eventual champion in the 50K. Of course, right now, Jamil Wakil was the story, Randy. We touched on him coming in, taking a peek at the Triton Poker Plus app. You see him at the top of the leaderboard. But how about Hong Kong's Danny Tang, who finds himself in second, 1.6 million, surging. And he had some claims about what he wanted to do this season at Triton. Well, his claim is that he wants to win the Player of the Year award this time, right? He's one that um, had an amazing last series. He's hungry, you know, mm -hmm. he's going out and traveling and playing at the other circuits out there. So he's definitely one to watch and at the top, 
on pace. Yeah, this is his fourth event. He did have a cash in the GG Millions Live, 21st place, 44500 As you can see, his resume knocking on the door ever so close to the $7 million threshold. Three-time title winner, too. 18 caches. And love the look on Danny's face right there on his bio page. Just shows some of the intensity and tenacity that he brings to the affair. In third, a Triton newcomer in Leon Sturm. Anytime we see the German flag, Randy, we just make assumptions about very technical and very sound play. Yes, of course. And I believe he also won a bracelet in uh, one of the high roller events at the World Series just this summer. So it makes sense that he's going to take some of those wings, parlay it over into the Triton stop sure. where the best players are, are firing away. Yeah, and on the topic of parlays, Nacho Barbero was down to a lean stack, doubled not once, but twice, chatter all the way through it, of course, and finds himself in fifth. Uh, not to be overlooked, New Zealand's David Yan currently in fourth. That rounds out the top five as we'll have a couple of new featured tables on our hands. We'll get a look at uh, those in just moments as we're about set to set it back out to the field. And in that first feature table, we will find some more of that Brazilian aggression that you've been talking about in the form of Yuri Zivalevsky. Just 13 big blinds in front of him right now, however, as David Jan is the mayor at that feature. Danny Tang over at the secondary. 55 big blinds, he will be at the top. And then Joaquil has slipped out to the outer table with, with his crew as we play 15, 30, and 30. Wai Ken Yong, of course, a man that we mentioned prior to the onset of play today, son of Triton co-founder Richard Yong, and a man who's got multiple Triton titles under his belt as well, a three-time winner. Performed very well last time we were here in London. Mikita Badziakuski, four-time Triton title holder. Under the gun, Queen Jack, 60K to go off of the stack of 1.3. And Waikin in the big blind, a very playable and dominating King-Queen suited. Yeah, he's getting rather short. And it's a good chance he just pushes this in, and he would be in great shape against Mikita, who might not even be able to call a jam. He's got 215 back, big blind, big blind ante. How much? So 275 to start this hand off. Makita might be just priced in here. Definitely on the cusp. <coughs> Startled a touch there by something going on just off uh, to the side. Looks like Biao Ding's got it sorted out as the all in does get called, and the disappointment does wash over the face of Bads. He can afford to make the call, but obviously hates the spot. Let's see whether or not Wykin can hang tough with 26 players left. Queen 8 3 board, both players with top pair. 82% equity for Yang with two to come. Keep it clean, he's thinking. Clean. Compliance in the form of a four of hearts. Clean again. Yep. Squeaky as the ten of spades. We'll send the 535. <laughs> Why can't sway? And that's the way that he wants to start the new blind level, obviously. <coughs> Loosen the collar a touch. Maybe have some post-flop playability to his stack. Am I allowed to call him, like, young boss? Is that a thing? He's underboss. Underboss? No, that that doesn't sound very nice. What's wrong with that? Underboss? Yeah. No? I thought that's a real thing. I've watched some of these, you know, documentaries about structures and <coughs> clandestine sort of arrangements. I'm not, that's not what's going on, but uh, I don't know. Boss and underboss. It's okay, a thing. Okay, okay. I don't know. Underboss. Nah, don't do it. it no. You don't want it. You okay. don't like it. I'm not going to make you say it. Didn't really like it. Hair boss. David Jan. Oh, oh. Letting it flow today. As Covering the hair now. Lord Vogel. Five seconds. All in. Jams, his last 210, ace three suited. These sorts of pickups 
Obviously important for Christoph's bid to spin it up. Service. Down to 25 now. Most recent elimination was Tan Chuen. Jaffe out in 27. We saw Sam Greenwood and Ignacio Chavero green tea? getting yeah. showered. 28th and 29th. Can with the newfound 520 on the button. Why can you up and up 97 suited with his freshly minted chips? 98 suited though. Ding Biao. Time to time, we do see players be aggressive. Not here, but content, obviously, to defend. Dominating. <coughs> like in, though, the more meaningful development on the Jack Six Deuce Two Heart Flop. Yeah, great spot to just pick this one up with the flush draw. Easy check fold. And getting word from the outer tables that Jean Noel Torrel has been dusted off in 25th. And that actually will leave us with 24 players, which means we will be conducting a redraw. So, one look there at the chip counts on our way to that redraw, which will take some time. We'll pause in the action here. Those chip counts brought to you by Poker State. We'll bring you back in a moment to the desk. Current overall short stack belonging to Christoph Vogel saying we saw him just click up a touch from the low water mark. Yuri Zivilevsky, second shortest stack in the room in 23rd. Fedor Holst not far off that pace either. The German with 14 big blinds. So 24 players, we're going to shuffle the deck. Yeah, we shuffle it up. Um, we are approaching the money. It's a top 20 that pay out. So four more bust outs and people need to play snug rather soon. Yeah, we did come in with 43 players. Didn't take us long, did it, to get down to these 24. So a lot of those short stacks weren't able to spin up, got absorbed. Of course, some of the bigger stacks also came undone. Min pay is going to be 73,000 when we get to 20. Suspect some soft hand for hand, some fast action system going to be coming into play as well. And not to be overlooked, of course, the 1.35 million that awaits the champ here in Event 5, the 50K, which will continue in just a few moments. Stay close. Take your game to the next level with GTO Wizard. Practice against GTO on all your devices. 
study any situation from pre-flop to river, we've got it all. Upload your hand histories to uncover your biggest leaks. We have hundreds of hours of coaching from top pros, cutting edge theory articles, and custom study plans to help guide your poker journey. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players. Introducing the all new betacr.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets betacr.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live action prediction options on the Triton series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top up, up to $250. Become a part of betacr.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience. And welcome back to continuing coverage of the 2023 Triton Super High Roller Series London, event number five, the 50K, has 24 players left. 20 of them will be paid. A lot of broken hearts already as we played 43 down to 24, just four away from that money bubble. And of course, as always, Randy, we expect play to adjust a little bit. I don't think we're going to get from 24 down to 20 in the same pace that we did from 43 down to 24. Yeah, but we do have that new system in play, the fast action system, right? So uh, just 10 seconds in unopened pots, we'll have a little bit less stalling. If we didn't have that in play, I think there will be players that would take the maximum allotted time. For now, though, it is going to be a bunch of short stacks that are going to try to hang in there. And there's a tight cluster if you look at the Triton Poker Plus app. You know, like 285... 365, 410, and so on. So they kind of going to try to wait each other out, grind their way. Opportunity now for, for the big stacks up top, uh, Jamil, Wakil, Danny Tang, and Linus to just pounce as much as they can. Yeah, I mean, obviously, when you consider the fact that that min cash versus the 50K that you're in for is 73,000, provided that you're in for one bullet, it's a big swing between minus 50 and plus 73 of 123,000, 23K in profit. Not the kind of thing that's going to be scoffed at by even the you know most highest stakes players uh, who we have in our field right now. And I would imagine that some of the middling stacks are just going to be content to sit back and cruise, provided that they're given that opportunity, right? Of course, the middle stacks main strategy in the situation situation is to just hang tight let the short sex kind of do their thing yes they're going to bl uh, bleed down a bit but it's as expected as you said you know sure some of these guys can afford like a 73k loss or whatever but it's very important to make the money then splash a bit then try to get to the top three spots okay so then let's take a look at our two feature tables right now where we find sean perry for the first time joining the fray 
He is obviously a guy that likes to command the conversation, much like Nacho Barbero. We'll see how chatty he gets with 20 big blinds in front of him. And as you look at the stack distribution and the players in particular, anything stand out for you, Randy, here at this blue feature? Well, if you look at it, you see the chip leader on the left, and he's just surrounded by these 20 big blind stacks and 10 big blind. There is a big stack of Davey Yen sitting across from him, so I imagine both of them will be kind of taking turns, taking shots at players. Uh, but definitely never want to be at the table with the chip leader. Yeah, Makita not going to be thrilled to be directly to the right of that chip leader, although from what we've seen thus far, not entirely clear whether or not Joaquil is going to kind of grab the warhammer and try to bludgeon away. Now then, let us switch our attention, if we may, back to the Triton Poker Plus app where we find the secondary featured table. Randy, what stands out for you here? Well, DMP making a potential deep run here. He's got sure. 740K. We know that he was willing to splash that Jack-9 suited, got there and got the Fader Holtz fold of Ace-Queen, who would have had quads. So that's the one that's going to drive the action, but Linus is always dangerous in a deep tournament. Like yeah, this. no doubt about it. Linus currently 52 big blinds, dead center over there. Zivilevsky, give him a spin from 12 bigs on up. Give him some post-flop playability. He could get dangerous. We got not one, but two Brazilians out there. And of course, the Argentine, Barbero, 44 big blinds, having spun it up very, very handsomely. So then, we will send you back out to the action in just moments. Obviously, glad to have you with us. If you are watching on YouTube, don't forget, hit like, hit subscribe, help us keep sending you all that we have on offer here in London and beyond, free of charge. 15, 30, and 30, there are your three tables. Outer table also having an eye kept on it. As no others are in the field, just 24 left. Fast action system, two red time banks. Pre-flop, unopened pots. You can extend beyond the 10 seconds using one of the red chips. Once the pot gets open, we're back to using the normal blue time banks. and That shirt is low. Uh, well, we're talking about Sean Perry here. I'm surprised there's any buttons done at all. But I, you, yeah. I, I think the thing I'm paying a bit more attention to is the fact that Jamil Wakil, queen three offsuit, doing big stack, he's, he's soft not bubble. Gonna, he's not going to take the snug approach, I'll tell you that. Things. Yeah, the question is answered pretty early, but unfortunately for First him, off. You Why think better you? one button open Instant. or closed? One button. <laughs> one button open. I should, one button open. No, Some, two button open. Sometimes it goes like this. Is it like that? <laughs> no. Of all the people to ask, <laughs> Christoph Uncle saying was his customer. You got to love that. Meanwhile, He's back to the poker here. Wykin jams, takes it. I think everyone is. No. People are playing to make money. Oh, I see what you're He's doing. playing to win. I'm playing to win. Okay, okay. Money, 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 money. Let's go. Glimpse now at Danny Tang and company at the outer table. It's a chick. Looks like Orpin Kisa Chikoglu out there getting hands on him. Hair flip. Normally that's Yuri Zivilevsky's department, but that's a mustache oh. flip. Oh. No, <laughs> he's got multiple things to flip. And given that he's got about twelve bigs, maybe he'll be flipping sooner than later. But love what I'm seeing here, Randy, and I would imagine you do as well. This is a chip leader who recognizes the situation and is looking to extend that lead and just pick up chips and cobble away 7-3 suited yeah it's safe to say this is a bit of out of line but just doing chip leader things and Sean Perry is just saying no I'm a short stack but I'm still going to three bet you a king four suited yeah not on Sean's watch uh -oh. apparently and king king in the small for Y <laughs> King Young normally this ace jack might have been a customer but once we see the four bet, presumably in jam form. I'll just say that Sean Perry's respect will go way down once he sees that he's three bet folding off of this stack against the chip leader. The presumption, of course, that Perry is going to have a more narrow range. 
Three betting the chip leaders open from the button? He's supposed to. Right. But the fact that he did King Force suited clearly shows that he's not. Just based on the squeeze, I want to say Ole looked at the ace first. Trying to bully me? What's that? You're trying to bully me? I can't bully no one with no chips, man. I'm trying to make chips here, and I'm not doing a good job at it. Uh, you ran into kings, sir. I have a sweat. <laughs> good sweat. Good sweat. Confirmed. Wow, man. Shemian you looked at the ace first. For me. I have respect for you, but I have a very big hand. Oh, very big hand. Yeah. You think I had a very big hand? I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> nah, Hard to get two in that spot, huh? <laughs> yeah, guess so. I mean, I guess it's hard, it's hard in every spot. But. Have you ever been a barista in your life, Ali? Now, Randy, of course, asking this question not at a left field, but rather at the do-it-yourself iced coffee situation we have going at the desk. Two sevens, by the way, finding the muck, and what wonderful timing with which to do so, given that Christoph Vogelsang has woken up with two eights, which he is jamming behind. Not to mention one seven was busy in terms of... Set prospects. Oh. Vogel saying happy to pick this one up. <coughs> yeah, Lord Vogel. Second occasion on which he's been able to pick up. Blinds and annies, oh so important. As he tries to work his way into the money. Level's just 35 minutes long in this one, by the way. Oh, I didn't realize it was a kind of a quicker one. Yeah. Starting stacks for 200K. Exactly at, at zero. It was on the second one. Oh, okay, okay. Oh. Well, Wakil has opened twice, failed. Third time's the charm. We're about to find out. But the thing is, the frequency <laughs> of the opens, especially now that we've seen him fold, granted it wasn't to the three bet, but rather the four oh. bet of Waikin. Oh. You're not centered? We begin There's to suspect that he's doing exactly what... So I guess you're not center. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. So yeah. We would expect... It's difficult. Yeah, yeah, thank you, though. Opening a wide variety of holdings. Note the ace-8 found the muck. Now Shemian. Five seconds. Fold. On the button, Fold. suited. One gapper, not interested. Perez, ace-5, big blind, 420 in front of him. It's one of those hands where you can definitely see him activate. If he was slightly deeper, he might even put in a three bet fold kind of situation. Five seconds. So he's gonna have to just call here, just given how short he is rather than three bet. Is it your brace? Hmm? Is it your Triton brace though? Yeah. Seven, six, deuce, okay. two diamonds. Nicer texture for Joaquil as Perez's defense is followed up upon with a check. He realizes that the big blind has to check fold so, so much just given the situation, <laughs> far from the money. Oh. 
90k seabed. Nowhere to go for the ace five, but the muck deems Perez. <clears throat> Joaquin looking very much all business. He's comfy. Not just talking the Celine track jacket either. Of course you're going to point that out. He's looking fly, dapper. You know everybody steps their fashion game up oh. at a Triton. Most do, no. at least. No, you're right. Myself included. No more aces? Yeah. The man who rode the train an hour outside of London to hit the outlets and went off. <laughs> Just oh. was like getting buried, you know. <laughs> <laughs> At least you get something in return. You know, you get buried this in a tournament. True. Yeah. Yeah, it's not so Showers. nice. Showers. <laughs> Here's a Triton hoodie. Enjoy. You don't even get that. You get plenty, though. Come on. No complaints. Oh. Is that like a smiley face on his shirt, or am I misseeing this? Full in? Like a straight Not face. smiley. It's just a... Uh, I like it. Yeah. It's cool. A bigger smile being worn in his thumbnail as he jams. 1.4 million from the button. Perez is never a customer in this spot. Let's see how Vogel feels about it, though, with the A6. Robert, how much do you have, Robert? Three, uh, 375. So Vogel was asking how much Perez had because it changes the range that David Yan opened jams with. So let's just say Perez had like 30 blinds. Okay. Then David Yan isn't just open jamming like, I don't know, Ace Deuce, for example. Right. But the fact that Perez has only got like 12, 13 blinds means that David Yan is still going to jam a wide range. So Vogelstein is kind of weighting how often he's ahead and how far ahead, and also how folding and try to fold into the money, how likely is that to happen? Decides it's enough of a spot to continue. Slight favorite. Good luck. Thank you. So Lord Vogel will spin the wheel, 7.05 in the middle. He's already picked up blinds and annies on two occasions, and here he's picked up a paired board that delivers extra outs to King 10. Oh, the 10 on the turn, promptly binking Jan, leaving Vogel in need of the ace. Instead, it's the eight. And a sympathetic... <coughs> Smirk. Uh, just been so tough for Vogel. I always see him make these kind of you know, like deepish runs, but win. just can't convert. A6. You know, you're not wrong. Anyone else is like. Three. Randy, if you look yeah. at Vogel's Triton track good. record. Well, you made the, the easy play. It was play, a three man. stop. You, King 10 you rip it on the shorties. Dry spell well, this guy in 2022 A6 across our Cypress warm up, Madrid. Or at least and full Cypress stops. He did Look where that got him. turn things <laughs> exactly. around <laughs> so far here in London. Had one cash like, uh, at Cypress 2023. Uh, school, you know how people say, if someone's bullying you, stand up and fucking punch them back. In ten and attempts. then you punch them back and it just makes them even more pissed and you just get your ass completely, sh like, even extremely fucked up. You got now, into a lot of fights as a kid? Uh, I never, actually. You would think as lippy yeah, as Sean Perry is. <laughs> right. Like he's a favorite. I've been in some protecting my friend and another one protecting my brother. Whoa. Wait, he went and from never it. to two? <laughs> but both of them like ended very quickly. <coughs> Who won? Both of them ended it very quickly with me in an ambulance. <laughs> I was going to say that Vogel is two I'm for three. Type, you know, I went to like a Jewish private school with 100 kids. Now two like for four here in London, which is where he calls home. 
and then I played basketball on the basketball court. I would always start fights because I would like make threes and showboat. But then my like centers would always come and defend me because I was like the small white guy. You were small for basketball. Six four, small. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? I played competitively. I had centers that were seven feet tall. I'd go hide behind them. <laughs> oh. It's a pretty good strategy. Pick a fight and run behind people. Let them let them fend them I'm off. I'm a fan. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I would do that. You got to make sure you're hiding behind somebody that isn't going to run and try to hide behind you in turn. Thank you. Yeah, we would have a problem. Like I'm Everyone, behind you. Oh yeah. You go behind me. <laughs> like we just We'd look both like get a hammered. Conga line. Everyone taking cover as Shemyon raises and takes it, and we get a peek at the chip counts here. 69 bigs for Joaquil, over 2 million. Roberto Perez, 13 bigs. Nobody in that sub-10 danger zone where we would expect the open ripping. As we work our way toward the money bubble in the 50K. 23 players remaining after Lord Vogel was dispensed. Danny Tang, now the overall chip leader. 2.15 million in front of Joaquil. Keep your eye on him. Over at the outer table. Perhaps a pause here due to soft hand for him. Randy, is, is that already going down at 23 that, players, three away from the That would have to make sense, otherwise I, I don't understand. But I'm just grooving to the music. You know we've heard it hundreds <laughs> of times. But did you ever notice they go, hey, in between? No. Did, they did. No, they don't. It was an extended version. And we got deep enough into the track we to hear the hey? Enough. Yeah. Really? I'm serious. It'll pop up soon. See? It's not just voices. Did you not hear it? No. Are you kidding me? Everyone else heard it. How do you know what everyone else heard? Because me and the people in chat are connected. Did you not hear it just now? Oh, that time I got it. Okay. <laughs> it's the 20th time you finally heard it. Listen, these aren't young ears, Randy. You know? I'm not part jackrabbit. You can't unhear it now, can you? Yeah, I can't. <laughs> what have you done? Oh, my God. It won't stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, my friend, a good time to subscribe and like, I suppose. We're back. Looks like we do have some cards here. Sam Grafton, action on him. Ooh, there is a raise and a three bet all in. Matthias Eibinger, the man all in here. There's a lot of action. Somebody called in front of Greenwood, look like? No? The green room? <laughs> so, I think her. Lovely little takedown there. Thank you. Thank you. Squiddy there. In the nine hole. And in seat one, just want to make it official, Ding Biao. Ding Biao. Not Biao Ding.
Just a little peek of our outer table. Keeping it here. Looks like a 70K open from Seidel, is it? Yeah, Seidel did open the pot. Grafton, winner of the last Luxembourg Invitational, playing on home soil, laying it down. Now Ding Biao in the big. will lay down as the legend Eric Seidel will haul this one in. Stacked outer table, by the way. Randy, we really could have picked from any of these tables and done quite all right. Difficult, I agree. To go wrong. Back to our feature table here. Action on Sean Perry. Grabbing some raising chips. Can I see your chips, please? <laughs> so Sean Perry does have <coughs> King Queen offsuit. Three sixty more. He's getting rather shallow. And Ole Shemion picks up Ace King, big slick. The medicine. All in. Piles. 785 in there. <coughs> <coughs> Gonna take a lot of hand to show up behind Shemion and seek to participate. Never fun here for Sean Perry as he has tried to chip up. Right now. How much did you start with? Nothing. Silent treatment? It's rare. We can be on it now, out of the hand, right? Uh, should I gamble? I'm playing the cash. I could use the money. Would have been a bad okay, time good. to gamble. Ah, oh, that's gross. What do I owe? Time bank? You're playing to win? Yeah. Yeah, so apparently that's my way. Actually. What's that? And to bust you, actually. <laughs> Oh, I'm a, I'm, I'm, a tough, I'm a tough dude to bust. I promise. <laughs> I'm trying. Like, there's no the one next better on the in the list. world at navigating a short stack than me. You think you're number one? Oh, uh, number, number one, number one. Pretty big claim. Yeah. Number I'm, one. And I'm a very humble person. I never talk about like me and how good I am. Or I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very nice guy. <laughs> well, nice for sure. I don't ever say anything rude to people. <laughs> Very likable. But I am probably a fool of myself. Mm. 
<coughs> You're still living out in Toronto? Yeah, still living. Back here. to what back Ace King for Shemion. No, not really. I used to like it a lot more, but now that I've like traveled a lot and seen different places and stuff, and now that I don't go out as much, you know. Where would you say you like? From the places I've been. I like England a lot, London a lot actually. Really? Vancouver, I, I really like. Vancouver so pretty. Yeah, yeah, Vancouver I really like. Toronto definitely, you know, it's good. All my friends are there. All done. They got lots of good restaurants and clubs and all that stuff, <coughs> but like, I did it Yet for another. so long that like, he's king kind of new, for new stuff, you know. Yeah. Yes. The desire to bust people is for equal you. opportunity, oh, it Vegas. would appear. And not custom tailored specifically to Sean Perry, as he cheekily suggested. Never really, to be honest. I'm not a drinker. Back into that last pot. Roberto Perez, though, has himself a weird spot with these two tens. Randy here with the bubble approaching. Yeah, yeah, it's a really solid holding in this spot. It is annoying though that it is undergun versus undergun plus one. My friends are DJs, and I have other friends that own the own own the clubs, and I still like so I could get free and like go to table service and still never go. Wow, you yeah, just don't no like one, it like, that in much. In Vegas, there's like no good people to meet. At the yeah, place. groups to go out with and stuff. Not or that, girls it's just like girls. Like, yeah, you have like to be careful. You're hanging out with the bottle service girls and stuff, and they're like, work. like you know what I mean? No, like, I in know. Vegas, the worst, at least, because everyone comes to Vegas. Big lay down from Roberto from Perez. Course, yeah. Very much so. Two tens. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're sitting with three hundred and twenty some odd. I, it, the range for Shimeon has to be so tight that his willingness to jam over the top of a Wykin under the gun open with Wykin sitting on 910 back is just too good Believe to continue against. What's that? Believe me now. That he must you, have to consider nine, how close they are to the money to be folding what? those two I tens. Just three. And eights I would have put in the whatever and been like, you know what, fuck it. Let's gamble. <laughs> I had a big hand when I folded it to you too. <coughs> Monster. Yeah. <laughs> I almost I wanted to shove through. <coughs> too bad. What's up? Too bad. I'm assuming if I shove you call too, but I know you had a big hand obviously I raised under the gun. It's just uh I don't know. <laughs> Against you, I would have folded. I think. What's up? Against you, I would have folded. I think. If I shoved. Oh, so if I open ripped, you would have folded. You're saying. Not true. I think you have it. Mm -hmm. You're American, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think Americans have it when they open shove. <laughs> they have it when they open shove. Yeah. Cultural yeah, bias. I open shove thirty big blinds with kings. I should have opened shove. <laughs> Could see something brewing here. Why can Jan picking up pocket eights versus the early position open? Yeah, David Jan. Min raise. Maybe they're going plus one. Just, yeah, I should, should have just open ripped. I had king queen, man. What, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Well, you weren't supposed to open rip, Sean. You would have been Go out. for the win. Holy. Really trying to grease the wheels. <coughs> so, why can big blind? <laughs> Will flat. Like, that's I feel like when you go out in Toronto, everyone Look up at just Toronto. one over card. Right? Like everyone. Yeah, there. it's not like Vegas where everyone comes from somewhere so else. Just like everyone's that's from that's somewhere exactly else. the same. Part of the reason, like, it's the same people, same places, same everything. So after a while, I mean. Oh, it just seems improved pointless. Is Jan, just have a house 65 in the middle. Yeah. Save a lot of money. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I, I still like, I like going now for like nice dinner and drinks and stuff. Yeah. Versus like clubbing. I do that. I do dinners every night. Yeah, I like that better. Like, I also like they have something called coming to Vegas called like swingers, and it's like a a golf mini golf place where there's going to be a DJ and drinks oh, really? and whatever. And that's well, thank like goodness that's the direction yeah, that <laughs> Sean <laughs> Perry swingers. went with that one. As on the turn, <laughs> strange development as Y Kin like, uh, picks up like the that. open ender, but yeah, Yen binks the ten for the really? lead. Like normal things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Normal things. Five seconds. As the check call of 55K awaits turn directives from Jan. 
Yuri is a tournament short stack right now. Queen Jack all in for 230k. Fedor over the top of him with the ace jack. And he's going to be in really good shape. So you see Zivilevsky. Tournament life hanging in the balance. Three away from the money here in the 50K. Can he find a queen? No. <laughs> Finds the jack Looks instead, like and it's all hearts. Love Looks like love. he was correct. I believe in the queen of clubs on the river. On the river? Queen of clubs. <laughs> you want to bet? What about the ten <laughs> of hearts? Almost. <laughs> Almost. Almost. Uh, close. That was very close. Well, Good guy, man. Well, Zivilevsky's belief so in the Queen of Clubs more. showered by the Ten of Hearts. Oh, show, yes. He graciously Why? says goodbye. Perhaps a visit to the Reg Desk for Event 6 somewhere in his future. That's a 60K No Limit 7 max. So there was a turn bet from David Yan, 170K, now turned, now Rivers tripped tens. Turn action, by the way, was a check call of 170,000. Putting another 340 into the middle, 625. And this run out is a little funky for Kin. If the barrel comes in, which we know it will. This isn't board Pulling. texture that is supposed to be hitting Jan Pulling. all that often. So really, yes, yes. does our man have the overpair is the question we're asking ourselves is deep discomfort, the response to a request for all 590. The thing is an overpair might actually be very, rather careful with the board pairing 10. You could see why Ken having like a 10 jack, that check call, check call, or whatever fold. So that kind of narrows the value range to, you know, a set on the flop or some 10x holding exclusively. You wouldn't expect like a 9x to still jam the river here. And then we got the big stack kind of situation where they exert pressure too from the money knowing that you need to call down a little bit more, otherwise you get run over. Well, we'll come back to that one as more situations are brewing. This one, quite bad. If we're Fedor Holtz, as he decides to jam four bet over the top of the three bet from his fellow German, Leon Sturm, who's ace king, has him cooked for the time being. 1.7 million chip pot, Randy. Yeah, it looks like Fader thought that his opponent was making a move on him. Needs a hit of queen. Does not so far. Sturm, fifth in chips coming into this one. Fedor, 13th. With 22 runners left. Not the kind of pot that you would expect to break out all that often. Or seven of spades. As the ace hits both players and the queen fails to show up. GG's issued by Fedor Holz, who somewhat Almost. improbably Fedor, will find himself all. out of the Although money. You're the best, you can't win them all. Leave us for so back to this one. Yeah. Joaquin still in the tank. Holz, by the way, already a title here in London. Won the 25K 7 max for 609,000 officially. As Young tanking. And it was an interesting point that you made, Randy, insofar as the expectation is that the overpairs would proceed with caution against the big blind defense range on this run out in particular, but maybe in the face of three checks, the line occasionally attached to such kit, but with some frequency also to simply air, maybe two overs with spades. There's a lot of air in this situation, you know, the two broadways over to 10, like king, queen, king, jack, queen, jack. Uh, it does make the call. Yeah, she just the sand is, even the sand is with, yeah. yeah. In case of all-in call, don't show the cards. Yeah. Keep it face down. Oh, and this is brutal. 
why Ken State with Destiny is going to be a protracted one as it's dead man walking. And David. He's trying to be nice. Yeah, he's being nice. No one won't say anything. Won't say anything. I've never we seen might be happen, ITM, so Ali. TG. Uh, yeah, that's why I try to be really quiet. So sorry. Yeah, by rule, information not to be shared, cards not to be exposed in the interest of not tainting the action at the other tables here on this soft bubble. But you just feel so bad in that spot. You know when your opponent is tanking nine times out of ten. Trip tens is gonna Congrats on your, uh, have him dead. First cash over here. I tried him. Oh, wait a minute. Have you played Tritons? Congrats on cash being issued. I used to play. I, I haven't played much. More action on the outer table, Ali. What have we here? Looks like Seidel on the button. We've got Eric Seidel, we've got him to lose his head. He's absolutely lost his head with two tricks. <laughs> I didn't pull the game. I did. You did? Wait. He's always All getting documented here by Sam Grafton. Squiddy, as he's affectionately known. So wait, how does it work though? Wait, 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 wait. He, how does it work if he busts? You split. Oh, you split even if you have more chips? He is busted. Yeah. Someone busted, we split. Different table. I see. Okay, so walk us through this spot here, Randy. Why can out? 21 remained. Looks like Seidel at the other table. Showing down. Squiddy with aces. Oh my goodness, Seidel with kings. Does Grafton have him covered? Taking a look at the chip counts here, Seidel. Ninth in chips, Grafton 13th. So, Squiddy is the all-in player, but he's ahead. Oh, wow. God. A stone cold king high flop. And the only good news for Grafton is that with the elimination of Waikin Yang, he and Waikin will both be sharing 20th place money as they're busting on the same hand, if I'm not mistaken, regardless of what they started in terms of chips. A nod from the head of producer James confirming that. And Grafton, aces, kings, what can you do? Reminding us of Eric Wasserson's plight in his fifth place bid in the 40K mystery bounty yesterday. Yeah, and the silver lining is uh, he does get half of the payout, as you mentioned. Yeah, the only difference is in that spot, Was had the kings in this one. Grafton had the aces, and obviously much higher hopes for the outcome. It's not even too bad because both of the guys who busted cat. cat well, I somehow. S oh, one second. Well, I somehow just squeezed out a min cash with seven big blinds. I made the money. Sitting next to my boy Jamil here. He's chip leading. Been punishing me the whole day, but one of us. Is well, the content creators are lighting up. Unfortunately for Grafton, his content not quite as joyous as that of Sean Perry. Ali Najat and Randy Lou here in the money in the 50k. 20 players remaining. Stone Cold Frosty things afoot. Love to talk about it, but we've got to get you to the break. We've got a little bit of a pause in the action for some rebalancing efforts, but we'll come right back. Don't go anywhere, and then we'll talk about it in the 50K. Don't go anywhere.
watched wow. it. Wow. So many players. This is a crazy. It's a dude. Broke the Guinness World Record. Welcome to the World it's Series the of Poker. poker song. The biggest event. poker song. One larger than all of the GG Poker. Wow. Traffic reaches all time high. Jump, 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 jump. Elevate your poker skills to a whole new level with GTO Wizard's free study plans. These step-by-step -step guides are designed to help you master MTTs and the fundamentals of Game Theory Optimal Poker. Each step includes assignments, resources, and videos to help you master MTTs, implement ICM into your strategy, and help you utilize our software. From engaging drills to insightful articles, each step is a journey towards mastery. So what are you waiting for? Try it today. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players. Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live-action prediction options on the Triton Series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top up, up to $250. Become a part of betacr.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience. And welcome back to the desk, Alina Jad and Randy Liu, 2023 Triton Super High Roller Series London, 50K. We did burst the bubble, but an interesting wrinkle there, Randy, when we did, because it was both Waikin Young and, unfortunately, as you saw, the very bloody Aces versus Kings collision between Grafton and Seidel, with Grafton being the other player who bust when we had 21 left. How do we carve that up? Well, the fortunate thing for Y. Ken Yong was that there was another bust out on a different table. In that case, if two people bust on the same hand, then they chop the prize regardless of the chip count. Now, if another player had busted at the same table as Y. Ken, so two people in the same hand, then it's the one that's more chips that gets to get the higher price. So pretty interesting little nuance there. As we look at the Triton Poker Plus app, that is how things are reflected. 36500 each going to Grafton and Young. 73000 flat payout for 19th and 18th as we will barrel forward here with three tables remaining, 19 total players. And there they are once more, steady as they were. 
at the feature. Matthew Kuski, Joaquil, Perry, Shemion, Jan, and Perez. Cards back in the air here. 20, 40, and 40 are the blinds. May I mention that Roberto Perez bolting those two tens was swiftly rewarded with a ITM there. Very much so. He can feel good about that decision in hindsight. All in. Jamil Wakil is still going to be aggressive. Pocket threes open, rips it in. Shemion actually sitting on 33 big blinds in, in the big blind. But forced to lay down for this price. Yeah, so there was like, uh, I didn't expect my friends All like of his 995 right? requested. And I feel like I lost my virginity there. They do shows. It's oh, it's one of those. I, I've heard of those. And it's yeah. like a she-male place kind of thing where someone was on stage, and I swear, peeing into wine glasses. Yeah, that's, and then the three actors drank it. And I'm just fucked. like, what the fuck am I watching right now? I hate, yeah, I don't like this. Yeah, that's, and you spend well, in turn, W2F am I listening to right now for the here. love, yeah. Sean? I've heard, like, of the, I've heard of the box. They have one in New York, apparently. Okay, yes, that's where I've... Yes. Dude, it was an experience like no other. Yeah, like, that's where I've heard of it. Yeah. Even just listening to Sean tell the story was an experience <laughs> that I didn't wake up this morning thinking oh, I would involuntarily <laughs> be exposed to, Randy. Even for me, and there's not a lot of... Real estate yeah, I'm unwilling to journey into in the booth that was deeply uncomfortable. Not uncomfortable. On the inside of the money bubble, the Belarusian, Mikita Badziakuski, four-time Triton title winner, Jack Nine, suited one gapper. <coughs> Min Ray's open. Suited connector is gonna find David Jan in the big. He had a baby once. A little bit of a size up from Makita Bozikuski, 80K. Both players with some solid stacks. Did two players already get eliminated? Well, no, two got eliminated on that bubble hand. Oh, one and now, I guess. Just It is a pair of nines, but it is monotone of two overs. For David, oh, I really hope you totally to detached and from the ace queen nine good. board after defending, Let's checking. I hope that too. Are you pl you plan on playing? Were you planning on playing other of these tourneys, or just just up to this? Just kind of like going just check back. You, yeah, whatever. Like, yeah. Brings another I just, like irrelevant card for David's purposes to the turn. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking, but. One at a time, one at a time. <laughs> big man, the volumes are big. They're like quick structures, like. Big, big, yeah. This one is small, it doesn't look too good. Right, no players there. How many people? 14. Oh, wow. So a lot of checks. Davian does pick up a pair. Four clubs. Still obviously nowhere near enough for David to Four. want to put chips into the middle. <laughs> Club check there as the shades come up. Bats shows the nines for the win. <clears throat> what did you have the handy shoved? Did I make good bowl, King Queen? I did. Nice. So no flip. This is why I'm the world's number one player. Huh? Said so this is why I'm the world's number one player. I thought you were number one short stack player. Now you're <laughs> number one player. I'm always short stack. You know why though? Because I always enter the tournaments late. This one. Man, I'm so tilted about the hand I play with. Was also oh. good friends. That's so fun. Yeah, maybe uh, seven hundred bucks. I was thinking you have mid pairs or ace high. Half half, like half. I can value you half. Yeah, I mean, you were falling mid pairs. Maybe calling some ace highs. So Probably they're gonna change back, I guess. I butcher. Uh, yeah. Butcher is hoping that for that tournament what is it? it doesn't make any sense. They can punish. Why are my diamonds? Over at the really? secondary they feature, they where they really obviously some weight has been lifted no. from the shoulders of those who are on the money bubble. Why I didn't have to use this one? Uh, because it's already raised. What are you playing? 
Started with 450. A couple jacks here for Leon Sturm. Not a bad hand. Yeah, raising queen. it up to 80,000 and then Linus Love. Ace Queen. Kind of flat, Randy. You actually do see these Ace Queens flat, actually, with like 30, 35, 40 blinds a lot. Two it, nines is in an interesting predicament. I mean, might Barbaro's nines feel like the squeeze is available? From time to time, you might actually just see him three bet jam. Does call. Would have been in big trouble had he yeah. done it. Great decision by Nacho Nance. Look at the blinds. Ace Jack and King Queen. One brewing here in a major way. It's rather tempting to jam Ace Jack in this Oi. spot. He's so shallow. Easily could have the best hand. I'm going to call him. The way this is playing out, though, it's actually pretty good for the two jacks of Leon Sturm. He's got kind of like the extra 160k overlay behind him. They've shown weakness. 540. Linus does not like to see that. Garagnani with a raise in two flats. Jammed in the 540. Oh, so Sturm over the top. I, I can never call it here. I have, might have the best hand. Obviously the ace queen. Shredded. Ace queen, ace queen. Ace king, ace king. <laughs> Why didn't I three bet three? Oh. Two nines. Snap call. <laughs> we were behind. Shred as well as DMP says snap call. No fucking way. I was Garagnani. Yeah, I had nines. Finds himself I'm in gonna an win. awful spot. Swing. Wow, this one could go so many different ways. <laughs> it's so stupid. 1.3 million That's in the middle one. and the king queen uh. on board. No one had a 10? I mean, so Petro. I mean, Hunts the ace and the ten. Turn. Doesn't deliver. Nor does the river. So a trip to the locker room for Brazil's Pedro Garagnani. As he will finish in 19th place here. Yeah, had there been like a three bet from either... Linus or right. Barbero, Ace Jack is still alive because he would have folded. Mm -hmm. Kind of the butterfly effect there. Is it was the parlay of both Fedor choosing to flat. Not Fedor. The, well, the Ace Queen. Right? Linus Love. Oh, sorry, forgive me. Linus Love with the Ace Queen flatting, and then in turn Barbero choosing not to squeeze. And that is what delivered Garagnani the opportunity to jam the Ace Jack, he felt. You in alignment, by the way? He adds 73,000 to his 316K in career Triton earnings. Yeah, I would say I'm in alignment wow. there. It's just that you could easily still have the best hand. If not, a nice overlay as only one player will give you action. And there was a big blind, big blind ante. I don't fault him at all. I fed you were so strong there. So deep. What's strong? I know, no. I, you were so deep oh, yeah. you have to. Is this supposed to be on the 10 second or is it only for the bubble? I think they also do it before uh, redraws. Yeah, makes sense. Time to fight. All in. How much? Barbero, button open, 80k. Stravar, pocket eights. Small blind jam. 
wouldn't be getting the right price here, so he's going to lay it down. It's a painful one. I don't think it's all that painful. No, he just exaggerates a little, if you didn't notice. Well, I will tell you from having lived in Buenos Aires for a time, culturally speaking, Argentinians can be quite traumatic. So the exaggeration thing is very consistent with that that I experienced when I was out there. Got it. Nacho won't deny it. I promise you. And if he did deny it, he would do so vehemently. That sounds like an exaggeration, my friend. <laughs> Anyone play Baccarat here? Never I like my life. I like the feel. Maybe I should pick it off the bucket list, you know? Dude, so there was a time in my life I was like 21, 22, playing like poker tournaments, tourneys in Vegas. <clears throat> I busted my first 60 high rollers I played. 40, 40, mean 40. without cashing, right? Was... Like zero cash and 60 fucking entries. Six but zero? 60. But every time I bust, I would go to the pit and play Baccarat, max bet, and always win like 100, 200,000. I was like the biggest winner. All the Chinese people would literally wait for me to come and bet against me in the beginning. I against swear, there you? were the people that were wait there and bet against me. <laughs> Even though you won every time? Even though I won every time, because there's like, it has to end eventually. And then at the end, what happened was, they started riding with me, and I still won them all money. I was like, motherfucker, you guys should have listened to me. Yeah, the, the whole time. I told you I know what's going to happen. Just follow wow, so and then Between your sports run and, and your oh, baccarat I've, run. I've done so good degening, you have no idea. <laughs> Amazing. I wish I could say the same, Randy. What about you? I've played a little background in my time. You've played a little blackjack in your time, too, as I came <laughs> to found out, find out recently. Bazzi Kuski playing a little pocket nines on the button. Normal open sizing here. Let's see whether or not anybody feels like playing back. Wakil might be the candidate. King 8 suited, small blind. Looks like he's going to take one out of position. Yeah. <coughs> see what's what. It's kind of like a hand that's good enough to continue, but not in the form of a three bet. Sean Perry in the big blind. Not the greatest hand. Five seconds. Perry out of the way, heads up to an ace eight three board. This is a bit troublesome from Joaquil, but the presence of the ace obviously is going to leave him yeah, comfortably checking. Second pair, backdoor diamonds, 240k in the middle, bads. Second pair effective. That so might actually feel pretty good about this diamond. texture because this oh, no, ace X tends money, to just reshove on your less than 20 buying stack preflop. So no surprise why, that he's like firing on a bet. Like, uh, why? Why the, more, the more money I have or I've made, I feel like the less happy I became. If that makes sense. Can I have some money? Do I mean, I don't want to that. give it away. I donate. If you have a good charitable cause for it, I can happy to, to I like donate. Sushi, you know? <laughs> hey, I, I can treat you to some nice sushi. I went to uh, Sexy Fish here. It's pretty I good. I'll take those. you to dinner at Sexy Fish. It's good. <laughs> sexy turn. Like for a turn card, yeah, very sexy. I had to have a beautiful amakase there. And there's Again? a distinct lack of fish involved there? in this pot. <laughs> These two know exactly what they're doing. Joaquil on the back end of the check call of 40k. But yeah, like when I was younger and had less, it was just more of like, hey, like you're trying Checks to chase something, more. right? But then Look when it's the gone, you don't even chase anymore. It's just like, what am I supposed to do oh, now? Jamil's face. Not sure what you're gonna get you off of bads. So you want to win? That's what's cool. Look at this value bet with two yeah. nines. Sick. But also a oh, bet, Randy, that will open the door to him perhaps firing again on the river unimproved, turning the nines into a bluff if he feels the need. That option is always available, although I do believe that, like I said earlier, ASEX would have just reshoved on a preflop. Still want to deny equity against random overs. Sees the call. Jamil can't go anywhere and Hit can't it. believe his eyes as the 10 of diamonds <laughs> gives him the nuts. Immediately thinking about, does he ever just open, ship it himself? Does check. Now it starts to feel a bit like an ASEX, doesn't it? It does feel like you're beaten. That's why he did check it back. Yeah. The nuts. Wow. 
Why are you pretending like you had that beat, man? Come on, the eight's good. <laughs> Not quite, Sean. By the way, you can never with him. Like, if he had really a worse game, he would have done the same exact thing. True or not true? What? If you had, like, a worse hand, you would have pretended to have the better hand. I don't know. So things continuing to go extraordinarily well here for Jamil Wakil. Right, you agree with, with the thing, like, pretending like he wasn't bluffing? I was at, at his uh, response. I found it very, very funny, actually. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? <laughs> He's like, let me lose my money in peace, man. <laughs> I see Ding a D -Dow. All in. Looks like an ace -X. Luke Greenwood. The customer. I saw some paint somewhere for Luke. Oh, Double two paint. pieces of paint matching in nature as the Kings hold on. On the flop, Ding Biao needs to find himself an ace, and he's got one last chance to do it, to double and stay alive here in the 50K. Not going to happen. So that'll do it for China's Ding Biao. He, too, will collect $73,000 to add to his $2.3 million and change in career Triton earnings. Six caches. Did pick up a title as well back in Cyprus earlier this year in the 30K mystery bounty. But it is Luke Greenwood who picks up the remains of his tokens. And finds on. We have the same hand? Nines, sevens, meanwhile, as we oh, no. blink and more collisions oh, take no. place. Oh, it's going to be pretty hard to chop. Nine, seven, Did anyone hold the seven? Perry yeah, covered by nine, just 5K suited. by oh, our yeah. count, by the way, here. I had nine seven suited. 17 okay. left. Me too. Did you <laughs> it, makes it, it makes it that much better when I hit my one outer right here. Seven of diamond is what you have. Good luck. Seven of diamond. The departure no, of Ding Biao, by the way. <laughs> did bring us to a little 8K pay jump. I need a club. 81,000. No, no, no. Nah. I don't think I so. I think I lost this hand. Really? Yeah, I'm not feeling Looks it. Looks destined to go Sean Perry's way. And even he says, I think I lost this one. Not exactly a bold declaration as his underpair needs to turn into a set here in a million chip pot. Fails to do so, GG. though. Good luck. And Roberto Perez. Good luck playing with you guys. GG, bro. I'll see you around. Good yeah, luck. for sure. Thanks, man. Has brought quiet to the 50K. Good luck in the, two fi good luck in the 250, Sean. Really good As luck he in dispatches the Sean Perry, who will earn $81,000 for his effort, eking into the money and notching his second career Triton Cash. So that means we are down to just 16 players. Time for a redraw. David Yen, overall chip leader. You see him there leading Joaquil, who is currently third in chips overall. Leon Sturm, the German, second. Average stack of 1.4 million, 35 bigs. As we are down to just two tables. And as we come back to the desk, Ali Najad, Randy Liu, I turn to you, Randy, and ask, how good is Roberto Perez feeling? about folding those two tens. Very good. First, that uh, he got slid into the money, mm -hmm. and he got the situation to knock out the chattiest player in, <laughs> in the field. <laughs> for better or for worse, obviously he can be pretty entertaining. <laughs> uh, but pretty happy to uh, win there with the two nines and against the two sevens in great shape now. Yeah, looking at Perez's stack now, 25 big blinds deep, obviously deep enough to make some moves, play a little bit of post-flop, and with the short stacks kind of consolidating in, the shortest stack in the room is that of Mikita, Mikita Badziakuski's 12 big blinds. One would anticipate that we're going to be able to play a little bit of poker on the back end of this redraw, which is going to be taking place right now. As it does, we will step aside. More continuing coverage from the 50K event number five here at the Triton Super High Roller Series London coming your way after this.
G poker. Crushed the bone more so many players. This is a crazy thing to do. GG poker. Broke the Guinness World Record. Welcome to the World Series the of Poker. poker song. The biggest event. poker song. It's larger than all of GG poker. Wow. Traffic reaches all time five. Jump, 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 jump. Elevate your poker skills to a whole new level with GTO Wizard's free study plans. These step-by-step -step guides are designed to help you master MTTs and the fundamentals of Game Theory Optimal Poker. Each step includes assignments, resources, and videos to help you master MTTs, implement ICM into your strategy, and help you utilize our software. From engaging drills to insightful articles, each step is a journey towards mastery. So what are you waiting for? Try it today. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players. Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live-action prediction options on the Triton Series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top-up, up, up to $250. Become a part of BetACR.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience. And welcome back to continuing coverage of the 2023 Triton Super High Roller Series London. JW Marriott Grosvenor House right here on Park Lane playing host to a whole series of events. Number five, the one that we have on our hands right now where a redraw break is upon us. We are down to just two tables, 16 players, blinds of 20, 40, and 40. And as it stands right now, a small pay jump was enjoyed by the field. 81,000, the next payout for 16th upon the departures of Ding Biao and Sean Perry. Now, 89,000, another 8K pay jump will be the difference between 16th and 15th. Flat payouts of 89 from there as we pair our way all the way up to the final table of nine. And that's when things will enjoy ladders all the way up to the $1.35 million first place prize. If you're wondering what you're staring at, that, of course, is the Triton Poker Plus app in real time filling in the tables during the redraw right now. Overall chip leader, 
David Yen from New Zealand. Randy has looked impressive, has looked steely. 69 bakes kind of crept his way up there. But the man I've got my eye on is the one second in chips. Have you noticed? I did. It's Dal Min Fu. And the thing about uh, the Triumph Poker Plus app is you can see how he got those chips. And if you look at it, at the graph, he just got in the last hand. Queen Jack of Clubs against King 10 of Linus on this King Jack 5 2 club board. Check raise all in 80K into 1.2 million. Oh. Binks the Jack on the river, and Linus is down to 50K chips remaining. That is awful. Overall, short stack in the field with just one big. You know, Linus, meet DMP. Uh, this is a guy <laughs> who is just ready to go at any given time, and the spin up could turn into a spin down pretty quickly, barring fortuitous runouts like the one that he had right there with the Jack. So Lolliger obviously disappointed, but still going to be notching a decent cash here, just looking to do a little bit better than Dao Min Fu has allowed him to. It would be very improbable for Linus to work his way up from here. Also down toward the bottom, of course, is Makita Badziakuski behind Jason Kuhn with four Triton titles. He is the next most decorated player on tour. Just 470, 12 big blinds. As you see, the table's filling out right now. Badziakuski has drawn the red table. But first, I want to focus on the blue table in the app. There it is. We find the likes of Dalman Fu's 67 big blinds there. And fortunate for DMP, he's going to be the big stack at that feature. Not going to be facing the larger stack. The only one available in the field. And as you glance out at the way that the deck's been shuffled here on the feature, what stands out, Randy? Well, I mean, we've been talking about Del Minfu, and really it's just how are these other players going to respond to what is likely going to be aggression from him. We've seen him being aggressive with the short stack. We know he likes to play big stack poker. So even the, the other player, Leon Stern, might be a little bit afraid to tangle for like a five million chip pot. I'm not so sure. Afraid and uh, German poker, <laughs> not two words that kind of go hand in hand. And Sturm, as you mentioned, did pick up a bracelet earlier in one of the high rollers over at the Correct. World Series of Poker in Vegas. So has certainly proven his mettle, though he is a newcomer to the Triton series. So then let us turn our attention to the other feature table, which is where, as mentioned, we find Makita Badziakuski. And he's got his hands full in terms of the likes of Greenwood and Seidel behind him. Of course, Perez will have something to say from time to time. 12 bigs needs a spin. Danny Tang. That's a name that we haven't really talked about. He did vault his way up toward the top of the leaderboard at one point on the day. Currently, just a quick peek here. We'll see how many chips Danny's got in front of him. That's uh, not, not where I want to go. There it is, 2 million. 50 big blinds right now. Not a bad spot for him to be in. And uh, anything standing out to you here at the secondary? Well, if you look at the top middle, it's Sam, uh, not Sam, Luke Greenwood, uh -huh. who's already won a title here. Yeah, yeah, that is right. Luke, an emotional post-match interview there, obviously was quite proud to have uh, accomplished what he did already. And, you know, the snowball effect is very real. If you win a title early on in the Triton, you get the monkey off your back, the pressure of potentially many, many bullets being you know, spent in the run-up, and then the buy-ins only get bigger, so you're kind of martingaling your way through it at that point, and it can get very, very expensive in short order. Okay, then, without further ado, we are just about set to send you back out to the arena where we have two full feature tables, RFID at both. We're going to be able to bring you all of the coverage of... Anything interesting that takes place, as mentioned, blinds, 20, 40, and 40, 100K per orbit. That's going to be the cost of poker for the time being. And David Yan might actually be pretty pleased not to have Dao Min Fu at his table. What is so funny? Because he's a guy that can make you gamble in ways that you don't want to. <laughs> yes, bro. most certainly. Was just rubbing his face just now. On the topic of rubs, laughing with me, laughing Orpin. with Nachito is fine. Huh? Enjoying, laughing with Nachito is fine. Nachito is up for some laugh. Nachito speaks about himself in third person. <laughs> yeah, you understand? Huh? You understand? What? You understand Spanish? What I say? Okay. You speak Spanish, right? right? Yeah, thank, you. thank you. Oh, like, uh, yeah, I, I was speaking Spanish on the, mm -hmm. on, on, the uh, on the street, on the video. No. Which one's yours? Huh? Really? That yeah. one, right? Mm -hmm. 
That one is yours, yeah. Yeah, I didn't have much, I was gonna say. Yeah. There is Nachito, 1.4 million, 36 bigs. Had the two big doubles early on today to spin it up. Managed to avoid yeah, carnage when Vador flatted an ace queen. On what he he in turn flatted two nines, and then it was Pedro Garagnani that couldn't resist the temptation. Jamming ace jack into two jacks. And finding the exit as a result. Well, he's going to be aggressive with this big stack. Queen eight off, making it 85,000. A little bit of a decision coming up for Orpin, a seven off. I don't think Haxon's getting involved, he's out. Yeah. Pretty predictable, the muck from Ike, but been with one million in front of him. A7 is the type of hand you usually will just call, but is a candidate for three bet folding as well. But I'm not sure if you want to be three betting against Delman Fu, might take a little bit more flops against you. So Yeah, exactly. He's so sticky. As we saw, the Queen Jack willing to check jam on a king high board against Linus. Got very lucky. And here he is with a gut shot straight draw on a 10 high two club board. The clubless ace high. Checking over with the flow. Looks like he does find a continuation bet that will take this one down. Doesn't matter what the size is, but a7 hardly can continue. No club in hand. It's like a signature Orpin hat, isn't it? Savage? I think we've seen him wear it before. Yeah but nothing savage about check folding as Dow's aggression is rewarded promptly. 60K C bet. Looking good in the Burberry jacket, by the way. Yeah, the collar flipped up earlier to let us know what he was working with. It's been a bit rainy. <laughs> Feels like the appropriate type of garment yes, to be traipsing around Mayfair with right now. And you were kind of giving David Yan how are you? A little bit of <laughs> mouthful for wearing Savage. a rain jacket, was it? It was an earful <laughs> okay, that we gave him, Make him first off. Of Boom. Second off, it was, you know, wow, a different lucky, very lucky forecast carpet. that day. Okay. You but never know. The weather changes true. rather quickly here. As do fortunes. Here with two tables left. Jackson's playing off of a 16 big blind stack. If he does raise this and get aggression, I don't think he'll be looking to fold it unless it's action from the other, both other blinds. Maybe Little pickup. Yeah. You know, we touched earlier, I believe during the pregame, Randy, on how surprising it is that Haxton, despite having 7.4 million in career Triton earnings and 24 caches, has yet to pick up a title. Yes, especially because he's played so many events, too. Right. Um, we all, we're also surprised that Chidwick only has one title oh. despite having 10 top three finishes. Yeah, I'm just lucky. Oh. What a increase from when you were at that seat. Good, good job. You know, every 
series, though, it does feel as though we get a breakout player. Obviously, we know last stop, that was Jason Kuhn. And by the way, the body of work turned in by Chidwick, who was in the Ivan Leal Player of the Year award during that same stop, could have been considered a player of the series effort Yes. at certain stops. But you had Kuhn performing so well. Danny Tang also did all right. A bit too early to say at this stop, I would think. Yeah, yeah. So many events still left on the docket. Kisa Chikoru. Ace, deuce. Button open is going to be pushed back upon. Maybe. Iwa Kiel's <laughs> Queens in the small. Put in a small Two three bet. Never nice to open the button of ASX and get three bet. Can't really do too much against it, especially off of this 20 big blind stack or so. Well, actually a little bit more. You would have to really think your opponent is going at you to four bet this one. Perfecto. Dale, bárbaro. Tenemos que hacer el pago total ahora. 185 more. No sé cómo te hago el pago total. Doesn't peak Orpin's interest. Flipping it back over. The secondary feature, Luke Greenwood. Blind v. Blind with Seidel. Yeah, in this spot, Lucas Greenwood limp called 130k preflop. Seidel is the preflop aggressor. Well, they got very deep stacks for both players. Going to try to hit that free one. Hit it. Little binky for Seidel. Two overs in the gut. He did not see bet. Let's see if he tries to extract value now against the 10x type holdings. Second check in front of him. Opportunity feels like it's there. And 100K is <coughs> sizing. <coughs> This is a, a big call down right here of Ace-3. Well, it's not a call down just yet, as Greenwood puts 100,000 <coughs> in there. Doesn't improve and checks. Seidel's kicker does play. Relevant fact in terms of his decision as to whether or not to value bet this river. You might also hear from big hands on the turn. You know, like a 9x that wants to charge with all those draws out there. 8-7 probably wouldn't pay, play passive, but just going to play cautious. Must have felt that 10x wouldn't call another bet. However, his opponent did have just ace high. I mean, if we can't find the hands that are going to pay off, then it's okay not to fire. Yeah, because and we open the action and make ourselves vulnerable. Right, Ali. The main point is opening the action is sometimes you bet small like, well, I think he's weak, so I got to bet small. But then they see the small bet and they're like two million chips. And yeah. then you're like, did I really just open the door? Sorry. Linus needs a hand. A-S-A-P. He's sort of like the Swiss Lou Garza. Brandy, in terms of the drip index. Yeah, Lou Garza. I know who that is. Brandy. <laughs> <laughs> Danny looking pretty cool himself behind those lenses. Those are new. Don't remember seeing the. Are those 8 bit or 16 bit? <laughs> <laughs> I see it. Put some white lines on there. It looks like the meme. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, right. Limp here from the 8 do suited. Stravar, wondering what Linus is thinking, and for that matter, so am I. 
Yeah, fair enough. Um, basically, he's hitting the big blind and big blind ante next. So I believe the reason is that he wants to collect the whole big blind ante in the next hand. It, it's a bit different, right? Yeah. But it's just it's eight dusty. Deuce. It I is mean. dusty. He gets a better price on this hand if he continues in this <coughs> manner. <laughs> but he may not get to that next hand. Obviously, if anybody wants to put a raise out there, he's got to put the extra 10K in and hope. And it really is such bottom of range. I, I hear you, but you know what? Sometimes you're just dealt the next hand. There's yep. nothing you can do. You've got 50K. The big line is 40. He's actually in okay shape against these two hands specifically. Sorry. Especially <coughs> given the interference with one another. So... The Strava raise with the ace jack draws the defense <coughs> from David Yan. The two of them will play an active side pot of 60,000 as Lolliger keeps his holding concealed, playing for the 210 in the main. Eight high flop, and Linus in good shape here. Yan back door. Oh, front door, forgive me. Nut flush draw and the gutter, so some real sweat. And when we have the larger main pot still in play and we're in the money with some pay jumps lurking, we don't really want to go piling more chips into the side with one another if we're Jan and Strava, right? Yeah, basically you want to look at the, side of the, the size of the side pot, but you also need to look at your hand strength relative to the player who's all in. If you've got showdown value, then maybe you can start firing, but if you're just holding like a high card draw, well... There's no point really betting. So they are going to try to see if they hit that river card. And that is the end of Linus Lolliger. Yeah, the jack of clubs coming on the back end of the check check. On both flop and turn, giving David Jan the nuts. I would love to see David bet here because there's a lot of checking. It does check. Straver has hit the jack, Randy. Yeah, you kind of want to put in a milky bet here. Yeah. Now, when you're sizing, are you sizing in relation to the side pot or the overall pot? It should be the overall pot. Uh, there is consideration for the side pot as well. Regardless, his opponent, for you to bet here, you can't really be bluffing too much given how little is in the side pot. So that kind of changes things a little bit. Does bet 100. Like, that's why he's going rather small. Less than half. Just a dream scenario for David Yen. This 100K smoldering in front of Johannes. See David doing his best to make it seem as though there's some decision making. Theory wise, he could be making a stance here because there's that extra 100k now in the side pot, something worthy of fighting for, 160. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily mean that Bowling. he would never have a bluff here. And you know, Johannes is pretty sick that he did not want to see that and also did not really expect it. Now, what does the presence of a main pot and Linus do to how we read this spot from Jan in terms of range? Jan <coughs> should expect that Straver has got reasonable showdown value because he wouldn't just bet pure air to win that 60k side pot. Well, conversely, what should Johannes be expecting David's hand to contain. He should expect that David Yan's hand be stronger than normal because if David Yan let's just say has a high card hand like ten high or king high, it won't usually won't win the main pot against Linus Lolliger, just given the, the run out. So he would be getting a worse price on this bluff.
Multi-time bank situation <coughs> for Strava. Consider the way this one played out. Lolliger limp, a Strava raise, a big blind defend from David. Active side pot of 60 was not approached on flop or turn by either player. And then with a third check in front of him, one couldn't blame Strava for hunting value having hit second pair nut kicker. So Strava is kind of wondering why David Yan didn't bet the turn, I guess, or or bet the river himself as played. Ex because David Yan should be extracting value <coughs> on the river after checks to flop and turn, expecting Johannes to just check back the river so, so much. So he's finding it odd that his opponent is now check raising for value. Then again, like, clubs doesn't really have to bet the turn if the side pot's only 60k. Especially if it's a high card one that has no showdown value. Extremely tough. Obviously, Linus, ever professional, not giving anything away that would maybe tip his hand, literally and proverbially, in terms of likelihood or prospects that he'll be dragging the main. And the call oh. comes in. <coughs> Strava is going to get showered, as is Linus Love. A double knockout. Just like that. Can I get a, can I get a bottle of smoke? Bloodshed. And blinds up? Yes, please. Yeah, that tricky line really paid off for David Yan, getting the maximum. Had he just bet the river as most players would, yeah. he would have just won like 100k more. Well played. <clears throat> Is there any merit, not to be results oriented, but to Johannes simply taking the check back there? There is definitely merit to it. It depends on how wide you think your opponent will call your river bet. Does he think David Yan would call with like an 8x, 6x, or 4x? If he thinks not, then maybe he shouldn't be betting. He'll be reviewing the tape though on that one to kind of just figure out was that a mistake or not. Hmm? I was paying limited attention for when he bet the river. I was like, 25 like really unsure about whether he should like bet on bet this hand or not. And then when you shove there, it's like, oh, maybe David. Oh, okay. oh, gotcha. yeah. Greenwood suggesting that perhaps Strava looked unsure. When betting the river, not that it mattered. See the hand. Oh, Jan with the nuts. Yeah, was just doing Bio nutted open. things. Oh, <laughs> with the check jam that puts him at 3.4 million at the top of the leaderboard in front of Dao Min Fu, who runs second with 2.7. So we slip it back over to the feature. Yeah, two in the hand that yeah, Linus busted? From six oh, okay. So David Yan busted two people. Oh. Sean Strawber and Linus Leuliger. Rebalancing oh, okay, effort, sees Orpin cool. and Therapist Travis. headed elsewhere. Yeah. Thanks. Massage therapist, not regular oh. therapist, I assume. I would as well, but one never knows. Multitasking therapist. Perhaps we can seek non-physical comfort in the form of a, an intimate discussion during yep. the massage. I realize you might need therapy. Interesting choice to employ might in that sentence, <laughs> Randy. Okay, may I correct it? Please do. You need therapy. Correct. Barbero needs to raise. Ace 10. 105 off of his 1.3 and change from the cutoff. Haxton doesn't rate to be the man, but Joaquil could be a customer. 
Oh, Wakil is definitely going to be a customer of King Nine suited. From time to time, he'll put in a three bet, but definitely a hand you more often just call. Plays well. Eighty-five in the middle, king high flop, oh so clean for Jamil, and oh so dusty for the ace ten. Yeah, nice texture here actually for Jamil Wakil, but you know ace ten usually will just take it down with a C bet. Lots of turn cards. You can also multi barrel. <laughs> so with the check and the sense that only King X is that which he might be truly concerned about, Barbero fires 135,000. Into that 285, of course, Joaquil making the call. <laughs> no assistance for Barbero. Yeah, great card with the top two pair in case you were up against a better king. Now you've got nothing to worry about. Ace 10 has showdown value here, so he could still beat like the ace threes, ace two, maybe some ace eight, seven backdoor flush draw type holdings. Does check back. Not the greatest card for Jamil. Not that he's worried about 6-7, but more so it's hard for him to represent a bluff by check calling. And then with the 6-7 kind of getting there. So it might affect how he sizes this hand. Obviously, he had so much kit on the turn. Really, the backdoor diamonds and the inside straighty stuff. Not very obvious. That might be checking back to realize equity with some frequency is the stuff that Jamil would have been worried about with these kings and nines. And, and Jamil is just trying to extract value from the king X's that exist. Yeah, yeah. suddenly activating. The eight does complete six, seven. Worthy of note. As played, I don't really see how Nacho can continue. On the cooking station. Why you have a three? Okay. Show me a three. No. Can you hear Nacho say, show me ace three? Because there's so few bluffs with the way it ran out. It's basically like ace three and ace two exclusively. <laughs> Action on the turn did go check, check. So really, Wakil didn't even have the opportunity to slow play in the face of a barrel. Did obviously check call the top pair. And yeah, and got busy on the end. Relatively uneventful one. Oh, As 16 players remain. 14, rather. Forgive me. There it is. How long do you stay here in London? Not sure yet. <laughs> it's a nice place to live at, I think. London? Yeah, the park outside. It's pretty amazing, no? What? The park and the area is just very nice. Yeah, I mean, not bad. Super expensive, though. Yeah. What the hell? <laughs> When I was driving here, the shuttle driver said sometimes he gets booked from like rich guys and he just should be the shuttle driver for like three weeks. And then only thing he's doing is waiting outside the hotel, being ready like 13 hours every single day. And on many days they don't even drive. But they just want him to be there in case they want to go somewhere, you know. And sometimes they go out, but then decide to take the walk and it's 
crazy, and it, but obviously it gets paid for it, like, yeah. for the entire three weeks. Ace-9, looking to get paid fully by a Jack-9. Barbaro, yeah, back at it. Money is just numbers, it's Unimproved again. Nice. You could see Nacho, of course, see bet this board, but if you do check back do to Ace-Highs, you tend to use the Ace-9, Ace-8s, so he does check back. <laughs> I don't know. Must be repairing like four. Hits the turn as Sturm like doesn't pick up equity. Nah, I don't know. I don't think... I don't think so for me. If it does get checked to Nacho, he may put in kind of a did not equity denial little bet. Otherwise, he would just check down, hoping to do it show it own. down. Most things, at least. Great run out here for Nacho Barbero. Don't really feel like Leon Sturm is going to try to represent a hand at this point. Would feel tough. Be very tough. Yeah. White flag waved in both camps. Fair fight. Ish. <laughs> Not even <laughs> close. with all the needles. Looking at his Triton resume. Randy, we find 1.8 million plus in career earnings. Six caches and a title. This is Nacho's fourth visit to the Triton Super High Roller Series. His title coming at his second visit. Third event that he ever played. The 15K No Limit 8 Max in Vietnam. Picked up 600,000. Cashed once more. Second in Vietnam in the 25K Turbo. 460K there. Another second in a 30K Mystery Bounty in Cyprus. So he very easily could have had three titles. Yeah, he's uh, he got some amazing results <laughs> for the Melon tournaments he's played in. You say four stops. I believe he only played like one, one in event in the very first yeah. one. So that almost doesn't even count. So it's been rather impressive. Regardless, DMP, Ace King. Paxton, two tens. They're going to clash. They sure are. He's only got 725K. Slide all but one. Three bet. Effective all in from Haxton. We know Dow would be ready to dance with this ace king. He went all in. At all prices. You see, there's not all in over there, is he? No, they're playing a big pot. I suppose I could wait for the river to happen. And what's Ike doing here before calling it's that? It's a pay jump stall right now. Okay. Uh, it's over. I don't care. All in for one. Yeah. Thank you. So. The extra nickel flicked forward as we'll play for over one and a half with Ike Haxton's Event 5 life at risk. He takes 56% to the flop against the two overs. An ace promptly furnished in the window to Dao Min Fu. No club in Haxton's hand. And no straight draw on the turn, courtesy of a jack or a king. So then, two outs once. Can I kit? He cannot. Good luck, everybody. Yeah. And he will leave behind 13 players. And he will he took, he took haul in $89,000 for his 14th place strong. effort. Hey, okay, me and you heads up, okay? Just take, take their chips, okay? Not, uh, everybody <laughs> laddering up to 98,000. Okay? Like, we, like we talk on the break. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Super pro. Nice hand, though. Thank you, thank you. Your friend, the guy on your left. It's good business. Mm -hmm. Service? Also, Service? just befriend Dow. Can I get a bottle of, yeah. a bottle of water? I hate to break it to you. No water. He's still jamming over the top of you or snap calling you sticky and light. Oh, that's your food? No favors coming out of that camp. He's here to play the game. Well, here, I got one. 
Thank you. Yeah, that's going to vault him up in second place. No, I didn't fetch. I didn't I don't see. Don't worry, don't worry. They were both looking somewhere else. I'm even. Let's go. Suited connector for Jamil. All to win right now. All to win. Bobbing and weaving out there. And raise at the quarter 50 level. And the six deuce too dusty for Ole. I ac it actually was an ace, the car, but none of them see them, so I didn't want to say anything. See, would have changed the whole hand. And with a brief pause in the action, we remind you that today's event is brought to you by Poker Stake, the official staking partner of the Triton Super High Roller Series and the ultimate platform for staking and professional poker players around the globe. No fees on any purchases, all winnings guaranteed. It is the go-to place for anyone looking to support their favorite player's journey and celebrate the rewards of big victories. Check out PokerStake.com now and stake your champion. I'll stake you, Ollie. Would you? The 10 pound local game, pub game. Really? Yeah, the daily 10 pound over at the Vic. <laughs> Thanks. I mean. I think I'm going to buy myself into that one, okay. Randy. But I if you want to be on the hook for the unlimited rebuy period. Oh. <laughs> Most buy-ins. <laughs> I'm going to go minutes. get my DMP on in the first. <laughs> my DMP. First few levels. You do an EMP, OK? He is an EMP. Between two legends of the game. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm with fist, just lucky. <laughs> yeah, we got it. Okay. You don't seem to do that bad, for, uh, <laughs> honestly. You just got to trail Five chips seconds. horizontally. Yeah, he's starting to encroach upon Barbaro's real estate. Over to the right with that configuration. A6 offsuit up front. Oh, I being a duo of two fives. 645,000 in front of him, but obviously he knows that DMP is sticky. He's going to jam it anyway. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to find out. What DMP is all about here as Ole bows out with that lovely Jack-10 suited. He's not going to play this. There we go. Okay. Show the ace, I assume. A little bit too rich. Mm -hmm. Deems down. I know. I'm just getting something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe A7. Oh, they said it. A7 off. A7. I think you have... Okay. Like, no, no, no. Actually, Thanks. you have A6. That's your hand. Oh, wow. A6 suited, maybe. Bingo. I give you suited, but maybe off suit too. No, off suit no. Maybe. 50 50. Mm. I had a nice hand. Yeah. Beautiful. I can see it. Maybe same hand. Don't like me. Maybe not. Five seconds. Oh. Okay, I would have paused. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Five seconds. Is this term time? Here's your answer. And it's the queen nine suited. Bumps it up just north of the min. Nice spot. I've been meaning to ask, this is one or two items of clothing? Unclear. Okay. We raised to oh, it's two. Definitively? Oh. I saw Money. the separation as he pushed those chips in. Oh, ace king. Oh, real separation now. As Shemion's three bet with the two hooks over the top of the open gets piled on. 
by DMP. You three bad. I'm on in. Why are you thinking? Who's giving him a speech Ooh. play? Well, he is strong. Five seconds. It's too strong, probably, to lay down these two jacks. With the Fine. No, chips he's got. He's put in 280 of his 1 million. Actually, a favorite. Takes a beat with the time bank, but ultimately makes the call, and he's off to the races. The German, Shemion, just shy of a million. This is a very big pot. 2.2. Forty-four bigs, and a pot that would vault down and oh. into the chip lead as he hits the yeah. king, but a jack oh. yeah. also finds its way to the board. <laughs> Middle set, 93%. Yeah. And now 100% as the turn doesn't give Dow any sweat. That's 900. And I saw the king first. On that yeah. Oh, they're gonna. Nice try, though. I thought I counted. Take a bite. Had a DMP. I shouldn't say this in the stream because. Yes. Take up the idea. It's a bad beat. <laughs> Yeah, really. It's okay. It's okay. Uh -huh. Nice king. King. Why? Pocket jack. Why pocket king? Dow. So emotional at the table, Randy, but authentically so. Yes, that's true. Was fortunate to take out Haxton's two tens, but not this time against the two jacks with the ace king. Same hand. What did we lose? We have 30. Who wants to buy? Oh. Okay. Good, good, all good. Yeah. Five seconds. Pocket eights now for Barbero. Definitely going to be activating these snowmen. Five seconds. Race to 110,000. Oh. I had a good hand. Oh, I was waiting for you to shop. I mean, I have 20 blinds. I mean, what? I'm going to fold labor 20 blinds. Maybe you shop fights. I don't fucking know. I don't know, Shamal. I don't fucking know. I don't know. Just here. I want to just hang out a, li a little bit more, you know, between the two legends, Dao and Ole Shemi. <laughs> What's your name? Miss Dao. Dao? Yeah. I'm Ole. Yeah. Nice, nice to meet you. you. He probably knows who you are. Anyway, I'd like to introduce myself anyhow. No, no, no. Five seconds? No, I'm saying that he knows all the players. You knew him before? No. 105. Never. Oh, no, no, yes. Raised to 105,000. Oh, wow. Weird. I thought he would know you. I mean, oh. I can't expect that from someone. Are you surprised? Dow doesn't know who Ole Shemion is? No. Because Nacho assumed he did, and he clearly was wrong. I think Nacho might have been trolling a little bit, no? Five seconds. I would think it's hard to tell. He's bluffing me consistently oh. yeah. <laughs> while I'm in the booth. He's very balanced. Ace six suited. Had this two club kit cool. of oh. Ibinger in a bad way. Bows out though, respecting oh. the under the gun range. Oh. Dow. Lured by the button and king nine suited in combination. Flats, and we play for 335. Top pair against second pair, but an all diamond texture. Matias with the gutter and the best hand. 
Yeah, it's always hard to put Dao on a range that flat calls you pre-flop. Less than 20 blinds. Going to play cautious for now. Dao might think he's got the best hand. He's reaching for chips. Looking to just take this down on his very tough texture. One third pot. Of course, Eyebinger's hand is vulnerable to another diamond. Wonder if he check calls or comes in with check raise all in. Basically depends on what he thinks of Dow's range to bet here in position, as well as flat the undergun open. Looks like he's gonna play passive. Cold. To the river we go. Ow. I'm sorry, the turn rather, as it goes kings and nines, and DMPs run good is really something else. I should have folded. it. I looked at it. 6 9 suited. I mean, Dow, of course, was worried when he got called on the flop. At this point, now he's just hoping he's got, his opponent's got some Queen X type holding. Small bet. Do you think that that flop check is in any way associated with the fact that it's Dow behind him? I would think so. I would think that he can extract value um, from some weaker honies, which he did, the King-9. And also avoid getting piled on violently and awkwardly in a spot where he doesn't expect yeah, so someone to play that way. It's nice to kind of see one card drop off before committing, right? Like two to go, if your opponent's holding a lone diamond, you're in trouble. Gonna make another call here. Perfectly sized from Dao Minfu to get this yeah. Queen Jack to come along. This is really dairy farmer-esque. By Fu, who is delivered a very clean and uncomplicated three of hearts on the river. This one's at 895 now. Yeah, just a great river card. No diamond. And note the SPR, only 500,000 back for Ibinger. On the loose side. What? It's on the loose side. I just did. A little double peak. The, uh, the registration finishing in eight minutes. Dow attacks one more time. 260k. He knows that Ibinger is rather weak. Notice that he bets 260 of the remaining five instead of pushing him all in. Yeah. But is that going to be just a bit too suspicious from a guy who Ibinger would expect would be more apt to just jam it in there? It might be. But then again, you're thinking, look, I know this guy blasts from time to time on pots. I'm getting a price where I don't have to risk my tournament life. Maybe I just call and pray this guy's making a big play? It's possible. It's not really a bubble. No, but I think he... Gamble bubble. Yeah, I think he's... 7-9, I can open 6 9 and You like to open loose? Not really. I've seen it many times. Awkward moment here for the Austrian. <laughs> Don't bullshit me. <laughs> Five seconds. You've seen it on the stream? No, on live tables. <laughs> Time. Two-time Triton title winner. <laughs> Nine caches, like 3.4 million in career earnings. When he makes decisions, they tend to be right. I'm trying to sell it a little bit, though. I top two. Not on this occasion, though. Not top two, but oh, still two, kings but and nines. Top, top <laughs> <laughs> but it's still good. <laughs> that's top two. South America. In South America, that's not top two. We, we have like Losing. one degree less. In Austria, that's not top two. A massive. In Austria, they're very strict. Tattoo, tattoo. Chunk of his stack. And now, foo. I should have three you and save you a lot of money. With that pot, Fuck, sorry, moves bro. back into second in chips ahead of Joaquil. Maybe I saved myself money. You north of showing? three million. If Jan, north of four million, the leader. Ibinger. Overall shorty. Look, you were saying that Ibinger normally gets it right, but when you throw in the DMP factor, just things go haywire a bit. You're so right about that. You know, I, throughout your poker career, I would imagine, be it online or be it live, Randy, there have been those screen names or those individuals that when you get involved in a game or a match with them, you just feel like you don't know where you're at. They always make you uncomfortable. 
I and know, it's, guys. you know, not like they're knitting it up. It's not like they're 100% reckless. They're just somewhere in between, and you never know. And sometimes it feels like they don't know where they're at. 100%. Everyone has that villain. Yeah. Yeah, no, but that's good luck. Of course. It's a lot more fun for us not having to contend with that villain here in the booth, but rather just soak up and enjoy the curveballs being thrown. And watching our pros attempt to navigate against them. Ace four suited, cut off. DMP going to work. Sturm's small, queen jack, going to flat it. Now Ibinger, 140 back here. Like this suited king. Well, he's going to continue, but it's just whether he wants to rejam all in or just call. He probably will call. You would rejam if you thought that the original guy would reshove and give you protection. I don't think he can rely on DMP doing that. Because you ideally want to just get this heads up. So he clicked it. With the seven of hearts, yeah. Oh, this is interesting, actually. He's reopened the action to allow DMP to hopefully re-ISO it. Well, yeah, because he really doesn't want to have to play against both Fu and Sturm. But he also leaves 40k back in case it kind of checks down and he can preserve his tournament life. It's rather technical, this race. Yeah. He would have preferred that Dao obviously ISO. Now that Dao hasn't, though, he is enticing Sturm. But He's also small, opened the door for Sturm to reopen action if Dow just calls. Yeah, I was just thinking that because if Leon doesn't think that Dow's hand is all that good. But I guess it was not the case. He could go to work, and is that exactly what we're seeing? Yes, it is. And how strong is the statement being made here? Well played from Eibinger to get this heads up as a favorite. Exactly. I mean, Sturm has done him a massive favor kicking the ace four out and leaving Ibinger with 58% equity heads up for 580. Like 0%, No matter result, that's really one of the most brilliantly played hands I've seen. Why? Why you worried? 0%. To take you out. It is, look. So to the flop we go with Ibinger's oh fate gosh. hanging in the balance. The jack high board, binking Sturm. You see frustration from Dow. Not flush draw, but still just ace high. He's not in there. He keeps lying. He's going to be lying a little bit. And now top two on the turn makes it official. Ibinger draws dead. I don't believe that you had... I don't believe you rapid and unceremonious exit from the Austrian in 13th as we are down to okay, just 12. I believe Shaq Seren suited. I really do believe Shaq Seren suited if you tell me right now. I think you're picking up 98. Dow <sighs> wouldn't have won that pot. But <laughs> He's just frustrated that he would have had so much equity. But good news for him, actually, that he got kicked out. He would have lost Chip's post flop. That's right. Oh, my gosh. Very lucky. It's going to be balanced when we come back from the break, okay? Balance? The table's going to balance when we come back from the break. There's 12 left. Mm. 12 left or 13? 12. I have it. Actually, it's on YouTube? 12, no. I mean... No, it's on the show first. Oh. Big black? No. No, big black. Ah, yeah, yeah. No small black. From Leon. I'm right. So a little advisory that we are just about to go to a scheduled break, and during that break is when the rebalancing efforts will take place. Sturm, ace nine suited, picking up back-to-back -back pots, ending this frame on a high note. So then.
interesting things afoot here in event number five. And among them is Dao Min Fu surging. 60 big, second in chips overall. David Yan, first overall. As you get a look at the chip counts there at the feature when we return from this break, it'll be blinds of 30 and 60,000. That breakdown brought to you by GG Poker. And as we bring you back to the desk, Ali and Randy. Randy, you talked about that specific spot being one of the most technical hands that you've played. It wasn't due to a massive collision, a bunch of chips floating around, but Ibinger rather creating a very interesting situation. Yeah, um, I think a lot of people might just default call there and just see if he hit something and continue, but he created a spot where he reopened the action for not just one player to uh I re-isolate it, but two. Whereas if DMP reshoves, it's great. He gets a heads up, kicks out Leon Sturm. But if DMP just calls, DMP looks so weak to not want to get in against the four big blind stack. Therefore, the other guy opens the door to re kick out DMP, and that's what he did. And he did get in as a favorite. Unfortunately, cards didn't fall his way. Yeah, obviously. That was the 13th place finish for Ibinger, leaving us with 12 here. And uh, the payouts, 98000 at present. And 112,000 will go to the 11th place finisher, taking a peek there at the Triton Poker Plus app. So Randy and I are going to step aside from the desk. I still have work to do, though, as, of course, the mystery bounty that concluded yesterday, won by Espen Jorstad, is going to have the bounty draw taking place in just about an hour's time, I think it is. Uh, two hours time. Okay, so you're not going to want to miss anything. We're going to pass it off to Henry Kilbane and Maria Ho for continuing coverage on the back end of this scheduled break. And then, of course, we'll find our way to that bounty draw. I'm uh, definitely looking you're forward excited, to it. my friend. Hope you guys are as well. <laughs> Thanks for being with us here. Continuing coverage of Event 5 will come your way, the 50K, after this. <laughs> What's the best way to master GTO poker? At GTO Wizard, we have blogs that will teach you the art of learning poker, starting from the big picture and working your way down to the finer details. Then we teach you how to implement these new skills at the table, step by step. At GTO Wizard, we have all the resources you need to learn how to crush the competition for free. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players. Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live action prediction options on the Triton series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top-up, up, up to $250. Become a part of BetACR.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience.
that he's going to check. I need the Arnazi. You don't believe him? Why do you believe the block? Curious to see what kind of sizing these two fives go for. I Clearly, he's got the best hand. Down. Doesn't really want to price out his customers, so he put in, puts puts in a one third bet. <laughs> There's a chance Fedor continues to 8-6 as I well. I with the best hand, and I, when I check, I had the worst hand. You couldn't plot, you couldn't turn at ace high. That's, that's why you don't believe him. You don't believe him. I was right or not? Yeah. Keel <laughs> in position, 50k bet. Fedor does was not I continue, right? and it's back over to Chavero, who started this mess. I was right? Yeah, you don't believe. You couldn't ace high. You don't believe him. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Don't believe, wait. <laughs> oh. I was trapping him. A little gutter <laughs> ball for Chevero now on the turn. The extra 100,000 slipping into the middle. He would have gone in even on that, and I would have called on the other rivers. Looks like he's contemplating last. a lead, actually, as the ace is more favorable enough. for the pre flop <coughs> raiser in a lead position. Yeah, he's just going to just lead out big here. He wants to apply pressure to get these pocket pairs to just to lay down. And as played, Ignacio can clearly have like the ace kings and ace queens. That would check call a small bet on a flop. Nice slow play here from Jamil. Yeah, very much so. And as he goes from firing to calling. And now the hearts come in, but pair the board, Randy. This is problems for Ignacio Chavetto. He does have Jamil Wakil covered, but his king high flush is up against fives full in a 610K pot that is going to be growing to much more than that. I cannot imagine a world where he does not lose the rest of the stack here. He might just lead out Jam himself. 60. And actually puts out a 10% chip bet trying to induce. Problem is he's actually inducing from a hand that's got him beat. Very much is the problem. So downsized. And when we downsize this much, Randy, occasionally we expect the raise to come in as a result of perhaps reading the situation incorrectly as we're weak. Right. So if there was ever a chance you'd bet folding hand, if you downsize like this, you tend to call a lot more often knowing that you induce. So even if Jamil goes all in here, I'm pretty sure Ignacio would call it off rather quickly with the, the nut flush. And Jamil's going to just slide all but one in there. And I'm sure Ignacio believes his opponent could have a full house here, but there's worse flushes as well. He's just going to reshove and try to get the last chip. Yeah. So somewhat predictable outcome there, and you can see the excitement on Jamil Wakil. And he is scooching forward in his chair, eager. Yeah, it, dep it, yeah, it, could, be, it could be okay, but it depends <coughs> if the coffee comes very hot. Then it all melts it right away. It, it melts it melt the ice. It just makes it watery. Yeah, it gets watery, yeah. I didn't realize everyone was a barista. <laughs> they are really passionate about yeah. these barista techniques. It's just a nice coffee, right? Like you get ice, a cup, you pour in the coffee, some milk, and then you serve. I feel like, like there might be more to the science. It. I can make it. You can assemble it. I don't know if you can make it as Strava makes it 40,000. Fedor Flats with his ace queen, under the gun and under the gun plus one. And of course, when you see that kind of action, King Jack suited does need to be a little bit wary, but 
perhaps not when it's sitting as deep as Wakil, as he will join the party, dominating Dao Min Fu. Look at the price being laid to yeah. Fu, just 20 for a shot at 130. Yeah, but he's thinking the other option as well is just there's a lot of chips in there. Maybe just take it down pre and gamble it up. I don't think he's throwing a time bank to, to fold this hand. Hello, Dao Min Fu, doing Dao Min Fu things. Yes, sir. He's going to get action. The question is from who? Three hundred and fifty five K jam. Obviously, it looks tremendously strong for Dow to be willing to do this out of the big blind against an under-the-gun opener, a flatter behind. Fedor is in a really tricky spot now. Yeah, with the party starter out of there, it would have been a bit different, but Stravara has made the call. And I think it's precisely the call by Strava that is wow. troublesome to Fedor. Because Johannes would do this maybe from time to time, looking to trap. He would do it the whole range. Exactly. Looking to trap uh, Fedor and then possibly even Joaquil. Although it's good, for you. it's good for you. The bigger candidate, of course, would be holes in terms of traps. Well, continuing coverage from event number five it is the 50K AMAX from the JW Merritt here at the Grosvenor House, part of the Triton Super High Roller Series. Maria Ho, alongside myself, Henry Kilbain, jumping into as the relief team, I believe, letting Arlene Jard and Randy Lou step out to go and do some bounty duties. Arlene going to be stepping up to the plate to put on his game show. But for now, our own game show in the form of this 50K with our first seven-figure payout of the series, over a million up top for the eventual champion. And Maria, we've got a pretty star-studded lineup. When you think of names in the industry, Lucas Greenwood, Eric Seidel, uh, Oli Shemian, a name that I haven't seen in a while, but know is just a legend of the live poker scene. Uh, looking at the app, is there anything that really just stands out to you in terms of, you know, who do you, who do you think is going to come into this FT as one of the chip leaders? Well, David Yan is a player that has been playing for a long time, was an online crusher, and then maybe stopped playing as frequently, but, you know, in the last few years has really come back, but not in the sense of making a comeback. He never really left. He's always mm. been a really incredible player. So the kind of retired secretly for six months or <laughs> didn't post anything on socials and then continued to crush when he did return. Right. Sounds like Fedor Holtz, who won himself a title just the other night. Maybe Jan's going to repeat that feat here. Uh, we're going to be jumping into table one. We've got Sturm, Shemion, Barbero, Dalmin Fu, who I believe you've yet had the pleasure to commentate on. DMP, a legend around these parts. <laughs> I did watch a little bit of the coverage from earlier today. I saw him make a shove, I think, in a four-way pot, uh, which ended up getting called, and he was squeezing, didn't have a great hand, but still managed to win. And I feel like that's just a little bit of insight of what we have yet to see from him. DMP, he's dynamite. Let's throw it down to the main stage as DMP gets in the mix alongside Barbero and the rest of the blue feature table. We can see him leading the field on that blue table. And the man that Maria was talking about, David Yan, over on the red feature table, one of those live grinders who's just been getting it done consistently <laughs> at a high level for quite some That's time now. Me, <laughs> Again, we got Barbero, so we'll just mute our mics and let Barbero do the she talking. Look at me, look at me like, what is he saying? 
I think earlier today, instead of Barbero doing the talking, he was trying to fade a lot of needles coming his way, really? actually. Yeah, from, I think, Fedor um, and a couple of other people at the table just giving him, you know, a couple okay. of jabs here and there. Uh, was there any, any reason they just all decided, you know, enough's <laughs> enough, we need to silence this man? Or? I think Barbero's an easy target sometimes. I know what you mean. Sounds like me. Barbero, Check. Check. talk of the devil. Popping the nut flush draw. And the gut shot. Coming through with nut middle pair. A few options on the table. Sub 20 bigs. Against the very loose DMP. Barbero proceeds. Gonna nice. take it north. The 350. Mm. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Let's go. I mean, look, this is this is Dao Min Fu. Uh, this is just a little taste of what I thought I might see, and I'm glad that he is living up to expectation. Just pretty much snap jamming over the check raise of Barbaro, saying, "Look, I've got middle pair. If you've got it, you've got it, and got it he does on the turn." Macho Barbero up to 40 bigs, and with that double... Jesus again on the river. <laughs> wow, <laughs> Jesus oh, nice Christ. Seven low. <laughs> wow. That nice was low strong, low Nacho. Haha, yeah. uh -huh, one, one, one million thirty. I got it right, not like Oli. So he gets the double, gets the opportunity to needle his opponent as we take our attention. Wow. Yeah, another bloodbath. <laughs> It just feels like every time we've been in the booth, <laughs> it's just been hand against hand. This is not edited. This is not post-production. This is live. It's the same situation yesterday. It's been the theme of the series so far. As Danny Tang opens from under the gun, faces resistance from the Spaniard, and it's going to be looking for an ace across five cards, as I don't see a world in which this doesn't find its way into the middle, Maria. Yeah, generally speaking, an under the gun open off of that stack size is usually going to be quite strong, but of course still, you know, even after the three bet from Perez, you just can't get away from ace king. 98,000 guaranteed for the final 12. We are on a 14K ladder, <laughs> should Danny exit in 12th, we can see he will 30% of the time. Big fan of the shades, by the way, DT. As he Ooh. finds the ace high flop and Perez now drawing to one out twice. Me neither. <laughs> Love to see. But there's still a world in which laughter can be had. <laughs> Only after the ace spikes, though. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Perez chuckling, even yeah. though you know, this is a 50k buy-in. He's taking it on the chin, all of these pros, of course. True professionals know exactly what they've signed up for by like coming to a Triton Super High Roller Series. The variance, of course. In tournament poker. Danny Tang, three time champion. With the double. Up to six in chips now. I guess. I don't remember exactly. Giving me real daft punk vibes with, with the hair and the shades. I'm digging it. Daft punk or crypto punk? Which one? <laughs> Oh, we don't we don't talk about crypto punk <laughs> on the stream. It's, it's too painful. <coughs> Russell, some Jimmy's in, in, in right? the chat. Just Were you also one of those that you know, bought some property in the metaverse? As well? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether I'm laughing out of pain or you know. Because it's true no, and no, a I'm little joking. sad. No, it's not. No, I, I, I've I've wailed a bit as yeah. as most poker players have, whether it be baccarat. Hey, I'm not judging, and I'm not saying that I might not be your neighbor in the metaverse. <laughs> <laughs> Turn down, down the table, and no one opened. Maybe it's in Hashtag 2024 bull run. Mm -hmm. One time. Perez. 
suited King in the cutoff. 11 bigs, running this one over. Let me use up a time bank. So now it seems like you're prepared for a short deck tournament. Yeah. Well said. Well said. <laughs> This feels a bit, perhaps like a, a raise fold off of 11. We have a king blocking top of range, late position. Perhaps a ship as well does eventually fold, perhaps burning some time banks and teasing us. Yeah, the pay jump is worth right. maybe a time bank at this stage with that stack. I'm loving David Yan's tea. Whatever that is, that is uh, a very cool t-shirt. I, I just feel like, you know, you don't want to have a country where potentially they're like, you know, you owe them like huge taxes and like you never know if there's, if there's a suitcase versus you going on. Or like. Tang going to check his option from the big. <laughs> a little something something for both players. Yan with top pair. Tang with a gut shot. Yeah, DT opting to knuckle behind. Had options to eventually ISO from the big and now uh, inside straight draw. Non nutted inside straight draw I should say. Facing a half pot bet from Yan. Vietnam, Taiwan, yeah. <laughs> 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 Third heart rolling off the front door flush does complete on the turn. Yan, the only player with a heart in hand. Yan, probably aware of the types of hands that will continue, of course, those straight draws that we see Tang having one of, but also a lot of 6x here. Again, it was a limped pot pre, so Danny can certainly have a lot of different combinations containing a 6 here. Yeah, and going to turn his hand into a bluff catcher. Yeah, just has a dreamy hand to check call with. Give Danny some rope with hands that are drawing close to dead. Overcard does roll off. With that turn texture and the check back by Tang, I think Yan can pretty safely assume that trip sixes are usually going to find a bet on the turn. So we'll see if he tries to seek some value. It looks like he's reaching. Danny with a fun one. Seven Dangler. Blocking the seven nine, no heart in hand. I don't know, is it is it too early to start dreaming up these <laughs> kind of insane bluffs after turn went check <coughs> check Yan up to four million, extending his lead at yes. the top with twelve left. A part of me thinks it's never too early, but you know, a little situational awareness, perhaps. I see a lot of Vietnamese viewers going wild in the chat for Mr. Dao Min Phu. DMP first joined us earlier on this year in Vietnam. <coughs> Won his first ever Triton title. Cashing for 1.7 million, then went on to come runner up just a few days later in a second event. He's been a massive fan of the Triton Super High Roller Series ever since, always involved in the nosebleed cash games as well as Perez. Finds a hand that he's happy to get his final 11 bigs in the middle with. And just gonna pick up the blinds and antes. Yeah, shout out to all of our 
Vietnamese, Vietnamese viewers. Some potential storylines here. But Nazi Akuski looking to close the gap on Jason Kuhn, the seven-time champion. Nikita can somehow spin this back up and close this one out. Up to five Triton titles. Danny Tang looking to join Makita in that four-time champion club. Has a lot more in his arsenal to do it with. 26 bigs for DT. Eric Seidel, Orpin, Roberto Perez, Jan all in the hunt as well. And to reiterate, we will of course be streaming Bounties being pulled later on today. Top bounty prize of 400,000. to find it, Maria. <laughs> it's what makes these guys so tough to play against. Yeah, timing impeccable here with a nice hand to do it with. Certainly plenty of fold equity off of Roberto. furious, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> Seeing the rays fold would have happily spun the wheel blind v blind. Yeah. I mean, the good news for Nikita, little does he know, <coughs> he would have been drawing to three outs against Orpin's exact hand. But of course, infuriating, being that he's now down to just six bigs. Roberto, too, though, like, how did he know he was so. It's <laughs> honestly, like, give me King 10 against an under the gun open off of 12. <laughs> I'm folding. Like, how do these guys find it? They just know their rejam spots. They know what makes money in the long term. Oh. And they're happy to pull the trigger as and when the opportunity presents itself. Am I? Oh. Just a savage. Yeah, there was, you know, was once upon a time when people referred to Orpin as a rec player and I think that time has come and gone Orpin obviously has proven himself <coughs> with a tremendous resume that he's built up over the years and certainly has talked poker with the best Maria if Orpin's a rec what does that make me please find a word in the English dictionary Withered. language right there we go <laughs> me too though for, Thanks, for what that's worth <laughs> Well, he's found the jam and he's in rough shape against these two holdings. Makita going to make the call. And the small with a couple of sixes, Roberto Perez. With ace nine in the big, asking for a count <coughs> and a potential <coughs> three way affair here. Three way collision, I should say. Bats with five bigs, and here we go. We open. Well. No. Seven. <laughs> and a six. Seven. One seven, one six. <coughs> yeah, I'll take that, yeah. Well, luckily, Orpin does nine. have them you covered, even nine. though he's in pretty bad nine shape. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Orpin and Makita ganging up on Perez. Perez like, hang on a minute, guys. What about me? I'd seven Three, four, six five, board eight. called for. <laughs> That's getting cheeky. And the seven on the flop eight, as I requested mean, by Orpin. Denny. What? <laughs> Soon, right? Potential double elimination until the nine of diamonds <laughs> presents itself. But no, Maria, Makita now seven going from two to ten outs. <laughs> like, yeah. Still alive. Seven or six. 
doesn't find the 10, 6 or 5 needed and Makita is going to bow out in 12th. Perez with a more than double up to 1.7. The old domination, rotation, <laughs> reverse, is that what we call it? <laughs> domination, rotation. Now you've confused me. It's restoration. <laughs> domination, no, it's... Okay, I've lost it. You're the DDR. To, you'll, you'll have to. The double get back to domination me. rotation. <laughs> Open found the three outer. Perez refinding it on the turn and holding up on the river. Down to 11. No four. No fifth title. Sorry. For Makita. 11 left. Everyone now guaranteed six figures. 112,000 for their efforts so far. Of course, today we're playing down to a champion. Our first seven figure payout of the series as the buy in levels increase as we head towards <coughs> that $250,000 buy in. Luxon Pay Invitational. Is there a team or a duo that, that you've seen announced so far that you're like, you know what, that's that's my crew. Those are, <coughs> I know we're meant to remain impartial, but ahead of time, we can kind of have have a team. A duo, I'm sorry, a duo. A, a duo for... in the Invitational. Ah, uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like a part of me, just because uh, me and Shulman are friends, feel like I gotta go there with okay. him and Was pairing uh, okay, up here. Okay, I like it. Um, Mi but mixed game players both as well, if I'm not mistaken, they, they enjoy mixed games. Yep, and you know, I feel like, am I remembering correctly that Sasaya <coughs> Jing is uh, paired with Jason Kuhn? That sounds about right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I would say that's probably another one of my that is a good pairing. go to's, but very impartial. Of course. <laughs> As, <coughs> as we always are. What about you? In the booth. I'm just scrolling through now. I mean, there, there are some there are some fun teams for sure. I do like the Xiang Kun pairing. We've got Boss, Richard Young pairing up with Jungle Man. Oh, that's, that's a fun gonna one. Be, yeah. yeah, that's super fun. I'm all, I'm so about many. that. And then we've got the other Boss, Paul Poor, with Phil Ivy. <gasps> Wow. So there's okay. some. Uh, there's a lot of good ones. There's some then. good pairings for sure. With Danny Tang partnering up with Carl Chappé. It's Jan. It's open. Open jams. Let, let me get. Let me go back to you. Let me just scroll through and see who. Um, I did see Rob Young and Doug Polk. That feels like a fun one as Seidel <laughs> with a fun one here. A couple of. Queens facing the all-in open jam from Orpin. <coughs> and this is to get us down to 10. We'll be down to the stone bubble. Two million in the middle. Note the equities. With the suited ace, however, even up against the hand, the strongest queen still has 32%. Well, oh. well, that is a sweaty board. Now has 49% <coughs> of the two to come. <coughs> and the eight on the turn leaves Seidel drawing to just two outs. Swarpin's turn trips and holds up on the Nine of Spades River. And with that, Six, nine, nine, one of the true goats of the game. Eric Seidel now down to just seven and a half bigs. Maria six-handed table, that big blind and big blind ante coming around also quickly. Yeah, and if people watching are wondering, you know, why are we seeing so many all-ins? Well, if you really look at the stack depths of the players at this table, <coughs> aside from Yan, really not a whole lot of playability. I mean, yes, you know, 25 to 30 big still definitely playable stacks, but again, they're short-handed and 
at this point, there is going to be some pre-flop aggression with people trying to leverage some ICM, and that's going to happen. I have a question, Maria. You, you've got a lot more what I like to call life experience than like a rookie such as myself. That's a nice way of saying I'm old, right? <laughs> you want to but phrase carry it on, like but that. carry on. Do you believe or do you, have you ever fallen into the trap, per se, of reading too much into Butterfly Effect? I would say that I don't read very much into it at okay. all. Because I feel like we're entitled to some sort of compensation from yesterday's champion, Oyster Gate 2.0. <laughs> <I mean, laughs> It was our choice to order the oysters, <coughs> you know? Yeah. Like, gets food poisoning, takes the day off, takes a day and a half off, yes. comes back, plays the 40K, goes on to win event number three. Talking of Espanol stat, of course. If you're wondering if we should take credit for his win, absolutely. 100%. And should we get something in return? Yes. Oysters. <laughs> Dinner. Let's go. Open. We got to think bigger. We got to think bigger. Perhaps a trip to Harrods. I don't know. We'll see. We've been really spinning the wheel here. Putting the nut straight on the King 10 9 under the gun. V Big Blind. Danny Tang with a small piece, but another one of those hands against an early position open. Sure, we flopped bottom pair, but it's an incredibly wet board. Incredibly difficult to face heat across flop, turn, and river. <coughs> Against this small sizing, Maria, perhaps Orpin has found just the right bet to keep Danny Tang interested in this hand. Especially because Tang with the defend isn't often going to be super nutted on that flop. So you can't really go big, even though Orpin would <coughs> love to get as many chips in the middle with his hand as possible. Now I'm good. Sized way up on the turn and lost his customer who did not improve. I need to find out where he got this oh, cap from. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Might be his lucky hat because I feel like I've seen him wear oh, it day sure. after like day. Two years, <laughs> like at least. But he probably also has a hundred of them. You know, hats get really sweaty and kind of gross. Thanks. Maria, there's some of that <coughs> that life experience that I was asking for. Yep, I'm just going to be here all night dropping wisdom <laughs> on all y'all. Did have someone in the chat saying, Maria Ho, speaking wisdom in a humble way. Much love. Thank you, Just Music. Shout out to all the viewers keeping us company. Event number five, the 50K 8 Max, as the stakes have increased here in London. Maria and I will be calling the action all the way down to a champion today. And the exciting news is not only do we have obviously this tournament to play out, we have the bounty ceremony coming up later today in about 45, 50 minutes time. Uh, Ali Najad will be inviting all the players up that won bounties yesterday. <coughs> check, check, flop. Allows Perez to get there on the King of Clubs turn. Potential probe spot for Orpin, although has one of those hands. Probably happy to try and get to showdown. Someone just pulled a bounty out. I was going to say, I think we're getting some spoilers.
Just hearing from producer James in our headset that the WSOP, 50k, Bounty just got pulled. It's also running in the same building as checks through once more. Perez with the check mark. Perez exercising some pot control on the wet texture and it just gets even more coordinated before flush appears. It's one of those ones where you're like, seven? Is it good? It feels like it could be, but given the run out, Perez happy to just knuckle down his top pair. Thank you on your bike saying happy birthday, Henry. I do appreciate it, mate. You'll get it right one day. As we quickly shift dealers. Some of the best dealers in the business, traveling around with us on the Triton Poker Tour, of course. And regular faces. Uh, a lot of the viewers at home know them by first name. Let's do the players. As it looks like we're pitching cards. Talking of some of the best dealers. Uh, some of the best dealers at the Les A Club. You can experience fine dining at its best recently refurbished there's a restaurant six Hamilton place Seidel finding the jam here with ace nine suited folds around to Perez in the big blind who <coughs> can make this call with ace ten just going to take stock of Seidel's stack before he commits Well, rough orbit for Seidel, of course. Queens into ace-8 and now ace-9 into ace-10. Not to say that his destiny is preordained here. does have 27% of the equity. Right, and his unlucky dealer is out of the box now, so... That's true, if you believe in such things. <laughs> Five deuce flop. Gonna make it tough to chop this one. So running straight cards at back doors as the ten of diamonds leaves. Seidel dead. Doesn't even get to enjoy a river sweat. And with that elimination of the nine time bracelet winner and one of the truest legends of all time in our game. Seidel's departure leaves us on the <coughs> stone bubble <coughs> final table. Maria, we have the opportunity to stroll in late today, the relief shift as it's been dubbed. You have the chance to explore much Drive of London yet? I hate to admit that, you, you know, on top yeah, of yeah, my slow can... recovery from the oh, maybe we were Great in, uh, Oyster yeah. incident yeah, of 2023. I am also incredibly jet lagged oh, no, still. What? I, honestly, now we're ten. Fish. I know it's, we it's borderline. What did Ali call you? Embarrassing. Before you jump in, a whale. Yeah, you're right. I'm probably going there. I am assuming. I yeah, I, I so. would stand up for myself more in this situation if I weren't so tired. I don't even have it in me to defend myself Weird. right now. So what has been the struggle? Just to let the viewers know before yeah, we do go on this tangent of jet lag, we're waiting for the two tables to be balanced. So we're going to lose a player from this table. But Maria, you're please going, going. Drive tell drive. us why you're struggling you're so wrong. much. I really don't know. I mean, I've just had problems with jet lag the last few trips I've taken, you know, all from the US to Europe. Okay. And I just can't get you know, a good six hours straight. I'm sleeping two hours here, two hours there, just trying to piece it all together into some semblance of rest, but certainly no deep REM for me. I am probably not dreaming at all. You know, it's it's not You're nice. dreaming of a good night's sleep, but it's a daydream. <laughs> uh, 
you know, scared to even ask you what your, your whoop oh. stats look like. Oh, I, I'm not sharing those right how, now. How far ahead are we in London compared to your, your West Coast, right? So yeah. was it eight, nine hours? It's eight hours. That is literally the worst. It is the worst. Like, it's it the feels the worst. Yeah. And I think I honestly think it's it's the most difficult to adjust to. Yeah, by the time I adjust, it'll be time to go home and then I'll have another bout of jet lag to deal with. This is the first time I'm in oh, profit yeah. this I, year. I empathize with you on that one. Finally, I was in for two bullets. Final five days, you come yeah. in here chirping, nice. fresh as anything, and it's like, oh, That's back home is... Place 20 and 30. Timing wise might be good Everyone? because by then, oh, really? you three yeah. will be spent. You so you guys might need me to yesterday. add that little pep in your there step. You but I only use one bullet. No, that's very good. I use two and two. It's so turbo that it's like crazy. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, sometimes I see it depends like the feel. Like it's just better to max max the rest with twenty blinds. Super cool. good, I think here. Oh, fantastic start. Like, it's been uh, this so Triton so Super High Roller yeah, Series in London. Was, say, one hour before. Kick things off with an epic two-hour like, heads-up battle. In event number one. See, like, otherwise, you could, if you re enter yeah. there, you could Lucas be Lucas Greenwood bullets. came out on top in the 25k GG, but it's then Fatal Holtz. I was talking to him, yeah. Another he epic good, heads up battle like, against mm, Chris yeah, Brewer, claiming his third right, title. And then the last night, perhaps one of the most talked about events in recent memory, three handed between Phil Ivey. Stephen Chidwick and the 2022 World Series of Poker main event champion Espen Jorstad, where all three exchanged the duties of overwhelming chip lead. I believe Chidwick and Espen were sub five bigs on multiple occasions. Ivy as well was down to six, seven bigs. Just one of those battles that will be talked about for a long time to come as Sturm facing the ever-present and crazy DMP on the button with an ace, gonna just flat. Taking a lower variance line against DMP. Not surprised to see Fu put in the C bet here. Just the type of dry texture that favors the pre flop aggressor. But, you know, Sturm with an ace high himself here probably won't give up too easily against what he deems a very aggressive player on the button, one that is liable to open pretty wide. DMP used the tournament clock to randomize this spot. Kind of looked up at the the clock. I know a lot of players sometimes do just use the second counter for a close spot. The grindfather saying stop talking about the bounty and show us the draw. You're banned. We'll show you the draw. When it's ready. DMP with a double barrel. That second bullet is going to do it for Fu, and he's going to continue to stack. by betacr.eu Nacho Barbero see of that big double against DMP just a few moments ago it's himself pole position at the blue feature table 54 big blinds Barbero looking for his second Triton trophy he's joined us back in well, Madrid of last year, but he only came to play one event, and it was a 20k short leg, so not a full series. So 
so we're going to scrub that off his resume. Join us in Vietnam, however, for a full series where he came first in his second event, the 15k 8 max, and then went second in the 25k turbo. Second in Cyprus as well. 1.8 million in Triton earnings, one title, six caches. The year of Barbero. Let's have a look on Hendon Bob and see whose year it actually is. I feel like somebody whose year that we haven't mentioned is Ike Haxton because he's definitely in contention for whose year I, I it is. Th I think, aside from main event champion that just won 12 million, it would not surprise me if Ike is in first. I mean, just winning title after title after title from what we've seen. Five seconds. Any guesses? It's actually Chris Brewer that's currently atop of the 2023 money list, apart up. from Daniel Weinman, who just won Although the main, of course. The but Brewer has cashed 10.2 million in 2023. Ike has cashed 8.3. Artur Motorosian in fourth and Sam Greenwood in fifth, rounding out <coughs> the top five. As Jan defends his big. Lakeel with a really big hand here in the small blind against. David Yan, who flopped an open under from the big. 240? About <coughs> I don't think we could have asked for a more exciting flop. King 8 7, open ender for Yan. One over to Jamil's tens. Facing 240k bet from the Kiwi. Come with a call, does not want to turn a set. <coughs> the absolute choice <coughs> for the Canadian. Ball does pair. Rainbow is completed. Incredibly uncomfortable for Wakil should he face a double barrel. Blocking some of the natural bluffs like Jack 10, 10, 9. Uh, but if you find a lead, then maybe you won't have to be put to a second barrel. But this is really interesting, just the sizing. 180K into nearly a million, I think that's got to raise some eyebrows in Yan's mind, who does have equity that he would perhaps like to realize here. And that's a nice price, but this, yeah, I was going to say, but does he just want to call or does he want to target that sizing with a raise? And that is what Yan chooses to do. Now, Wakil might be a little less familiar to Triton regulars, but I actually commentated on Wakil when he made the final table of the Poker Stars PCA this year. So he's put together some big results so far in 2023. He's facing resistance from Yan. Pedal to the metal as Jan makes a 600k to go. 2.1 in the middle. Whoever wins this pot's going to be chip leader. As the ace of hearts rolls off on the river. Another overcard to Jamil's pocket tens. That's a really bad bluff catcher in theory. 
should he face more aggression from Yan, although this feels like an incredibly tough spot to find the barrel as Yan does wave the white flag. And with that, I believe yeah, that man you were just talking about, Jamil Wakil, is the new chip leader on the stone bubble off the 50k. I think earlier on in the broadcast, it was said that Fedor Holtz talked Wakil into playing this event. And so far, it's turning out to be um, the good kind of peer pressure. You know, sure. Why don't you fire 50K? I'm sure it'll work out just fine. You know, I've always had a love-hate relationship with social media, but I do love when the viewers and social media comes in clutch. Just got a message saying, Jan's t-shirt today was from ACNE Studios. So, so basically, now I know where I can get that Tomorrow, from. you are going to show up and be up. twinsies. There we go. It's so 60K, big boy. Appreciate that. Lucas Greenwood having a fantastic series so far. Taking down his first Triton Trophy now in the hunt for title number two. Just four events in. One 1.45, I think. 1.2. More, 1.5 in the open. Five seconds. <coughs> table captain at this feature table, Barbero, just inquiring as to how deep Greenwood is playing. Is this cut off open as he Defends the king eight and flops best on the 10 8 6. Couple of spades, three overs to Greenwood's pair of fours. Not surprised to see Greenwood knuckle, just feels like. If you don't think Barbero is going to defend the weakest parts of his range, especially all the unsuited combos of that, then that type of flop is going to connect with a lot of Barbero's holdings. <laughs> Barbero's hand not quite good enough to seek value on this texture, but could consider calling a bet if Greenwood should fire, but Greenwood's still gonna check back his showdown value. Perhaps value to be extracted now. For Barbero, Greenwood open cut off, check, check, flop, check, check, turn, and now Headboard run out. 3.30 in the middle. If you want to target some ace highs and some small pairs, then you certainly want to make it a sizing pretty much like that, you know, in the neighborhood of, I think, 40 to 50% pot is pretty good to try to get your opponent to call light here. This is so uncomfortable with a pair, knowing that Barbero just have like random Queen X, Nine X. Now decide to bluff, but Greenwood gets away from it. 
25 bigs. The itinerary to keep fighting with. Look to put those soldiers to work onto his path to a second title, but barbero has got other plans. 3.5 million. Tied at the top alongside the Triton newcomer, Jamil Wakil. As the blinds go up, 40,000, 80,000. Not great for people such as Shemian Greenwood, who now find themselves sub 20. Danny Tang on the other table now down to 15 bigs. when Shemian used to uh, carry a skateboard pretty much everywhere he went? Like there would be several tournaments where he would show up with his backpack and a skateboard. No? Okay. Do, do you know how old I am? <laughs> right. <laughs> this was this is like young a decade. Shemian this is like a decade and young ago, Maria. Right. Right, right, right. Yeah, I was still in school when Shemian was rocking up to poker tournaments with... Uh, skateboards but I could see it suiting him right he yeah. just has that vibe a little bit of that laid back you know if I didn't know better he would fit right in in LA Venice Beach I was about to say you know come to Phuket Very Shemian we've got some great waves down at Kata Beach looks like he knows how to shred a wave or two so checks through I'm in Fu that pair of sixes, see if Shemian is happy to try and get this king high to showdown. Dalman's such a tough customer to try and bluff off of any pair. Shemian still going to try though, targeting you know, exactly these types of hands. The six X's, the deuce X's, I mean, the seven X. a lot of go. times. Wow, it works. Snap fold from DMP. I would not have guessed. Doesn't want to play a guessing game. Good call. have to analyze. It's a final table bubble. It's like some updates being sent to the group chats. The classic, a hey, locked up six figures. Final table bubble playing for 1.3 million and a title. Are you a regular updater when you, you've got little, you know, five balls out there, ten balls, or are you just like, hey, guys, you know, here's the receipt of me <laughs> hopping in. If you hear from me, it will be at the end of the day. No, I don't, I don't update, period, usually. It's not really my thing. I don't really even update on social media. I usually only, you know, if it's pretty much FT or nothing. No, okay, like a big bag worthy of a little social media love, but other than that, not so much. I respect it. <laughs> you know, the, the Instagram jinx is real. Yeah, we want to leave those uh, level updates to Alan Kessler. <laughs> you woke up and chose violence today, Maria. <laughs> As both players brick their flush draws, all pin. River top pair. Looks like a lot of money has found its way into the middle. Blind v blind. <coughs> Hello, 
them to pot pre and tang just chose to fire fire with the turn flush draw equity and now what to do showing up to the river with a hand with no real showdown value yeah ready to wave the white flag was almost in the mock before orp even turned over his hand happy to knuckle it back open up to 2.5 million and up to third in chips i mean swingy stint at the feature table i wasn't sure what the so was far for open Someone's saying, I remember Oli rode his skateboard into the final table of a super high roll in 2014. <laughs> oh, somebody's coming with putting corroborating my skateboard yeah. stories, huh? Putting the roll in super high roller. There we go. <laughs> nice, Marshall. I owe you some time. Very quiet. Orp and Perez off of similar stacks, BBB, both with very playable hands. I thought Perez had checked back there. He does. Take it upstairs, three and a half bigs, 280 to go. Queen nine suited, she's too good. You limp because you want to be able to see three and you will put in the chips. This is third v fourth in chips. Potential car crash here. The short stacks watch on. Final table looming. Such a disappointing flop for such a pretty hand. Queen nine hits the mark, Paris chips up. It's getting shallower out there. When we came back from break, the average was around 35, 40 bigs or so. It's dropped to below sub 30 due to the lack of willingness, if you will, players to play big pots for understandable reasons. Action at this table. Sounds like there's a drum and bass concert going on in the background. I'm ready to put on a light show. Yeah, Sturm opening to 160. Barbero with the pre flop three bet. And Sturm now hitting Nacho with the check raise on the ace 5 4. Wow. Very strong play by. The young German here, but Nacho with the backdoor diamonds and a pair of fives. Power of position as well. So went raised to 160 from Sturm, three bet to 360 from Barbera. Sturm made the call. Ace 5 4. Sturm knuckled on over to Nacho, continued for 2 2 5, and is now hitting with the just north of Min check raise to 480. Out of nowhere, we've got 1.9 million. They're, there. they're on top of that. In the middle. Oh, okay. Sorry. Oh, what 
do you do now, Stan? What does Nacho do as well? I've checked to, I mean. Yeah, facing a check raise there in a three bet pot, you wouldn't think that Nacho feels like his pair of fives are going to be good. So definitely a very interesting turn card and also just an interesting line that has been taken so far to bloat the pot to 1.8 million. And if we look at what Sturm has back, just a fraction of that going small and gets the insta fold from Barbero who doesn't turn any additional equity and Sturm getting it done. Not a line that I think you would see a lot of players take with his hand, but a very well studied player. Yeah, he really is. Understands a lot of situations. He might not be old enough to have played a lot of poker, it's, it's a lot but of he's seen a lot of poker. There's a lot of comments towards, you know, these, these young poker players coming from that side of the booth. I, I like the bit. Leon Sturm, fresh off that bracelet. On the 50k high roller for 1.5 million and now finds himself here. Top of the pack. I mean, Shemin just looks like he belongs on a beach in Hawaii. Digging the fit. Yeah, I think so. I think that's yours. Bump things up to 160k. Just 22 years old. It's Leon Sturm. <coughs> uh, two Germans. The old school German legends. Holly Shemian squaring off one of the new school. Legend's trying to make a name for himself and it's a disaster for Sturm because he's connected on the King King 4. Shemian's got the goods and Sturm is kind of forced to put some money in here, surely. I think Ole would be shocked to hear that he's being referred to as old school, even though it might be true, especially when we talk about being compared to Sturm. I mean, he's one of the... He's one of the original crew, right? Like, Shemian. I feel like he... Rankemeyer. I feel like Rankemeyer might have come a little bit before Shemian. Yeah. But age-wise, Shemian certainly younger. 2011, first recorded. Okay, 2011. That's fair, that's fair. Yeah, not quite like the, the 07, 08 crew. As Leon Sturm, it's Shemian, the flop check raise. It. Droy. Man holding trip kings. And that's a pretty bricky turn for the four three. If talk about good turn cards, if it weren't a four rolling off, then at least that one doesn't create any more over cards other than the king on board. Shemian. It's 
It's got a click call, of course. 1.5 in the middle, 970 back. That's Jamie and Rivers, the nut full house, just in case there was a world in which he was behind. Backdoor flush gets there. When Shemian continues on the turn to Sturm's lead, you know, certainly based on the sizing, could call with some ace highs, but you know, also will have a lot of middling pairs to, you know, trip kings, obviously, maybe some backdoor flush draws in the mix as well. I really don't think that at this point, Shemian's going to get any more out of Sturm. Seventy back. One point five in the middle. Just um, check race flop barrel turn. Now checked on over. for the non-all-in sizing, 700K. Sturm, no club in hand. Knows that Shemian's capable. Having hands like, does a hand like ace-queen with a club? Ace-10 with a club? Perhaps. Yeah, sometimes those hands will get in there call twice against the check raise on the flop and the bet on the turn, but still just not enough bluffs, I think, there for Sturm to play the hero. Really slow final table bubble, understandably so. A lot of ICM considerations here. A lot of future game stuff coming up. A lot of tough competition. Seven figures up top. Opens with King Queen and DMP with pocket tens and certainly going to get aggressive with this holding. Around 30 bigs for both players, but Barbero with the covering stack. I love the click from DMP, <laughs> man. Yeah, I made yeah, Ole do a double take. <laughs> I think what he was saying was he might have been saying to Ole that he thought he was raising more but cut out the wrong number of chips. Gives Barbera a really cheap look. It does as the two head to the ace six board. Dalman still the best of it, 750 in the middle. It continues for just one big. Barbero with king high, no spade in hand, but 
But how can you fold for this price? I don't know if, you know, with showdown against light three bets, you don't really want to do much else other than call here. Double paired board now. Line 10 in the middle. Does he just think DMP's up to no good with some suited broadways, perhaps? Some Jack 9s, some Jack 10s. We've seen him do it before. We're gonna find value here with wow. tens. You do hear Nacho confirm that right, that so price yeah, was sorry, a sorry, Maria. What 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 happened there? Like so I don't I understand the misclick. DMP said that he meant to raise more Obviously. on his three bet. What did you want to do? You want to call or raise? Yeah, I have the only nice snuff row. What? I have the only nice snuff row. Okay, there oh, seems to be pre some. Yeah. Oh, pre -flop, pre -flop. Lost <laughs> stuff lost in communication. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, Nacho's tilted. <laughs> TMP's like, that's not cool, I got tens. Like, what are you guys doing? I'm lying about that. So I don't care. Listen, the ICM for poor people was invented for people like Dao Min Fu. Like, this is like the like guy. The like, you put him all in, he's got two black tens on the final table bubble. He's in, okay? <laughs> like, you're seeing five cards. There isn't a world in which, you know, he's folding. You could show him aces, and he's still going to call. It's just DMP. Or perhaps not. James Dempsey's kind of shaking his head. All right, maybe not. Maybe a bit too exaggerated. But you guys get the idea. It's DMP. You have only the two towers of white? It's yeah. dynamite. Okay, thank you. Looking for his second title. Oh, no. Ooh. Lucas Greenwood. Just north of 15 bigs. Fresh off that title, ace queen against ace king as Shemian jams over the open and gets snapped. I don't have that great a hand. Pretty good. Really good hand for a show. Well, I guess I can't say. You can say. You, you can say, Greenwood. There's no. Yes, ace queen. And I'm good. Uh oh. There's, there's no, there's no place. Oh, yeah. I love how Greenwood doesn't want to break the rules, though, just in case there were some. <laughs> and you have He's the such a great guy. He's in rough shape. He's king against ace queen on the final table bubble. Greenwood going to look to do a Stephen Chidwick if he's going to stay alive in this one as it comes. Eight, seven, four. Five of spades. Couple of spades. Eight. Green. Eight's good. Eight I'm happy with. Yeah, five of spades is too greedy. Wow. Here we go. Some chop outs uh, now. Seven or four. What one feels better? Now it's on you to call it. Uh, seven. Four is bad luck. Oh, yeah. GG. GG. Close, <laughs> but no cigar. He's, I love this guy. I absolutely love this guy. Lucas Greenwood. Oh, yeah, just. Sorry, I'm confused. Oh, yeah. Such a nice guy. Sun, by the way. Fresh off that title, out in tenth. That one's gonna sting. I'm joking. I know it was you. For a bit, 112k. Should hopefully help heal the wound as we have another final table here. Chip counts brought to you by Poker Stake, live from the JW Marriott here at the Grosvenor House is event number five, the 50K 8 Max, and it is none other than Oli Shemian leading the final nine, going into that FT. We're playing for 1.3 million in change, and 
what are we going with then when it comes to Oli Shemin, our chip leaders? We welcome you back to break desk. Old school, new school? I mean, you might as well just call him Old Shemian now <laughs> at this point. I mean, you've been alluding to it. I mean, we get it. He, he's been around for a while, but he still has what it takes, clearly. Well, he really does, and he's going to be the man that everyone's going to be chasing when we return from break because he's leading the final nine going into the final table of event number five, the 50K Amax. Don't go too far when Maria and I come back. We're going to be playing down to our fourth champion of the series. We'll see you guys very shortly. Take your game to the next level with GTO Wizard. Practice against GTO on all your devices. Study any situation from pre-flop to river, we've got it all. Upload your hand histories to uncover your biggest leaks. We have hundreds of hours of coaching from top pros, cutting edge theory articles, and custom study plans to help guide your poker journey. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players. Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live-action prediction options on the Triton Series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top up, up to $250. Become a part of betacr.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience. Final table has been set here at the JW Marriott Grosvenor House. It is event number five, the 50K Max, as we welcome you back to the break desk. 
Maria Ho alongside myself, Henry Kilbane. And Maria, we've got Oli Shemin leading the field with 47 bigs and seven figures up top. And looking at the chip distribution, feels like there's going to be a bit of caginess from everyone given the presence of the immediate short stack, Danny Tang, with just 10 bigs. I think we can expect that a lot of these players will play somewhat conservatively, and that will really give way to Shemian and Wakil to do some damage and keep taking advantage of the situation with these middling stacks having to play quite snug. Well, let's see who's going to play snug and who's going to go for it. A couple of potential spanners thrown into the wheel as we've got Dalmin Fu's in the mix. He's in the hunt. Third in chips and someone that can really throw off the game plan. Some of these pros is DMP. Chip counts brought to you by GG Poker Blinds. 40k, 80k with an 80k. Big blind ante, everyone guaranteed 134,000 for their efforts so far. The Mitchell champion will be going home with 1.35 million. A couple of first timers venturing out to London. Roberto Perez, Jamil Wakil, Leon Sturm, and Oli Shemin. All at their first series, all looking for their first title. Jan, the only regular that remains titleless out of the other five, joined us earlier on this year. Vietnam is the chip leader. And number one, Oli Shemin's found a couple of ladies from the cutoff and well. Mm hmm. Yeah, I don't know about how long the uh, short stack is going to be able to stick around with this setup. What a disgusting cooler to kick things off for Danny Tang. As he does announce himself, just 10 bigs. He is, of course, the shortest stack by quite some margin as Shemin, who just showered Greenwood, ace-king against ace-queen. All in brought to you by betacr.eu. Danny Tan looking for some hearts or a jack if he's to join Makita in the four-time champion club here today. As it comes, King 9-7. Couple of spades, backdoor straight draws for both. Show me with the spades covered. Ten feels like a fair sweat. Good news is he can't be dead on any turn. It's a six of spades. Rolls off trying to stand up to find the two outer, but doesn't come. The six six run out clean for Shemian and not only extends his chip lead, but secures the first ladder for everyone else. A thirty-nine thousand dollar ladder. As Danny Tang goes home, hand number one of the final table. Didn't even really get the chance to introduce all of the players. Another six-figure cash is already impressive. Triton track record. Up to 19 caches now, three titles, and just $600 shy of $7 million in earnings for DT, they have to do the GGs. The mystery bounty, so they do it up here. He shuts his plane, but I don't know. Well, what we spoke so, about, you know, coming back into this final table, Henry, is not so much a factor so, uh, because minutes, with minutes, Danny minutes, Tang so. being eliminated, that very first hand, the shortest stack now is Nacho, who has 20 bigs, so certainly not very short at all. So, not as much of a situation any, any, where any sinners, chip leader, some you know. of the middling stacks <laughs> can necessarily <laughs> wait to help you out you need. a stack like Barbera's. <laughs> this is mine, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Mine too. That's hard. Next time again. There'll be no waiting around for Sturm. Unfortunately, no customers 
behind as picks up the blinds and the big blind NT. And the average stack now, the departure of DT, 35 bigs, only three players with more. It's now Barbero in eighth. Now, I'm not saying that we don't have our fair share of interesting players here at this final or easy players to root for even, Henry, but I do feel like yesterday's final just set such a high bar that it just seems so tough. You know, where do we <laughs> go from there? What kind of magic and uh, what kind of shenanigans will we see today? Or will it just be pretty straightforward, you it's know, as final tables FT. go? Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. I feel like with DMP in the mix, though, he might be the one to maybe skyrocket it to, to not exactly Phil Ivy level of excitement, but he'll bring he'll bring a little something, something to the table. Yeah, how awesome was that? <coughs> Phil Ivy just Rocking up. Recently became a dad, if I'm not mistaken. I heard Ali discussing that with you. Looked incredibly healthy as well. Was sharing a conversation with Espen about the health grind he'd been on as Barbero looks down at King Jack suited on the bottom. 20 bigs. 440. He's got a three bet to 440. How much for? David, with a real hand, not necessarily just opening off of a big stack. What does he make of this three bet non all in <coughs> sizing from about a 20 big blind stack to start the hand? Certainly feels strong, but at the same time, Barbero capable of having hands here, of course, that he doesn't want to go with. All in. Going up 40, uh, 50, 100,000 rather. Yeah, that seems, seems a bit too early, doesn't it? They like to do it really early here, I feel like. No, it's going to be like 60 and 20 and so. That's not possible, right? No yeah. problem, bro. Yeah, she's probably wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can't play with one, one yeah, kind yeah. of chip on. I mean, they, they could move to 100, 150k level, but that would be Under? ridiculous. Yeah. 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 What's right. the next level? Next level. Old. We should probably keep the 5k's in play, honestly. So. Because otherwise, there's like no one. 15 minutes. So we just play with one color chip? of this level to be played. <laughs> Just hearing the floor come over. <laughs> and so letting the players know. And then we will be going to a break. And Ali Najad will be taking to the stage. Just makes it a little bit small, I don't know. Yeah, it's a bit random. For the bounty prizes. Mid 
You clear every boy, everyone? You clear everyone on the <laughs> I, you and me, heads up? <laughs> Ooh, heads up for rolls? For sure. Would be an honor. <clears throat> TV time. Oh, thank you. <laughs> she said 51 fun fun. TV time. So. Yeah, and, the, and, the, and the, I had that level on other FTs oh. already. I, I don't yeah. want to really see how that's There's good. There's like 75 one people. Yeah. That's some pictures too. I guess so. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Nacho after that, that, that hand. Play and make a normal blend level. Down to Today? 11 yeah. bigs. Oh, what do you need them for? Just okay, to have more details, clear, better, short and stack only be territory for him. Still a little bit of maneuverability, bad, still some fold equity. Yeah, just yeah, just yeah. has to be yeah, yeah. It's just a picking line. his <coughs> spots wisely. Thank you. Welcome. Need some more. Nacho wondering if this is the spot. Bro. For him, sure. I should give you 200. It should be fine, right? yeah. when you're the shortest stack I mean, I and you know. have the least ICM pressure, you could play closest to chip EV here. So it's just about a matter of if he feels like this is going to be a shove Who's from the fight? hijack. And he's going to go for the raise. <laughs> The old race fold, unfortunately for him, not jamming. So he would have run into the queens. Queens seem to be the, the hand of this tournament, although if you ask Eric Seidel, he might not agree with that sentiment. DMP. He managed to tilt Barbera earlier on with the pre-flop misclick. Good idea, shot. I could have shot Andrew Pussy. I should have just shot and suck out, honestly. <laughs> yeah, let's not forget that. That's a strat as well. No, it's not just about, you know, oh, raise Show folding and, and running into a big hand. It's about <laughs> just open jamming and uh, sucking whatever. out. <laughs> I'm not good at that. Oh, man. Honestly, we need to create a petition to just have Barbera at every feature table. Even if he's run out of chips, just... Have an extra seat for him. Come and sit down and do table commentary. Once the line starts to chop. Okay. Well, this isn't going to work for DMP, is he? <coughs> Tries to apply pressure on David Yan, 300k to go. Yeah, with a couple of fives. <laughs> Both players remain unimproved on the king-queen tray. Yan still ahead of the fives, but with the two overs out there, and DOP just so Nonchalantly firing out a seabet. Looks so uninterested. What's dangerous about a player like Fu is just that even with how aggressive he can be or how active he can be, 
that kind of player will pick up hands from time to time. And sometimes it's a little bit of a guessing game of does he have it or does he not? Is this one of the times <coughs> where he's being aggressive without a cause? Is this just standard fare coming out of this type of player profile? Or am I perhaps 500? just giving him too much action? Well, yeah. <laughs> Not afraid. Okay, I want to see some sickness out, out of DMP. I've got to say it right now. This. Well, Jan has somehow. <laughs> it's just oh my gosh! What? I, when, when I said it, I was partially what? kidding. I didn't actually think he was going to. Pull the trigger and shows it. it just shows the yes. seven four. But you rave. You call like a king. <laughs> there oh we go. You tell him, DP. He, Let him know, bro. <laughs> what he was basically saying is, you put more chips in the pot for me to win, and therefore I had hurt. to re-raise you on the pot. A lot of hurt. <laughs> DMP just like you know who you're playing with. Mandatory. <laughs> King high board, my board. Dangerous. <laughs> 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 what a boss. Did you call? I give up turn, I give up river, I check, check, you win. <laughs> there we go, just letting him know, laying down the law. You tell him, DP. Chirping so chips. <laughs> Up to second, just putting Yan in the absolute bin. Love to see it. I feel like you spoke that into existence, Maria. All right, let's see what other magic I can 200. conjure. <coughs> oh, my oh. word. Guess. That one I didn't even have to say out loud. I just thought it. I just thought cooler. Do you believe me? From bad to worse for Yan gets put in the blender by Daomin Fu, blind v blind, and now <coughs> blind v blind, ace king against number one. Hijack open. Yan does announce himself, and Shemin hasn't even looked yet, Maria. <laughs> what a dream. What a dream to not have looked and have somebody go all in in front of you. Oh, and Yan knows that that is terrible news. Yep. Uh, Sturm gets out of the way, and Yan, with just 6% equity pre-flop as he gets shown the aces. All in brought to you by the ACR.eu uh, 4.9 million chip pot. If Shemian can just hold here, it's going to be up to 7.5 million. And it's looking very likely. Yan drawing to running kings or running deuce five to chop the pot. And there's the five. Oh, no life in him yet. <laughs> Not too many pieces <laughs> left, probably. Let's see. One card to come. Don't you dare. Doesn't happen. <laughs> five of diamonds. <laughs> On the river, and what a start. Shut the fuck up, bro. What a line. <laughs> He's the best. Shut up, bro. We just play one tournament a year. Final <laughs> table. Only Shemian eliminating Danny Tang and now eliminating what, David Yannam, I believe. <laughs> Telling Barbero to STFU, Maria, just what like, listen, pal. You helped me a lot, thank but you. But he didn't even like <laughs> GG's, David Yan. We'll be seeing plenty more of him throughout the series, continuously knocking on the door. Three caches here already in London. Adding another final table to his already impressive Triton track record. And 
Just like that. Maria, we're down to seven. 235,000 guaranteed and a runaway chip leader in Oli Shemian. What about, uh, what'd you say about old Shemian again? He's old washed Shemian. up. Jesus. Well, Barbero <laughs> alluding to the fact that Shemian just shows up, plays one tournament a year, and goes back to doing whatever he's doing in between. That one lone tournament. I believe Shemian is a father to two kids now. He's got his hands full. But, uh, we on break? you know, I think this is enough yeah, to party. feed the kids, break buy some to diapers. <laughs> two spati. Party? Yeah. Yes. So it's 45. Everybody does what's your first name again? Big? Yeah. <laughs> what is it? Sunny. Sunny? Rocks. Okay, Sunny. Okay. I know we, I we, met you at <laughs> EPT. We redraw to the table. So 45 the ring, minutes. We redraw. We draw to the bottom. No redraw, right? I'm sorry? No draw. No, no. Uh, no. no. What do you mean no draw? No redraw. He, no, yeah, no, I was, no, he no, was no, 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 no. This is it to the end. Let me just stop your phone. <laughs> what is, more minutes, is it Barbero's no, no. first rodeo? Has he just woken up today and decided he's going to try and confuse everyone and asking if there's going to be a redraw yeah, when they get back from dinner <laughs> break? I mean. He was jokingly asking for a, a redraw and a draw for the button because I think he's in the big blind space, Right. perhaps. Okay. But, well. uh, always confusing people. Chip Counts brought to you by Poke Steak. Oli Shemian will be leading the final seven when we return from a dinner break. As the remaining seven head out to grab some food, and when they come back, hopefully the hunger subsided. More hungrier for chips rather than, you know, you know I, I don't know about you, but when I'm hangry, I can't play poker. Unless. You're at a final table, maybe, because I feel like at that point, your mind is focused solely on winning and the food can come later. And also how nice of a dinner you can have might be determined by what place you finish. So, you know, got to think ahead there. That is true. Well, all seven will be heading into set dinner break, guaranteed $235,000. But when they return, they'll be battling out for $1.35 million. Now... Maria, we're going to be heading to break, but but we have additional business before we throw it to break because we have the mystery bounty draw that we've been alluding to. We've been teasing the viewers at home. Ali Najad is ready with the mic, and he's going to be calling everyone up to pick out some of these. You want to test... How good you run against me, pick you go. I, I don't want to say that I've ripped it. I mean, it. okay, you remember my story though about the one time that I did pull a couple of bounties. They were min bounties, so I feel like uh, I'm already at uh, a little bit of a disadvantage All from right. that. But we will see. All so. right, but, but before before you pull that, because okay. I want I want to pull it with you with the the main camera. I'm going to let the viewers at home know who exactly is going to be stepping up. So obviously, Esmin Yorstad winning the 40k mystery bounty yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> taking home five bounties. He's going to step up first. We then got Johanna Strava, won nine of the 38 bounties in play. So almost, what, a quarter of the total bounties. He had an incredibly rough run, four-handed, came back from dinner break, overwhelming chip leader, ended up going home in fourth. So perhaps a bit of justice in the mystery bounty effect. Maybe he's going to pull a bigger, pro uh, a bigger EV amount than would necessarily be pulled by other players. And, you know, I wouldn't fault him for picking out a couple of big bounties. He did run incredibly bad. We've got uh, Chu Tai Tin with two bounties, Chun Kiat Lu with two, Alex Boyka with one. We've got Javero with three, Phil Ivy going to be stepping up to pull out three bounties, Dan Voris with five, Patrick Antonius with one, Vogelsang with three, Chidwick with one, Dan Shack with one, Elton Tsang with one, and Eric was the was dog pulling out one as well. Do you want to gamble on who picks out the biggest bounty? Okay, sure. Why not? A dozen oysters, perhaps? <laughs> Ivy. All right, let's go. Oh, wait, you mean um, on this? You're betting on yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, that oh. who has the, the big one, right? All right, go on then. Um, how, I, I don't shall even, I go I don't first? even know how to do this. So this just we goes to show it. that I should never play. I'll start. All okay, right. I'm going to start. Go on. Let's... I want the viewers to be able to sweat it with me. Okay, obviously. Two zeros, obviously. Three zeros. Gold is good. Ooh. 
Uh oh. Oh. No. What a freaking slow roll this is. You just is. got what a rip. Like a, hard by Yeah, the I did. So Look what? at this sad emoji. That's how I feel right now because, no, it wasn't who has to pay for a dozen oysters. It's who has to eat a dozen oysters. <laughs> That's what the loser has to do. All right, you're So turn. to let the viewers at home know, someone is going to have that sweat. They're going to think that there is a, there's a 50% chance that they're going to win 400K and they're going to see that sad emoji. I mean, that is the biggest needle that Luca could have possibly thrown into the mystery bounty. So, of course, if you've pulled that, then I've got this old chestnut. It's upside down, but the 400K that one lucky bounty puller is going to walk away with today. That is the top bounty prize. Now, a couple of other kind of spanners being thrown out there. There is the 40K with a draw again. So, say, for example, you know, one of these players with just one bounty they could pull the 40k and then they're going to have the ability to draw again and potentially pull out a 400k. So even if you do pull out a 40k, there's a 40k out there with a draw again. And then there's another 40k with the yacht night oh. five friends 40k courtesy of Bombay as we throw it down to Arlene Najad for the bounty drawing. It is the moment that at least everybody behind me has certainly been waiting for. Half of the prize pool in the Event 3 40K Mystery Bounty was paired off and placed into the envelopes in the box in front of me. Tournament director Luca Vivaldi and his team have worked tires tirelessly, done the math, and things will be distributed as follows with 38 total bounties available. We're going to have 23 40K Bounty envelopes, then eight 60K envelopes, those envelopes will contain white tickets. Then we move to the golden tickets. The first of them will comprise of 80K, four of those. Then we have 180K, three of those envelopes, the coveted. Top prize will be 400,000. And then there is one golden ticket that's gonna have nothing but zeros on it, but that ticket will be a draw again. Should be a fun sweat for that one. One of those 40K envelopes will contain the Bombay.io prize, the yacht experience with up to five of your friends, and one of the 40K envelopes, in addition to yielding 40K, will also be a draw again. That about covers it. So without further delay, let us welcome the champ in the event, Espen Jorstad. Come forward with your five bounties, sir. There he is. All right. You okay. excited? Let's do this. Have you done some mystery bounty stuff before? I've never. I have, First time? I have played them before, but I've never done an envelope before. Do you want us to walk you through the sweat, or you think you got it? You can, um, I, I think I got it. I, I open the envelope, I see a number. I'm happy if it's big, I'm sad if it's low. Yeah, that kind of does it. Go ahead, let's try it out, shall we? Yeah. All right, so first bounty, redeemed. Into the envelope we go. All right, so keep the Triton logo up and facing out. There you go. Now, mm -hmm. you're gonna wanna open it here and then give it a little squeeze as you pull out. Maybe uh, we can take a look in the camera as well. I don't know, can you, you show? Like, yeah. Sure, let's try it, let's try it. It's white. It's 40,000, okay. No, no, you're not. $40,000? Yeah, I'm still quite happy. Yeah. Okay, all right, set it aside if you would. And one more bounty redeemed. Into the box we go. Let's draw. Since it's the year of Brewer, I'm letting him draw two of the bounties as well. Oh, Brewer. Okay, step forward, Chris Brewer. All right. Now, do you charge for these services? Oh, yeah. Uh, 5%. Five. Did you know about that? Sorry, what? 5% <laughs> is being charged just in case. <laughs> he's, he's trolling. Go ahead. Go ahead. Here we go. You're, uh, you're used to this, Chris. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. hold and take it. 80,000. Not bad. There you go. Not bad. You just made four grand, Chris. Yeah. No, obviously, five percent. You want him to go again? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll back, do another back. 40, and then he can come back and... You'll do another 40. Okay, ever the optimist. Espen, go ahead. White ticket. 60,000. Okay, a little above the 40. Not bad. So, so far, you've had a bit of a sampler menu. 40, 60, 80. Chris is saying go ahead. All right. Okay, okay. All right. 
Everybody appreciates the protracted negotiation process, right? <laughs> All right. White, 40. All right. And now you. $220,000 already, the fifth and final bounty. Chris Brewer steps forward on behalf of the champion in the event. We already picked up over 600,000 for the W. How much more? Uh, it's golden. All right, let's see. Squeezing. Oh, it's the zero envelope. It's a draw again. By the way, you gotta love the emo. Get a get a quick shot of this. The crying face zero emoji. How about it? How about it, guys? All right, so the draw again then. Let's see if we can do better than we did that time. Can't get it open this time. All right. Squeeze it. Uh, White. Disappointing. 40 more thousand, 260,000 in total. Espen, congratulations to you. Next up, we have Johannes Straver. Johannes, come on down. Now, there's a lot of chips in your hand. Just get a look at that. The most bounties collected in the event, nine in total. Let's get busy, shall we? First one. Into the box we go. Flip it the other way, maybe. There we go. Oh, wait. Triton logo. Now, if you're going to go out outwards, let's go this way. OK. Squeeze. Golden. $400,000. Johannes Traver. Maybe we don't need a shot of Johannes. A shot of everybody else is probably the one we want to take here. Some unhappy and long faces. You're not really sorry, are you? No, no, he's not. And eight more bounties still to come. So 400K and a total free roll. Go ahead. Let's keep it moving. Oh my goodness. Luca saying you don't even need to open. You can just shred these ones. There's no, no real sweat. 60K, the next one, 460 already. Four, forty thousand, five hundred thousand in bounties already pulled from the two point six six million in total in the box. A golden ticket, eighty thousand, five hundred and eighty thousand now in total. White ticket this time, 60,540, 640 rather, sorry. Another white ticket, this one 60,000. Does that bring us to $700,000? Is that the fastest 700K you've ever made? Yes. I should hope so. Otherwise I'd have some questions about what you do when you're And 40 more K on top of that. 740 in total by my count. Two more envelopes remaining for Johannes. Strava. Squeezing golden ticket. 80,000. So we still have 380,000 tickets in there. Don't be too disappointed if you get to draw. One final envelope. And it's gonna be a white one for 40,000, but a draw again. So a bonus pull, and we haven't had enough already. 10 total pulls at the box for Stravar. Reaching deep now through the Triton confetti. Oh, wait a minute. Is it a sign? Is this the one you want? Maybe. But don't hold me accountable if it's white. And it is white. 40,000. 10 total pulls by Johannes Straver. Well into the stratospheric sum of over $800,000. I lost count. Congratulations to you, sir. Now then, let's bring forward Titan Chu. 
There he is. Part of the Vietnamese delegation. Ty, you have two bounties and three 180K envelopes are still available. Do you want a guest draw? Okay, Mr. Long, come, come. Okay, you want both or one and one? Just one, okay. Mr. Long, Triton, envelope in his hand, squeeze, white, $40,000 for Mr. Long, okay. Going to Tai Tin Chu, second bounty now. You want him to go again? Okay. Maybe this one will be a little more lucky. Again, it's a white one. Forty thousand once more. So eighty thousand for you, Mr. Long. Okay. Next up, we have Kiat Liu Chun. Where is Kiat Liu Chun? Anywhere? Ah, yes, please. Come on down. Lost you there. How many bounties? Two? Two. Two. All right, here we go. Okay, let's just spam anything inside. Anywhere you want to go. Okay. You play Bakura? Of course. So you're going to squeeze good? No. Nah. 40,000. And next envelope. Can you find a golden ticket? No, it's white. Another 40,000. 80,000 going to you, Kiat Liu Chun. Giving way now to Alex Boyka's loan bounty. Come on down, Alex. Now, I do need to tell you that once upon a time, Orpen Kisichikoglu had one bounty in Vietnam. Step to the box, 400K no longer available, but he said, how many do I need to win the big prize? I said, well, just one. You have one. Still 380K envelopes in there. You feel it? Probably. Probably. Okay. That's better than nothing. Not reaching toward the top. Instead, toward the outside of the box. Boyka's envelope in hand now. One bounty. How are we going to do? 40,000. We tried. All right. Boyka then taking home 40K. Ignacio Moron Chavero, you are next. Three bounties in hand. Bienvenidos. Buena suerte, senor. Okay. Reach on in. Let's see. It's white. And it's 40K. All right. Only up from here. Two more bounties left for Chavero. Oh, that one looked like it was maybe waiting for someone to pull it. It's golden. And it's 180,000 for Ignacio Chavero, who still has one bounty left. 220K in hand already. Nicely done, sir. You know that that was the biggest remaining envelope, right? Yeah. yeah. Is that always how excited you get? No, sometimes. Sometimes you get more excited? Yeah. White one, and 60 more thousand going to Ignacio Chavero. 280 by my count. Well done, sir. Congratulations to you now. Phil Ivey, come on down. The legend, runner-up, Tespin Jorstad in the event. A nice prize already picked up. Add to it, sir. All right, you got it. Two more 180s in there. Now what? How do you do? How do you pull it out? This way? Yeah. This way? It's white though. That, that's no good. Forty or sixty. Okay. Forty. I wish that I lived a life where I could call forty thousand dollars no good, my friend. You know? I wouldn't call forty thousand no good. <laughs> but obviously, when there's golden tickets available, we aim for better. So then, second, white ticket. 60,000, okay. That's the best of what's around. One last pull, 100 dimes. Nice little cherry on top. All right. 
Can you give it a real sweat? How do you do it? Pull slowly. Oh, it's already white. 40,000, 140. Don't blame me. Don't look at me like that. Oh, wait a minute. I failed to notice that the Bombay logo is right there beside that 40,000. You, my friend, are headed to a yacht. Good job, indeed. You're welcome. Enjoy. Send me pictures. Send me pictures from that sale. Uh, you can hand them over to Luca. All right, next up, we have Dan DeVoris. Come on down. Total of five bounties for you, my friend. Two 180s are still in the box. Oh, a little bit of Miyagi? Yes. All right. Digging deep is Dvoris. So the first of five bounties will be? 180,000, hopefully. First key is making it gold, and it's white. Okay, that's a bad story. 60,000, though. That's the better of the flips once we pull a white ticket. Four more left for Dan. All right. Did you just? Yeah, it's uh, it's my bounty. I can take a peek. Yeah, but this is my favorite part. And no one knows except us. Well, guess what? It's sixty thousand. Another sixty on the white ticket. A buck twenty in total with three left in hand. Dan. I gotta get a better strategy. There's sixty's not bad. Yeah, but it's not as good as one eighty. You're not wrong about that. Is it golden? Don't do what you did the thing again. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I won't do it next time. Okay. See what happens when you did the thing? All right, I'm 40. But, well, the first three were my practice ones cuz my <laughs> no no, because the fourth one, the bounty number is 88, which is obviously the luckiest one. Oh, yeah. the player ID. Yeah. Okay. And I'm born in year 88, year of the dragon. Okay. So, you know, good things. See, are you, are you looking to breathe one? fire out of this one? Maybe. Guess what? I don't know. It's golden. Really? Nice. Hang on. 180,000 for Dan DeVoris. Somehow, the fire-breathing Year of the Dragon ID number 88 was the bounty that yielded the second of 380K prizes. And you still have one more left, right? Yeah, that's just the whatever. <laughs> the whatever envelope, apparently. White. Uh, I know. I told you. 40,000. That's okay. Not a bad haul there for Dan DeVoris. Congratulations to you, my friend, as we work our way forward to Patrick Antonius with one bounty. All right, Patrick. Okay, one. Oh, what is the, what is the left? 1180. 1180 is the biggest available prize. Oh. Both draw agains and the Bombay already off the board. As is the 400K. Boo, it's white. <laughs> Boo, it's white, he says. 40,000. Still, that's 40K you didn't have before you walked up here. Congratulations to you, Patrick. All right, next up, Christoph Vogel saying, where are you? Hang on. Before you draw the envelope, can you just go under the hood and then with the glasses maybe? Sure, if you But you don't have it, though. Oh my gosh, he's actually gonna do it. Lord Vogel is gonna retrieve the hoodie before he draws. I mean, it feels appropriate, right? Doesn't it, guys? I know there's a few people still waiting, but for me, whenever I see you close to a table, if you're involved in some gaming of some sort, yes, there it is. Now, this is when you're thinking about it. Go all the way down. Okay, now, this is what I like. You have three bounties. Step forward, my friend. Let's go. First one. Okay. Ooh, it's gold. No, it's white. It's white, shoot, I'm wrong. Maybe the hoodie's tucked down a little bit too low. 40,000, the first bounty for Vogelsang. Two more left. Oh, you're gonna pull the hoodie back now so you can sweat it, right? Okay, I'll pull it down. Wait, take your time. Okay, go ahead. Your reaction to see. 
Could have been trolling, but I wasn't. It's another white ticket. 40 more K, 80 in total for Vogel saying now, one last try at the lone remaining $180,000 envelope. Are you digging in a different place this time? I was always taking the one I got first, so. Okay, sticking with the strat. One more 40,000, 120,000 in total for you, Kristoff, as the bounties are redeemed. Thanks for being a sport about the hoodie. Congrats to you. Okay, next up, Stephen Chidwick, his beautiful wife, Maureen, coming forward. Are you feeling lucky? One in four, right? Where's like too much confetti? Well, amidst that confetti is a 180K envelope. Perhaps it's in your hand. Here comes a professional squeeze. White ticket, 40,000. Gave it her best effort. All right, so now Dan Shack's loan bounty will be drawn by our very own Kate. Did Dan give you any instructions? He did not. So you're free to do whatever you want? Absolutely. Uh-oh. That, uh, maybe he will become my backer if I do well. <laughs> okay. No service charge. Okay, in you go. One 180K envelope. That's what you're looking for. Here you go. Yeah. Ooh, it's the right color. Turn it this way. A golden ticket. Might it be the one? God damn. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. It is $180,000. Wow. And maybe you're going to get that backing that you were thinking you might. Kate really ruining the party for everyone left back there. Well done, Dan Shack. 180K. So then, Elton Sang, come on down. You also have one bounty, but unfortunately not a chance for the 180. Nothing left, right? Just uh, 40 and 40. Just, uh, Unclear. No, there's the 80. The last golden ticket. I, I don't know. know. I mean, maybe you want to look over at Eric. Eric. <laughs> Sorry, bro. He doesn't appear to invest it any longer. Was, come on down. I got already, right? I don't know. Maybe there's a surprise in there. Yeah, what is the policy if we accidentally put two hundred, two four hundred k envelopes in? Wow, forty thousand. Was congratulations, the forty forty thousand for you. All right, so that brings us to a close here as we draw the curtain on the event three forty k mystery bounty. Well done, Luca. Thanks, obviously, to those of you streaming and hanging with us. We're going to send it back to the desk now, where in moments we'll have continuing coverage of the fifty k. Oh, <laughs> honestly, Ali, thank you so much for, I mean, it's just always entertaining. Every time, I'm like, okay, he's going to behave this time. There's no shenanigans. <laughs> and at the end, whilst just feeling, you know, one in three chance of pulling more than a min bounty, mm -hmm. 180K, an 80K, and a 40K, step up Kate, pulls the 180, step up Elton Sang, pulls the 80, and then just very uninterested <laughs> in pulling his bounty. Last and least. That is rough. You've wasted all that time, 38 bounties, and all you're left with is a measly $40,000, Maria. I mean, tough life for yeah. some of these high rollers. And Vogel Singh also decided that he wanted to wear the yes, hood as well the for the bounty pool. You know, maybe some, some future game stuff right. involved there. Okay. Some uh, next level things yeah. we don't quite understand from the mind of Christoph. So do you think maybe... <laughs> He has like a tell where if he had pulled gold, he would have given away a bit of a live read. Yeah, he it's knows the, the same, cameras on it's him. It's the same look that he when he gets aces, right. right? So okay, didn't want to give anything away. Hood up. Um, the crazy thing is, before we obviously went to the bounty pool, we were talking about Johannes Strava coming into four-handed play as the overwhelming chip leader. Ended up bowing out in fourth, but pulling out nine hundred thousand dollars worth of bounties. 
Was it bounty number one, producer James? The 400k, just straight like straight off the bat, one and nine 400k. Yeah, and that obviously takes the wind out of everybody else's sails at that yeah. point, right? It, it is a little anticlimactic. Not that there weren't amazing other amounts on the line to be won, but still, you know, everybody was hoping to pull the one. Espanol said pulling out 260, Danny DeVores pulling out 380. But how about this? Phil Ivey, runner up of the event yesterday, had three bounties to pull, 140k cash, and that Bombay prize, a little night on the yacht with five friends, some fine dining, and some gambling. I, I'm i sure, I mean, I feel like Ivey's the perfect person, but who would he invite? I feel like. You know, I have a chance to make the top five. Okay. No, I mean, no, I don't. Okay. I mean, I, I I should message him, though, and just be like, hey, you know, in case your other 100 friends are busy, you know, I'm it, here. It took you four days to <laughs> let the world know that you have Ivy's phone number, is, is what you're saying. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, look, I'm getting big timed on stage, but no big time in this final table that we'll be heading into. We are going to be throwing it to a quick four minutes or so of commercials. Uh, the bounty prize pools will be reiterated again when we return from break we'll just go over the things once more but for now you know we're going to turn our attention back to the 50k action event number five 1.35 million up top seven players remain Oli Shemian first time venturing out to a Triton Super High Roller Series finds himself the overwhelming chip leader for now a short break and when we return we'll be picking up coverage of event number five the 50k A max we'll see you very shortly Take your game to the next level with GTO Wizard. Practice against GTO on all your devices. Study any situation from pre-flop to river, we've got it all. Upload your hand histories to uncover your biggest leaks. We have hundreds of hours of coaching from top pros, cutting edge theory articles, and custom study plans to help guide your poker journey. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players. Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live-action prediction options on the Triton Series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top-up, up, up to $250. Become a part of betacr.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience.
Oh, very warm welcome back to the JW Mary here at the Grosvenor House. Don't worry about me, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just, you know, <laughs> laughing at my... Uh, don't even know what I'm laughing at anymore. It's just a sad, sad existence. But hey, we're back. Event number five, the final table of the 50k Amax is Oli Shemian leading the field. 73 bigs, and it is a sizable chip lead over the other six players, Maria. And I, I wonder, is this, you know, Barbero on nine bigs, does this just mean he gets to abuse Jamil, Roberto, Orpin, Leon, all of these guys kind of in that cluster between 20 and 30 bigs? does feel like... Oldie Shemian has uh, some free reign right now, and I feel like he is going to use it well um, because even if he's been out the game sometimes, he still knows what to do in this spot, and I think it's very clear what the assignment is, and I feel like he's going to follow it. Well, he's also got direct position on second in chips. DMP, who's already shown us that he is here to play the flop three bet with just seven high against Yan. And I mean, look, you give that man a run of cards and all of a sudden we've got ourselves an epic final table. Daomin Fu, of course, won title already. The Vietnamese celebrity is fourth. Item final table. It's all seven players find themselves the guaranteed 235,000 for the reference as the prize pool is the biggest of the series so far, meaning that the pay jumps are the biggest that they've been up until now, and the top prize, a seven figure one, 1.35 million, will be going to the eventual champion. Danny Tang, David Yan. The early exits all eyes on Nacho Barbero to find the double sooner rather than later as he is the immediate short stack. How much you have? You, should, you can look in the app, bro. Let me see your trip stand, please. Oli Shemin, it's like, listen, you, you, you guys, you new players, you okay, use the app, he's old school okay, like Ivy fine. yesterday, yeah. doesn't use the app. Thank you, bro. No problem, buddy. You're very welcome. I'll do the same for you. You're very concerned about my stack, huh? I mean, Thank I, you. I like to know. <laughs> oh, fuck. Champion's best live cash, 1.8 million. 17.2 million. In total live earnings, number six Fuck, in Germany's all-time money list. Savage. But it's a savage. It's it's a savage. What you gonna do, bro? For example, <laughs> against any other people at the table, I would defend, but not. It's a savage. Super pro. <laughs> Superhero. Superhero. Yeah. I would go that far. Verbal jousting. <laughs> as expected. <laughs> Between Shemian and Barbero. Shemian with the chirping <laughs> chips. He is the chip leader. Looking to silence Barbero once and for all. Perhaps going to try and silence his fellow countrymen with the ace five. Gets out of there. He thought about it. You see that little, <laughs> little smirk there from Shemi and was thinking about doing something with the ace five. <coughs> or with defendable hand in a lot of cases but facing an under the gun open wow, is going so to let it go shopping, bro, and you fall. what a scam I was thinking about, was thinking about it. what a scam no shoving I say you want a letter again <coughs> <coughs> he's gonna help you not me ah, it's okay I'm happy to be here I wouldn't mind one pay jump. I wouldn't mind two pay jumps. I wouldn't mind seven pay jumps. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. 
I'm visualizing first. I think you're next, bro. What? I think you're next, bro. <laughs> to double up, yeah, of course. You're gonna, you're gonna double me up. I see it. After that, that comment that you want me to ask. Yeah, yeah I mean, look, Chevian's got a lot of live experience. I don't think he's the guy I'd be going after. I never seen with table talk. Oh, because these ones are new too. Shemian with four seven-figure caches. Uh, his career is, has the experience to close out an event such as this. Running into the ace king of Orpin for 25 bigs. There's a lot of future game stuff here, right, with the sixes. Mm -hmm. Retaining the chip lead. Yeah, I definitely want to preserve that stack. Yeah, and I know. I know. There's going to be better ways you, to you utilize it here. than I'm to I'm flip aware. for that many bigs. <laughs> Little too bad, my pair. Hmm? A bit too bad, my pair. Jack. You? <laughs> <laughs> Just want to play a little bit longer so I don't have to play the, the other one. Because this is a 235 and then I, I it's like 170 actually because then you have to register it. But it's a free roll for you because you made a page jump. I know, I know, I'm joking. I don't really care. Go time, perhaps, for Barbero. Shemian did just say, hey, listen, you're, you're the next one out, pal. Yeah, it does seem good enough here in the cutoff. 400. Where is the 400? Announcing a commitment, but... If a lot of fireworks should pull. pop off behind him, he could Cut still down. get away and make the pay jumps that he so Let desperately wants, <laughs> but against oh just the God, big blind. <laughs> what is it? King Jack, right? King Jack? The King Jack clubs. What? All in brought to you by betacr.eu. <laughs> Barbero is still incredibly confident. The man in his shoes. I just want to flip it straight. Seven, eight, nine, just. Well, how about the Jack nine the five Jack board? Nine. Top pair for both. Kill has him out kicked. <laughs> 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 He's trying to hit him with the prepay, like. Wow, what a boring spades on the turn. <laughs> Why not a five or a nine? I feel like you did that to yourself a little bit. <laughs> Top arrow drawing to three outs once <laughs> to stay alive. Messi. Oh, doesn't the, find oh, it. Good luck, three guys. of clubs completes the run out. And with that, we have our third victim of this final table. Andrew Barbero adding another $235,000 to his Triton track record. He's one of the guys we'll certainly be seeing more of throughout the series. Already has a partner for that 250k Luxon Invitational. Always poses a threat Barbero, of both a good time at the table and a deep run. Seventh place will have to do this time round. 313,000 now guaranteed for the final six as the average stack increased to 37 bigs. And we have ourselves one of the deepest final tables of the series so far. Holy Shemin in pole position with 70 big blinds. Yeah, and Sturm on the short stack with 19 big blinds, so still a lot of playability for him, and we have seen him outmaneuver his fellow opponents. What is with this? It's not possible. There is no six pole. <laughs> 
I think Orpen only went all in just to get I'll, those. I'll give it back. Ole, you want this? No. <laughs> it makes it more complicated. You think so? Yeah. But these are so easy because they're 100k. They're hard to, harder to see. And, uh, it's mm. Nice. I like it. I think the chip leader should have all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Respect for the chip leader. Yeah. The VIP chips. The nice hand here in the hijack. So two of the middling stacks. I say that, I mean, everyone's a middling stack at the moment, apart from chip leader. Your first time venturing out to a Triton series. Perhaps going to lock horns. The Triton OG gets out of the way. Discipline fold with the Queen 10 there. Perhaps a byproduct of this 2.5x open. Let's get a radar. As Shemian mashes the all in button with the eights and, yeah, I mean, open with the bigs. <laughs> That's a go. I need my chip back. <laughs> what a race. <laughs> Such a nice hand. Thank you. I'm glad I shoved. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Ole just shutting it down right there. Orp, of course, can't call it off there for Pretty 30 bigs with Ace Jack. The last hand I want to fold. With Sturm out there with the 20 hand? bigs. The last hand I want to fold, you know, ah, okay. on the list. All right, I gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> I understand the last time. Like one, I one above I called. <laughs> wow, there we go. Open just teasing is to what he had there as the, the last hand. On the list of folds there, meaning he would have called ace jack suited, ace queen off. Would have found its way into the middle. We've got a real fun table here. I mean, there, there are a few people capable of just going for it. I mean, there's insane ICM as things stand, just, you know, given the, the stack distribution, but. I mean, look at this. You've got someone like DMP on the button just planning on RFIing perhaps with Jack 6 0 just because. Doesn't matter well, that the chip lead is on his left. You know, that button, that button is too enticing for Foog. How could you pass up opening the button? He might be one of those that pretends to look at his cards when it's his button and it's folded to him, but doesn't actually. I know the type. <laughs> I definitely know the type. I mean, not mashing this time, just flat calling with the trays as it comes. Ace Jack 10. Advantage DMP. Continues, and obviously, this hand is over and done with. The three overs to Shemian's trays. No guessing games here. Says Ace Jack when sure. he shows the Jack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, Ole, old enough to not fall for it. Wasn't born yesterday, this guy. Are oh, you have more? Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> 25 more. Uh, 
Let us know in the chat who you all are rooting for. A lot of Vietnamese fans, of course. Dao Min Phu, a bit of a celebrity out in those ends as the Spaniard tried to first time at Roberto Perez. It's currently 0 for 2 here. Sorry, 2 for 2 in cash is rather cash. The 25k GG millions and the 40k mystery bounty. Now, final table. So, three caches in three events. Pretty strong start. There's Triton Career. Love to see in Shemi and DMP heads up match. Oh, I mean. that would be <laughs> epic. And the departure of Nacho Barbero has brought the decibel levels down by a <laughs> considerable <laughs> margin. Yeah, it's gotten a little quieter around the table, but every once in a while, somebody says something. <laughs> All business yeah, <laughs> is understandable. <laughs> The reasons why. First seven figure payout of the series, event number five. 50k, A max, all guaranteed, 313,000, and some real talent left in the field. Not a single player that's incapable of closing this one out. We've seen DMP like some of these raggedy aces up front, but decides to fold that one. Not a great seat draw for him with Ole to his direct left, of course. Definitely need to be tightening up your opening range in those situations when you do have the chip leader to your direct left and you're facing a lot of ICM pressure. Everyone at this table, apart from Roberto Perez, have been under the bright lights, been on the big stage when there's been seven figures up top. Orpin, Leon, Dalman, Fu, and Oli have all secured a seven figure cash on their live resume. Not to sleep on Perez, of course. Hasn't just rocked up to the Triton Super High World Series to just try his luck. This man is known as quite the online enigma. Already showing that here. Cashing both the events he's played so far. Then Jamil with a few six-figure caches. Under his belt, Ace Jack, blind v blind. Looks like he's going to trap DMP. Not a whole lot of holding for Fu, but always happy to step on the gas when he senses 
Any weakness? I mean, and the weakness is just the limp, but we could see that Wakil actually has quite a strong hand, but feigning weakness perhaps for this exact reason. Strap yourselves in, ladies and gentlemen. Captain has announced turbulence. Here comes King Six Deuce, both players <laughs> with the board, but advantage DMP with the betting lead, and he's going to come out firing. And for someone that perhaps hasn't got much down in Fu experience, such as Jamil will kill. See how he adjusts. We've seen Fu represent boards that are perceived to be good for his range, but I don't think that his opponents are giving him as much credit now that they've seen some of his hands shown down. And, you know, even if you haven't had a lot of experience playing with him before, certainly picking up on some of his tendencies. And it's a good turn card for Wakil giving him a straight draw inside to <laughs> Broadway, but Fu relentless with the second barrel. Wow, I mean, does Wakil just really want to cool down here? Ace Jack High has picked up a Broadway draw, but knows what could potentially come on the river. DMP hitting him with the one, two, three. You don't really see a lot of opponents come with a close to zero equity bluff scenario very often, but you know that Fu's liable to have anything. So even though usually when you face a double barrel in a raised pot, you tend to give your opponents some credit for either having a piece already or having the type of hand that can make good hands on the river. But here, just the old a -ha eight high <laughs> bluff gets through. Thank you. Hey. And shows again. Wants to show it. Uh, eight, four, off suit. Dao Min Fu. Ladies and gentlemen, Dao Min Fu. Welcome to the DMP show. It's his world. Everyone else is there. Are we playing for seven figures? Marie, is there actually 1.3 million up top in this? <sighs> well, the most dangerous players are the ones that play like they don't care about the money that's on the line. What's that old ancient adage from the Roman times? Was it ICM is for poor people? <laughs> yeah, I've seen some people with shirts that say that, so must be true. I'll say it's Marcus Aurelius meditation, so that was first discovered. Perhaps someone in the chat can let us know the history of its origin as Perez gets busy from under the gun. <coughs> With the presence of someone like Dao Fu, these, you know, marginal response queen jack I mean daunting to say the least, but still has work to do. Can't just let the bull in the china shop dictate how the table's going to play out as Shemian connects in the form of bottom pair and a flush draw. Perez with middle pair, 550 in the middle. Small continuation bet from Perez. Shemian, so much equity. And you know, with the ICM considerations, you would think that on a lot of turn cards, Perez would want to exercise some pot control against the chip leader, against a covering stack. 
the turn does bring two flush draws as well as fills in straight draw from the flop. Wow, it's somehow <laughs> the three of spades that's going to give Shemian the winning hand. That's also the nice part about being a significant chip leader with a lot of the implications that ICM brings is that a lot of players are going to have to play somewhat passively and take passive lines against you. And that allows you to see a lot of free rivers or see, or realize your equity pretty cheaply. And here, gonna go for value after binging that two pair on the river. Perez. No diamond in his hand, doesn't block any flush draws. Certainly going to be a lot of suited combinations that defend from the big blind. He's got that queen of spades, Maria. Yeah, that's also an interesting ha card to have in this hand. <coughs> Let's get out of there for some deliberation. I just keep seeing, you know, the potential bluffs, that queen of spades. But Perez just remaining disciplined. There they go, doesn't need to do anything too fancy just yet. 30 big blind average stack. Has position on the loose cannon at the table. Down in Fu as the blinds go up to 50,000, 125,000. And when you see someone like Down in Fu who's tabled the 7 4, the flop 3 bet <laughs> on the king queen deuce, he's then double barreled with the 8 4, tabled it. Does that kind of incentivize the likes of Orpin, the likes of Jamil, the likes of Paris to perhaps be even more patient than they usually would to just let DMP gift them a double up eventually, like it has to happen eventually, right? This guy's playing massive pots with eight high, seven high, the inevitable misstep, if you will. Yeah, it would stand to reason that with that type of player in the mix, it's a bit easier to sit back and capitalize off of the mistakes that they'll be making, you know, with over bluffing and being too active, playing too many hands and being too loose and all of those things that you can certainly exploit, but also, you know, really helps in a situation where there's also other players that you don't want to get involved with, that you don't want to play big pots with, but Fu might just be one of them if you find yourself in a good scenario. <coughs> the greatest of scenarios here for Perez or would kill, but Jamil with the ace high. Queen seven five, that nine of clubs somewhat. Connected around the 7 5 as he's allowed Perez to take a massive lead on the Jack of Clubs turn. Jamil now drawing to two outs. Does not want to see a fourth club roll off. He'll content to check back and see a river which <laughs> favors Wakil's range, but also his actual holding now finding top pair in a hand where he was drawing quite slim against Perez's exact holding. That's <laughs> such a brutal river. The two outer. In terms of trying to find value here on the river, there's just some issues that arise naturally from, you know, again, these situations where you do feel like you don't want to necessarily put in a lot of chips. 
and then maybe face a raise from your opponent because, again, getting to show down winning pots and not having to face a lot of resistance is nice when you're middling stack. But here, puts in the valley bet, doesn't get called, but sometimes does open himself up, of course, to potentially get outplayed. Perez has shown some very early signs as to why he's been so consistent here already. Three caches in three tournaments. Just has the discipline to not even mull over some of these spots that he feels like perhaps under bluffed. Happy to let go of third pair. What are those type of hands you may want to get involved in because of the player, the opponent that's raising it up to 275, but you said it earlier on, sometimes Dao Min Fu has to have it. In this case, he has Orpin dominated. Orpin's managed to spike the nine high flop. I'm going to get my notepad out and see what frequency DMP just fires out a sea base. So tough to play against. Starts applying pressure immediately. What does Open want to do here with top pet? Yeah, it's certainly a spot that, you know, you could choose between a couple of options well, here, but. It feels like, especially against a player that will just relentlessly bet, 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 sometimes you might want to give them a little bit more rope. But of course, this hand somewhat vulnerable to over cards. So Orpin just going for the raise here. Those of you just joining us, six players remain in event number five, the 50K 8 Max, 313,000 guaranteed for these final six. 1,350,000 will be going to the eventual champion. Event number five of the Triton Super High Roller Series here in London. And the stakes are getting higher. We're picking up coverage from the 60K later on this evening. For now, a deep stacked six-handed affair with Dao Min Fu in the mix. And tomorrow, sorry, not tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow, obviously, we have the final table of the 60K. And then we just have a random 200K thrown in there. You know, just a little teaser. <laughs> I saw that on the schedule. Just a two-day 200K. It's a warm-up for warm -up the invitation. Warm-up for the 250K. I mean, when in Rome, everyone's in town. Why not? But really just going from 60K to 200K, I mean... 250k Luxon Invitational, followed by the 125k main event. Yeah, Ace King good. announced. <laughs> when Fu's not showing a bluff, he's lying about his hands. <coughs> you sounded disappointed when you said No, that. I love it, actually. I, I would expect nothing less. Ooh, 
Paris with the aces here. This is unfortunate. Sturm with the shortest stack. Down to 11 big blinds. Certainly nothing he can do in this spot. There is no getaway car. GG. Young Leon. Unless he can find some hearts, <laughs> ladies, or Broadway. It's good. It's as rough as it really I gets. Yeah, like All in brought to you by betacr.eu. 3.1 million in the middle. Paris can hold here. Kind of be tied alongside DMP. As it comes, Jack, 9-8, and suddenly 16% for Sturm as he picks up four clean outs. <laughs> Eight of diamonds on the turn. Oh, Changes wow. nothing. <laughs> Ten of diamonds still working for Sturm. Glorious, huh? The 8-8 eight, eight run out. <laughs> Bit of a sweat for Perez, <laughs> but does oh, eliminate a very talented 22-year-old German phenom Leon Sturm in sixth place, who adds another six figure like score to his ever growing, impressive we'll live resume. 313,000. And certainly one to keep an eye on the rest of the series. Seen him come up with some incredibly creative plays already, just four events in. Fresh off that seven-figure score and bracelet during the summer. Confidence must be an all-time high for the 22-year-old as his departure means we are left with five players. All five now guaranteed a very clean $400,000 for their efforts. Oli Shemin still in pole position after a 1-2. Eliminating Danny Tang and David Yan very early on in the FT. <coughs> Short stack duties now belonging to Orpen. 23, average stack 36 bigs. Plenty of playability, Maria. Yeah, you just don't want to get coolered and have some setup hand. But if not, you know, certainly you can open raise. You can find some light three bets off of the 20 to 25 big blind stack. A three bet non all in sizings available. You could play post. And heck, you could maybe bluff catch against Fu and find a winner <laughs> that way. 825. If anybody catches his bluff, that is. Yes, yeah, several have tried and failed up until now. Jamil opting to three bet the ace 10 0 out of the small. Something I'm definitely a fan of. Potentially fold out some suited broadways, maybe even a hand like Ace Jack offsuit. Perhaps even keep in some hands we have dominated. So you can see Perez mulling things over. The Ace Nine of Diamonds. Does eventually find the fold and really is tight at the top. I should say in that cluster. Jimmy and still the overwhelming chip leader with 7 million. DMP with 38 bigs, okay. Perez with 35. Jamil with 31. Okay, okay. 
Yeah, Jamil took the chip lead pretty early on in the day and never really looked back, always maintained a pretty substantial stack throughout. No idea what that was, but it sounded like <laughs> zipping uh, up a hoodie, perhaps. Oh, okay. I was gonna go with <laughs> a hospital buzzer. No, <laughs> that would be interesting. Like, like, like a like a beeping sound. <laughs> I don't know. Perez just raised folded the ace nine in the previous hand. <laughs> Shemi and mashes. Yeah, I'm gonna have to fold again. I was like, don't worry, guys. I don't mind being patient. You saw me be disciplined and then wake up with aces against ace queen, you know? Just some very standard phrase folds with the ace nine. Unfortunate to run into resistance behind. Mm -hmm. table certainly been different storyline than the one from yesterday. Button's good. Yeah, despite you know these players not even playing as close to as shallow as they were three handed yesterday, we're still not getting to a lot of flops. really do think that's a byproduct of having a loose cannon <laughs> in the mix. It's incentivized to really tighten up and be patient. Let him potentially slip up. But the thing with DMP is, sure, yeah, he's loose and aggressive, but no stranger to high stakes, really knows how to leverage people's pressure points. And once he has a big stack, he knows how to close out a tournament. We've seen it before. Already has a Triton trophy. <coughs> what was it that we agreed on? Remember, I'm just looking at these golden envelopes over here. <laughs> No, no, no bed. I think it was, you know, just for it was just for the show. Just for, for jokesies. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> Heard that one before. No, we jokingly bet oysters. You know, it's too soon for that. Come on, too soon. You know, I I would go again. I take your word for it. I really don't think it's the oysters, I but know. just there's no reason you to to play saying. with fire at this point. We still got what ten days of coverage left. That is true. How about that for an explosive flop? Orpin, number one on Turkey's all-time money list with an open ender. Perez with top two. Blind v. Blind, 9-2-5 in the middle. Orp the effective stack, 2.3 behind. Widely regarded as one of the best recreationals in the world. So he's been competing highest level for quite some time, loves poker, loves the competition, good friends with the likes of Chidwick, Forrest, Timothy Adams, <coughs> study buddies, good study buddies to have if you ask me. 
comes along for the ride. Sizable pot brewing now. That's the nine oh. of hearts on the turn. Oh, and Orpin just likes it even more. And again, you know, Perez did raise from the small blind to start the hand, but doesn't necessarily mean that he's connected with the board. Again, just always when you are the bigger stack in this confrontation, you're going to be a little more aggressive and put a lot of pressure on the covered stack. I think this small bet really opens the door for Orpen to try and leverage some of his fold equity. Has all the options available, of course. Getting a fantastic price to just realize here in position. More than four to one on a call. Not really the presence of any shorter stacks than Orpin, even though his stack still has playability should he call here and miss on the river. But there is something to be said about trying to win what's in the middle. Just gonna call. <laughs> 2.2 in the middle, oh, open. Happy to just try and realize the odds that he was being laid, as Maria alluded to. Enough behind to still be in this fight. Should he brick, which he does, on that five of clubs. River some showdown, but difficult to think of. Many hands, perhaps some queen high flush draws. And like queen seven, for example, queen eight. Awkward river for Paris. Yeah, presence of a four liner out there leaves him wondering. What can he get value from still? That calls twice, obviously. Some draws brick. But just going to go wow. for all of it. This is sick. <laughs> I love this. I wow. love that he's found the jam here. Perez just showing very early on in this Triton Super High Roller Series why he is regarded as one of the best Spanish players in the world, even though lack of a live resume, but no stranger to high rollers. And his ability to find the jam right. puts Orpin in a spot where he's considering calling here with a pair of fives. You know, some hands that maybe come to Orpin's mind that he beats are a lot of, you know, perhaps some big Broadway holdings that'll just fire off. Doesn't really make sense here when the four liner appears that Perez is able to go for value with many hands, certainly not any one pair hands, and even some two pair hands might not go for the all in here. And in, so Orp wondering, you know, could he possibly have a, a deuce in his hand? Because if it's not a deuce, then what is it? And is it more leaning towards the hands that Orp can actually beat. Doesn't completely, I wouldn't say it completely polarizes his range, but it certainly leaves less value, but Orp still uh, able bluff. <laughs> bluff. To, to fold. <laughs> Post-mortem between Shemian and Perez, some words exchanged. <coughs> so you can see that. He was not bluffing. I thought you were down. Huh? And just seems dialed in. And talking of dialed in, 
about some of those dials on official timekeeper Jacob and Co. timepieces. Official timekeeper makes these incredible timepieces, and they're not just about diamonds, sapphires, and the rubies. If you're into poker and gambling themed gear, there's just the one perfect brand to check out. Betting a playful spirit into their watch functions. Their Ashonomiya Casino has a functioning roulette wheel inside the piece, and if I'm not mistaken, I, think so. I want to say it, it's KT, the Thai superstar that purchased that very watch back in Cyprus of last year, and then started taking bets at the table, just offering people straight up roulette odds, 1k a pop, I mean, he was letting people bet 1k, 2k a spin. <laughs> and he was playing the role of house. It's like, okay, guys, let's go. I don't know whether well, he cashed in. I was going to say, that's one way to make back the money that it the watch like cost it, right? him. like it, right? Like, so if you can get enough action be a down. a smart proposition there. Long term, I mean, this guy. Holy Shemian. Bumping things up. I just wouldn't want to get tilted at my watch, you know? If someone says, hey, Henry, can I get 1K on 17? I'm like, sure. And then it rolls in. You have to pay the person 35K. That's like extra tax on top, tax on top of the price tag. Come on, Henry. You know 17 never comes. It's got to be Jordan 23 or 8. Oh, no. Those are the only two numbers that show up. Trust me. You know, I, I heard... Four, five? <laughs> discussion between you and Ali the other day. I believe it was yesterday. I didn't didn't have you down as as a pits pits mm, gal, but I'm, you out here. <laughs> I'm not you know, I spinning the wheel. I would not go as far to say that I'm a pits gal. I would say that you like with to the gamble. right group of people, the pits can be fun. <laughs> Absolute blaster. No, it just doesn't doesn't do it for me. Put me in a PLO game though. It's my kind of gambling. Open. Still has chips behind enough. Allows him to just come with a raise fold. DMP gonna defend the ace five. Heads up to a flop. We go up in the immediate short stack, of course, to losing that sizable pot against Perez, and still has the worst of it on the queen eight five, but does have betting lead, power of position. Don't think DMP is folding a pair though. or recognizing that Fu can be somebody to play big pots and put him in tough spots. So why not find a check back on the flop and hope to connect on the turn or hope to show down King High cheaply. Not a bad river card in Orb's mind when it pairs the board, when it goes check on the flop and check on the turn, but we could see that Fu has made trips. And this is where having the kind of reputation that Fu does can be very helpful to getting paid off. Because this man is always liable to have absolutely nothing. He really is, hence the tank with just king high Open. Board is paired. Reducing the amount of pair combos, of course. You see Orban crack a smile because he knows that... Woofo, woofo. <laughs> <laughs> is it, though? Are you going to show? Oh, he does show. DMP, table in the ace of spades, five of hearts, and Orban relieved. Well, let's consider a potential hero call that.
No. It's going up. 75k, 75. 150k. 7.5, I think. It's getting a bit snug out there. For the likes of Jamil. Perez, open now down to sub 10. Jamil on 24, Perez on 32, Damien Phil on 34, and our chip leader is the Oli Shemian, none other. 300. The true German legends. I mean, I used to watch this guy, what, 2011? I was 16 years old when he first burst onto the scene. Up. Yeah. No, you make trouble, I huh? have a strong, strong hand. Very strong? <laughs> yeah, you chip lead, never love you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Shemmy just saying to DAP, I thought you wanted to get a heads up. I wouldn't call sevens a very strong hand, but look, he's not lying. He's got the best of it. Instantly comes out with the seabed again, just... This man has nearly 100% seabedding frequency from what we've seen. How are you to respond to that, yeah, especially when you, you don't okay? connect with the board? I'm second tip lead, why I love you? I believe you. <laughs> I believe you. Yeah. Made a big fault. See, this is, this is the thing, right? Did you, you just picked up on what DMP said there. He just kind of reiterating hey shemian i know i've tabled some eight highs some seven highs i have this <coughs> reputation but i'm not an idiot you're chip leader i'm second in chips i don't want to go out in fifth perhaps give him a, a little bit too much away there just like let them think that you're a blaster No, I think he's he still is going to blast. Though <laughs> I think he's he's actually saying that to set them up for a fold when he doesn't have it. That's my read anyway. has played some fantastic poker so far today. That brilliant triple barrel against Horpin for value. A couple of disciplined folds. DMP climbing the ranks. Up to 6.1 million now. Closing in on Shemian. Okay, we just need to change the placement of that mic because <laughs> <laughs> he literally zips his tracksuit up and down every single hand. There are a couple of very guilty culprits, and I'm not going to put them on blast <laughs> live on air, but there are a couple of guys that have the tendency of doing like the one-hand hoodie lean uh, right, and right then, into mm -hmm. their mic, Maria. And yeah, <laughs> whenever they go in the tank... sounding like Darth Vader yeah, over there. It could be pretty brutal on the eardrums. I'll tell you what's not brutal. It's retail therapy in London. Mm -hmm. Yet to check out some of the places that this great city has to offer. We still got, what, how long? 10 days? Ten 11 days? days? Yeah. I actually ran into uh, Maya Antonius today at Selfridges. She was doing a little shopping. I did not go for the shopping. Hang on. So when you said... <laughs> I didn't go for the shopping. Right. I went to get sweets, actually. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I walked by it. I looked in. There's some sweets in the window. <laughs> And this, this, this is what you've been getting up to in London so far. I've been so hungry over the last few days because I didn't really eat anything substantial after getting food poisoning, and I just had a sweet tooth. Okay. That's it. That's I, all. I That's the story. I thought we were on the health grind in the booth, <laughs> but I guess it's just me. Oh, there we go. 
Hearing from That's producer James true. that you picked up some fresh swag. I did on one of our breaks. I ran up. I've been, you know, eyeing this hoodie for a while. Let's have a look. Let me, well, which <laughs> which no, piece I, did you go for? Well, okay. I do want to preface it by saying this hoodie looks really nice, but I also came to London. You know, Ali keeps calling me a noob because of my um, my jet lag problem right. that I haven't seemed to fix. But I'm also such a noob that I didn't even bring something with a hood to London when I clearly should have known better. Okay. So, you know, luckily I do have that umbrella. I, I really do have that umbrella I, that I, you Honestly, got I me. haven't seen it since I bought it for the $40 but umbrella. But I also just wanted to have a hoodie, so. Oh, nice. nice. I'm glad you, you got that. You know which that. one? That's, you that's know which one it yeah, is? It's a strong no, hoodie. Out. Talking of strong, Perez, top pair against middle pair. You could continue doing the unwrapping, I, I want to see. No, you know what? You already know which one. Ah, uh, okay. The classic. Yeah, the classic. Fantastic. I believe there's one on display at this feature table. I'm not mistaken to give the viewers an idea as Perez turns top two. <coughs> Jamil picking up an inside straight draw, looking for an eight or a six. Already 1.2 in the middle. Knuckling it on over to the Spaniard. There is that hoodie. Classic Triton hoodie. You can get it either in. White and blue, or black and gold. You could be like me and just buy both. Perez certainly going to look to extract more value here. Try and set this up for a river jam. He does precisely that with that sizing. 7 into 1.2 and really announcing to Jamil Maria, that hey, listen, if you call on the turn, there's a chance that we're playing for it all on the river. Do you really want to go home in fifth place when Orpin sat on seven bigs, when Daomin Fu's showing up with eight high, seven high? Yeah, Wakil, just wondering if he has enough to come along with the pair and the straight draw, but decides that it's not doesn't want to risk putting more chips in the pot when they might not be coming back his way, especially with Orpin sitting on seven bigs. Obviously, don't want to say it because he's just been dealt Jack three and folded. But Shemian has been patient. He's been disciplined. He doesn't need to try and turn this into a sprint. He knows that he has the patience and the ability to close this one out. I can just pick and choose his spots. He's on the direct left of DMP. Well, I got, you know, two nice jams through where he really applied the ICM pressure effectively on his opponents. And also, as mm. you mentioned, just yeah. understanding that in some ways it benefits him as well to keep this configuration the way it is and to keep somebody on the short stack. That's a great point. And win small pots. Yeah, that really is a fantastic point. We're kind of alluding to the cooperation of sorts, if you will, that, hey, Orpin, you're sat here, you know, seven bigs. Your presence allows me to lean in to the likes of Perez and Wakil. Leverage that short stack and the ICM pressure that they're under as DMP now opts to limp. Right, because the offsuit combos, you got to raise those. But the suited combos, you want to see a flop. You want to play. Shemian's going to oblige with checking his option. I mean, I'm looking at these two hands. <laughs> Why do I feel something like, okay, all right. D Dalman's flopped. Middle pair. To be fair, they don't even really need to connect with the board right. to play a big pot based on Fu's 
track record. Shows the seven. I, I think that Ole understands what all the free advertising is really leading to. I don't think he's going to be fooled. Yeah, you think Dalman's trying to set up the old show it for the first couple of hours and then run a massive one? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, okay, all right. I would bet on it. And I know the viewers would love to see I it as well. I would love to see it. <laughs> would love to see Shemian get to the river with, like, second pair straight blocker or something, <laughs> you know, like just like a really cool bluff catch spot. Mm -hmm. Open. Is this go time? A couple of fives. Does move all but one chip forward. Leaving himself. I do apologize. He's left himself 50k back. And he's going to pick up the blinds and the big blind ante. Going to be happy about that, even though he's going to have to put them right back into the middle. This king queen suited in Fu's hand is certainly better than a lot of starting hands we've seen him open with. Shemian with the flat orpin. Nines. What a great spot for nines. With a million back and a million already in there. Plus the dead money, if you will. And see, effectively jams out of the big. Well, Dalmin Fu, I mean, fortunately for him, Shemian was not trapping, <laughs> but just snap comes over the top. What is it? King Queen. King Queen? Oh, King, King Queen of clubs against a couple of red King. nines. About as fair as it can get in terms of pre flop equities. We got ourselves a classic flip. Hawpins tournament life as he flops oh a full house Let, okay. and is oh pretty much guaranteed a double. I mean, I know it's one million fifty or something. Seven of clubs on the turn. One, one seven five. <laughs> wow, Shemian wow. would have boated up. Shit. Shit. I would be really sad. Had <laughs> down Shit. A Dalmin got out the way. Wow, that would be so sad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would probably skip the 60 gang. <coughs> yeah, yeah, sure. After that, like, uh, no, <laughs> never. You're a savage, bro. You never like, skip it. <laughs> I mean, on that river, I might skip the 60 gang. <laughs> no way. <laughs> you play three bullets with this river. <laughs> <laughs> one, one, same five. Well, that really changes things. Open, moving up to fourth in chips, 20 bigs, a bit of breathing room now. I bust in. Down in Fu, down to third. Why you push? Yeah. I bust because in. Because you just go. Thank you. You just go me. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'll buy you dinner. King Queen. King Queen City. It's mad hand. Never fall. No, I call, I call. Yeah. You just go me. You better wake. <laughs> Yeah. I want to play cash with this guy. Maybe just trap. once, just for the story. No, you never tap me. 
Okay. See, you see these comments from DMP. It's like, no, you just you never have a trap here. I don't know. I wouldn't be saying statements like that. I mean, Shemin's capable of mixing it up. Having some traps there. Fortunately for Damien Fu, that time he did not. And he gets back to work the very next hand. Red eights. Short stack duties now belong to Jamil. had so many of these defendable hands, these playable hands. Just keeps bleeding chips. Flops just not cooperating with him. Here facing a quarter size C bet. Two overs, that queen 10 wrapped around those nines, but do we really want to be chasing backdoors out position against the likes of all the answers? No. feel like that man is going to give us one of the greatest hands for the highlight reel of the he series. He already has. Like, yeah, he already has a few that we <laughs> will definitely be using, I feel like. It I definitely want to see that. Was it the 7-4 flop check raise? <laughs> on the no, sorry, the, the bet 3-bet? Bet, yeah. That was pretty gangster. Oh, nine do suited. Going to try and see a flop. Obviously, we can see the whole cards and the red nines of DMP. I'm not going to allow him to see anything. And just with how active DMP is, you just wonder if, you know, someone is going to lose a little bit of patience, maybe call a little bit wider than they normally would against a normal raising frequency. Good night. I lost. Poll running. What do you think's going to make it to heads up? I know. Who do we think is going to make it, or who do we want I, to make I it? I don't know. Like, uh, I always like remaining impartial, but the little the the verbal jousting between DMP and Shemian something I would really enjoy seeing in the heads up format. Not to say that have anything against Wakil, Perez, or Orpin as DMP just flats with the ace queen. Nope, the pre-flop <coughs> passivity now. From the Vietnamese superstar. Allow Shemian to tag along from the big and we have ourselves a three-way affair. With DMP incredibly under-repped. The eight, three, deuce, and has this allowed Shemian a way to win this hand? Flopping the gut shot, only player with a club in hand. So it does check through and turns the nuts. Mm. Oh boy. Oh yeah, especially considering how reasonable Fu did approach this hand both pre-flop, you know, just calling the raise from Perez and then checking the flop. There's so many things that he can do here. I, 
And it, look, I know the viewers are going to hate oh. this because oh, DMP is going to fold. But I think against DMP, I, I really like this raise. Just get him to level himself. We're unblocking all of the pairs. There's two flush draws out there. Let's just try and play for it all. Obviously, it's easy for us when we can see the whole cards. Would have loved to have seen Shemi and extend the rope, but I'll have to be for another time. Chip counts brought to you by Poker Stake, and now Shemi has once again removed himself from the rest of the pack. Way out in front with 55 bigs. Whereas in second, DMP in third with 29. Then a big drop off. Orkin and Jamil, all five players guaranteed at least 400k. As the ladders get bigger and bigger from here on out, as the prize pools increase throughout the series tomorrow. Crowning a champion in the 60k, we've got the 200k as well tomorrow, and then at 250k, Luxon Invitational with. I must three bet. Uh, Pairing still to be uh, announced. 400. Great. 400. Yeah. You see. Oi, not why. Who's still? Oh my god. Who's <laughs> <laughs> still lamenting? Yeah, just go. Wrong. Not why. Four. Four. All right, you got your oh. man tilted. How are you going to capitalize? Mm. Three-way affair, <laughs> dear Pete. Not happy that he's queen hand. That's the four of spades. In the window, looked like a potential setup. I mean, Perez, middle set, 1.3 in the middle, going to the turn. Ooh. Oh boy, is this showers? Maria, 1.3 out there, down in Fu, turning top pair, and Perez slides it on over for a second time, really extending the rope. And this is what you hope for if you are Perez, is that not only is Fu going to be representing this ace on the turn, but he actually has it. The good news is, is Fu is the type of player that even if he doesn't have it, he's very likely to still fire again on the river. And that's a pretty bricky river. It's well. <laughs> A fortunate run out for DMP wow. as he shows the ace. Yeah, maybe a little unlucky for Perez that the four liner I came thought. out there, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Trap. It's a trap. DMP going for a stroll. Going to go and chat with his rail. Who's he talking to? Background, just hopefully telling him, just, hey, listen, you're still in. you still got chips. Don't know what the word for tranquilo is in Vietnamese, but maybe someone on the rail can assist him with that. What really grinds your gears? I mean, like, is it similar to DMP here when you make a perceived mistake in your mind and that ends up costing you, such as the ace-queen flat pre. He seems to be beating himself up a bit. It definitely upsets me more when I make a mistake right. than when I get unlucky at the poker table. But, you know, I've tried to work really hard on my mental game, and so I'd like to think that very few things at the poker table bother me. You know what bothers me? When people are rude to the dealers. Yes. When players berate other players. I'm talking to you, Helmuth. <laughs> oh, well, shots fired. No, I mean, I really, generally speaking, I just have learned to shrug it all off mm. and 
you know, I, I'm there to play my best game and I try to shut everything else out because those are all distractions trying to throw me off. It's that life experience again. It is. There we go. We, I we, bet Ole we knows a thing or two as well. <laughs> We're about the same age. No, Ole's definitely younger than me. We did <laughs> say to the viewers, you know, uh, some Maria Ho wisdom was going to be dropped tonight. You haven't disappointed. But, yeah, you won't see players disrespecting dealers here or each other for have none of it. Luka Vivaldi will be quick to step in. I'm I'm terrible though. Mm, really? Yeah, because if someone berates a dealer, I like to just Oh you get in the mix. I stir I stir the pot a little bit. I'm you know it's not it's not dealer's fault that you played the hand badly, but you know, <laughs> down in foo. Not fall into the three bet. Out of position with the Queen Ten. One point nine in the middle. Could this be it? A couple of hands not going his way and all of a sudden emotions running high. As he flops an open ender, and fortunately for him, he may have found a path to victory here. Perez with an interesting one three bet pot. Broadway, Broadway, no heart in sight. Knuckles back. His high V queen high, three bit pot. <laughs> DMP. Comes out, guns blazing. With that open ender. Well, if you're gonna call a three bet pre flop with Queen Ten offsuit, then certainly you don't want to give up when you flop some equity. <laughs> I believe it. I 100% promise you DMP was check raising all in there. 100%. A nice little pick up there to move back up to third in chips. Mistaken. That's what I just overheard. Five seconds. Three hundred. Open twelve bakes. Oh, apologies. On the app, it's showing the blinds have gone up to one hundred, two hundred. Not quite yet in real time. Still at the 75k, 150k level. DMP gonna defend. 825. Going to the Jack Jack Deuce board. Really key pot here. For Robin. Blinds will be going up the next hand. Ace high going to be good a lot of the time on this ball texture. Looks like a single big blind C bet. And Dao Min Fu, not even entertaining the idea of keeping open. Honest for at least one street. King high just hitting the mark. Mm -hmm. 
How much? One two three. Can I get some color up, please? Yeah, I would like it. I mean, <laughs> I, I have the pronoun. Makiel with very playable Can I get hands, some chips, please? but. 1.1 million. Can I get some chips? Bigger chips? It's going to cost him. 1.1? Yeah. All yeah. of his chips, pretty much. 1 .1 He's million. declaring oh, that he wants to go with it, barring anything catastrophic. I'm all in. Well, all this in. is catastrophic to be dominated here. Yeah, once he commits himself, always going to be stacking off to a rejam behind and get shown the bad news. Shemian, who's already eliminated two players so far from this final table, just five cards away from making it three scalps as the ace, jack, seven. Rainbow board makes that even more likely now. The bird. Four diamonds on the turn makes it official. Not even a sweat for the German as he crosses the 10 million chip threshold. He's closing in on almost half the chips in play with four players left. Thanks, Jamil. A kill with a career best cash. This fifth place finish here, $400,000. Gonna be going back home with the Canadian as he is his first Triton cash. Fifth place in event number five, the 50K eight max. And with that, Maria, everyone now guaranteed 497,000 and it really is getting a little bit heated under the collar out there. Daomin Fu seeming a bit tilted. A little bit of frustration yeah. coming yeah. from him, but you know, sometimes you don't know if that's really going to affect the way that he's going to play or if it's a little bit for show. That remains to be seen. Thank you. DMP, 4.6 million. Open, by the way, short stack duties for most of the day has managed to ladder a few spots. But of course, you have a Triton, total tea. <laughs> regular, six caches, two titles, 5.6 million. And Triton earnings looking to join that three time champion club alongside Ivy. Danny Tang, Waikin Yong, and of course, Fatal Holtz, who recently joined that club. It's getting a bit cozy in the three-time champion club. So it will with the addition of Orpen, if he can turn things around here. Only Open jamming the ducks, and Orpen waking up with big slick. Yeah. Makes the call, and Very good. Oh, here we go. Yeah, <laughs> it is a classic. <laughs> Little ducklings. <laughs> I've been doing pretty good with those ducklings lately. It used to be my most hated hand. <laughs> this year they made 50, up. 50 50. Yeah. Ace King of Spades against the Deuces. Really does not get closer than this as we head to the Jack 10 4 Jack board. 10 one, four. Spade. one spade for you. Seems Play like a fair ball fight. Ball. Two overs and a Broadway draw. Backdoor spades Maybe also. Pair. Pair, turn. What, what? pair turn seems like a fun one. Let's do it. Four Little of spades. Four of spades. How That's about the ten of clubs? Now three of hearts, please. Thank you. <laughs> Shemian <laughs> thanking the dealer in advance I for the three it. of hearts. You Open win. looking for <laughs> a four. Jack, ace, king, queen doesn't find it. Loses the flip <laughs> and Shemian goes 1 2 to eliminate Jamil Wakil. And now, one hand later, 
clean. More pin. The cleaner. It's such yeah. a go glue. Number one on Turkey's all time money list. Do you have Adding another six Do you have figure score. Huh? His what incredible you have Triton ah, track Triton. record. Ah, first yeah. Triton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> now, I have an Four hundred ninety-seven thousand. I have champion. <laughs> and there we yeah, go. Dalmin Fu, just let them know, boy. Let them know. He's already won this tournament before. So again, we say congratulations to one of the nicest in the business. Orpin Kisichagoglu, number one on Turkey's all-time money list and extends that lead atop of Turkey's Hall of Fame. That's me. With the 497,000 cash. And with his departure, that means yeah. all three are now guaranteed 604,000. But DMP, letting Shami a know, giving him, you know, the chat. So have you have you got a Triton trophy before? Just in case you didn't know, I have. And it was in this very event back in Vietnam. Dao Min Phu took down his first title. 1.67 million, looking to do it again here in London. Absolutely love it. We are cooking. We are flying. Shemian with more than half the chips in play. 66 bigs, plays 23. Plays 23, there we go, 61% of all the chips. Perez yeah. kicking things off with an open on the button. A lot of the viewers around the world were asking for the potential Shemian Daomin Fu heads up match. The Perez fans and Roberto Perez himself has got other plans. He looks to potentially outmaneuver Shemian across five. Going to be difficult with the flop check back in the presence of the nine of clubs on the turn. Let's see if Shemian wants to probe here. Try and pick off some ace highs, stronger king X. Got the poll over on our YouTube channel. From Triton Poker. Who's going to win? Get involved. Same for you One viewers over on Twitch. As this hand is over and done with. Overbet on the turn from Shemian. Yeah, you must clear him. I want to. Are you and me, up? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> there we go. Remember. I remember. I, I tell before the final table, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if there was anyone out there that wasn't already a Daomin Fu fan. He's really given you a lot of reasons to become one. And once again. Those of you okay. just joining us, we're live from the JW Merritt here at the Grosvenor House. Event number five of the Triton Super High Roller Series here in London. I give a massive shout out to the 175,000 of you that have clicked that subscribe button. Currently got 12,000 watching over on Twitch, uh, sorry, over on YouTube. If you haven't already, take a couple of seconds to click that like button. Would love to get up to over 2,000 by the end of today's stream as we continue to bring you world class poker coverage of some of the best in the world, the best production in the world. Free of charge. Really do appreciate the continued support, even if it is just in the form of a like. Don't ask for much. 
continue growing our product from festival to festival. Things just heating up here in London with this 50K. Sorry, how much you have? Well, 200K coming up, the 250,000 Luxon Pay Invitational, the 125K main yeah. event. Yeah, thanks. Shout out to the fourth edition in the commentary booth, Maria Ho. It's been, ah. you know. Thank you. Happy to be here. You know, it's been, uh, I feel like it's been a long time coming that we finally get to meet and work together. You know, definitely have mutual friends and obviously the commentary circle isn't all that big, it's but not, somehow no. we just never cross paths. <laughs> Look at this from uh, <laughs> Delman is uh, after second. Uh, it has been a long time coming as Perez obviously falls with the King Trey. But no, you've you've stepped up you want to into the role immediately of you know, joining yeah. okay. Ali and Randy and needling me at <laughs> any given <laughs> opportunity. It's <laughs> like I've been here for years. <laughs> you remember I tell you before the... I love this yeah. guy. I mean, I you were away for, for a quick really second there. Top, top, top for you. <laughs> Dalman turned to Oli Shemian with the departure of Orpin oh. and said, hey, have you got a Triton trophy? And Oli was quick to answer, no, this is my first Triton stop. And without missing a beat, damn it, it was like, well, just to let you know, I have it. It came in this very event back in wow. Vietnam. Just letting him know right? that he's been here, done that, right. got the trophy to prove it. So, Ole may be chip leader, but that's it. who is the table boss? He's like, listen, I've closed this one out before on home soil earlier on this year as Jimmy no. looks to get busy. <laughs> Gets met with a snap call. Very nonchalantly way, nonchalant way rather, of throwing in the 225. An interesting turn card. Very interesting indeed. And you wonder what a player like Ole will make of these quick calls, right? Does that mean mm. strength? Does that mean weakness? Does that mean they want you to shut down on the turn? Oh, and Fu eight. has his answer Shemian yeah. will not eight. shut down. I <laughs> Ace eight. <laughs> Went for pocket eights to ace eight. <laughs> well, something a little more believable, right? Just got to have an air of believability here. Foo, so entertaining. And, you know, just when we thought, not to beat a dead horse, but just when we thought that it couldn't possibly get as entertaining as it was yesterday, mm. yeah. this final really shaping up to be pretty epic in its own mm. right. Uh, towards the later part of the tournament, of course. Three, three, three four-handed seems to be <laughs> where <laughs> it really just spices up. You throw someone like Dao Min Fu in the mix and it's understandable. I love the verbal jousting, especially at the highest stakes. You want some big chips? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you want, it's easier to bet. <laughs> Fu certainly displaying street poker. Oh, yeah. yeah. You can study your solvers all you want, Maria. You throw someone like Dalmin Fu out there, taking it to the streets. It can be tough Four. to know how to deviate, Four, yeah. how to adjust. Really does throw some of the best in the world oh. off of their game. They come in with a game plan and yeah. you see Perez limping the previous oh, time yeah. down in Fu made it a million to go. <laughs> this time no nibble. <laughs> you gotta give it to Fu, he's really zigging and zagging at the right times at least. Both players unimproved on the ten seven tray and Perhaps a path to victory for Dalmin's nine high. A lot of turns in which he'll pick up gut shots. Only eight, six, four.
Jack as well. <laughs> giving Perez top, top, and note the give up from DMP. Happy to try and just realize his equity on the turn, and now action on Perez. Is wondering if it would be better to bet himself to get the value that he seeks or should he check it over to someone who has been prone to bluffing does decide to take the betting route gets a quick fold out of foo Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Why you ask me? How much? Ace v Ace. Half a million. Nineteen bigs. Does Shemian want to take the higher yeah. variance route? He's been dictating the pace of play. Everything's been going his way. Watch Nineteen out. bigs. Be a lot to give up. Fu certainly has displayed very aggressive play, both pre and post. But I think when he shoves for 20 big blinds, he isn't going to be that light. We haven't really seen him get super out of line when it comes to risking his tournament life. Certainly when he has other players covered or when... I love you. <laughs> I make big fall for you. Yeah. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> When it's not a spot where he has to commit all of his chips, sure, he could get a little frisky, I but... Suited. 20 big fly, all in okay. <laughs> Very much so. It's Solver approved. approved. Yeah. There we go. 400. He just seems to have one gear. And one gear only, and he's going to run in, all in. to all the... In. Brick wall that is Oli Shemin has just played these rejam spots to absolute perfection. This entire final table without missing a beat. Don't know what he's been up to. I mean, looking at his hand and mob, no recorded no cash since last year. Right. For Shemin. Huh? Anyway, it's a strong move. Doesn't matter who does it. It was a busy 2022. Wasn't sleeping at the wheel. A couple of high roller caches for Shemian, as well as some GG WSOP online caches as well. But cashless so far this year. And what a cash it would be. 1.35 million and a Triton Trophy. One of the only accolades that Shemian still doesn't have. It is incredibly impressive. Live resume. Spidey sense is not working for you. Uh, you must not go. <laughs> Who wants some bloodshed between Ole and Perez? Wants to get heads up. DMP 
perhaps up to the early hours of this morning in some cash games. Who knows? Falling asleep. You think there's a chance he's still wearing the same outfit that he wore yesterday? <laughs> perhaps. I mean, <laughs> you should have seen what was going on in Cyprus, Maria. I'm telling you now, these guys were straight from the cash games to day twos and then back to the cash games is just I, I tip my hat to them I, I need my seven eight hours you know sick brag getting seven to eight hours of sleep but you weren't even in this time zone right you came from thailand you said that's right yeah call the east time <sighs> for now <laughs> he tables the 7 4 proudly. As Victor's from Sharehands is just walking by the production room, showing us some guns. <laughs> weapons, right, of course, yeah. his own yeah. weapons, left in some weights. 7 4? Yeah. Is <laughs> you only need a snap. And Ali Najad with. Is it treats for everybody? Because I don't know, if but not, that bag don't bring it in here. Kind of, it's giving me Willy Wonka vibes. Like, if is he, he could pull anything out of there. Here we go. <laughs> what, what, what are we guessing? Shout out Lena Stores, by the way. Okay, a little. A little pasta. All right. Okay. okay. <gasps> Black, Black truffle. truffle. Pasta. Wow. <laughs> Who is that for? Who's the lucky recipient of your leftovers? Do do me a favor, Ali. We need you in the booth over the next few days. Put it in the refrigerator because you're going to end up like Maria and myself if it's left out for longer than 30 minutes. Maria, tell him, please. Just won't listen. Actually, you know what? There's a refrigerator underneath <laughs> my seat here in the booth. Why don't you pass it on over here? And, and with a fork, too, please. That'd be great. Thanks. Jamie and look into... Get busy with the Seabet. Put a fork in this King Jack of Dalman Fu who won't let go of the King Jack high, but the Queen wow. of Diamonds on the turn. As Fu tried to keep him honest. See how Shemian proceeds here, turning top pair. 93% lock on the hand. 850. And Shemian trying to bleed his opponent dry, asking for more chips. Oh my. Wow. And Fu looking him up here with just King High. Only has one live over card to Shemian's hand. Three point four in the middle as Perez watches from the sidelines. Ace of spades on the river, and Shemi, I'm going to check it back. Three point four million chip pot going Shemi's way as he extends his lead at the top over fifteen million now. has two-thirds of the chips in play and has down in Fu down to just 10 bigs. It's perhaps it's Perez that's going to find a way to heads up. As we give a special shout out, of course, to one of our proud sponsors, GTO Wizard, where you can take your game to the next level. The number one app for poker players. You can start crushing today at gtowizard.com. Analyze your played hands, practice by playing versus GTO, and solve any spot in the game. GTO Wizard, once again, start crushing over on gtowizard.com. GTO Wizard, by the way, had a little representation in the form of Espen Jorstad, their first ever ambassador, closing out event number three, the 40k mystery bounty. That's a pretty good walking billboard. He seems to be getting it done. What what have you got over there, Maria? Because I can hear some jimmies being rustled. What's going on? You got It's a protein bar. It's not truffle. 
okay. carbonara, but uh, it'll do. Try see, we're playing a, a team sport in this booth. Okay, I see how it is. All right. Do you want Good. half? No, it's okay. I mean, I thought maybe you weren't weren't hungry after I saw you house the sandwich right before we started. Yeah, so. four hours ago. <laughs> you can have half. Actually, have you had Bear Bells before? I have no idea what they the are, best, but they uh, sound, sound good. It's Hang the on. best protein bar out there. I want a sponsorship. <laughs> blind v. Blind, Pear v. Pear is a modern-day cooler. Eight, seven, tray. So Tenor Clubs now presents some additional outs. Paul Shemian, in the form of a gut shot, looking for a nine jack or a tray, which doesn't present itself on the river. And I'm in food. Looking for value. Flicking it in, says Shemian, but isn't going to like what he sees. <laughs> there we go. A little bit of support. Yeah, that's what we're missing. We're missing a rowdy rail. Do those happen here? <laughs> at they, they don't. <laughs> no, they rarely do. It really takes something. It takes somebody like what? Mr. Foo to really get the crowd going. Ah, you That's must true. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you now, if he doubles up, his rail is going to erupt. Well, his virtual rail is definitely going to love point. it. You know, we could get a bit rowdy in the booth, right? Yeah. Every invitation potentially play a hand with Daomin Fu is one that normally isn't passed wow. up on, but wow. Perez has remained Please. so disciplined yeah. <laughs> throughout this final table. <laughs> Not a word of wow. truth coming from that man, but always we are has here the for nuts. It. It's funny, you know, the ace queen hand where Shemi and turned the nut straight. He started oh. <laughs> trying to convince everyone that he had flattered aces yeah. <laughs> from the small. He's like, I got trappy pre flop. <laughs> Hasn't told the truth once, but seems to be happy showing hands. Shem in with the open jam oh. on the button and oh, guess quick call. Oh. It's Jack. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Dalmin Fu with the ace, queen of spades. Shemian happy to see that because he's got 38% equity. Five cards to come, all in brought to you by betacr.eu. As Dalmin Fu's rail, watch on with excitement as well as some nerves. As the man is all in at risk, ah, but the oh king <laughs> jack 10 board. Excellent. Ten clubs. Giving Shemian okay. top <laughs> pair, but Dalmin's <laughs> flopped the joint, and Shemian is dead on the turn. And how about it? Dalmin Fu with the double. Keep the fan favored in. What we got going on over there? No, no, no! Please continue. <laughs> Hang on. I'm just gonna do a, a little BTS okay, post let's on do break. It. Right. But I'm not good. I'm not good with selfies. Where we talked about this. Down in food again, a double. Yeah, five minutes. Yeah, only five. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Down in food, trying to convince everyone to just take a five-minute break. He wants to. <laughs> Wants to continue playing. Shemin's having none of it, saying, no, listen, pal, I'm taking every minute I can get to you know, go do my thing, take this break, perhaps get some updates from his friends or family, perhaps watching the stream, some information to be gained as the three head in to break. Down in Fu, now playing 32 bigs, courtesy of that double up. Chip counts brought to you by 
our title sponsor, GG Poker. As we remain three-handed, $604,000 guaranteed for the remaining three. In return is going to be Germany squaring off against Vietnam and Spain as we welcome you back to the break desk. Maria Ho, alongside myself, Henry Kilmain, I guess uh, the talk of the town is none other than DMP. He has been so fun to watch, but more importantly, he's been mixing it up and it's really hard to play against someone who is so unpredictable and who's so willing to fire regardless of what chip stack he has. Well, I think it's safe to say we're going to be seeing more of that because now he's got a healthier stack, 32 bigs, when we return from break. Please don't go too far because it's one of those tournaments where anything could happen. I mean, down in Fu, Showing up with 7-4, 8-4, bet, three betting with seven high. Look, it looks like Shemian out in front in pole position, but it really is anyone's game. And 1.35 million, as well as a Triton trophy up top, is worth sticking around for. We'll see you all on the flip side of this very short break. <laughs> Broke the Guinness World Record. Welcome to the World it's Series the of Poker. poker song. The biggest event. poker song. Larger than all other GG What's the best way to master GTO poker? At GTO Wizard, we have blogs that will teach you the art of learning poker, starting from the big picture and working your way down to the finer details. Then we teach you how to implement these new skills at the table, step by step. At GTO Wizard, we have all the resources you need to learn how to crush the competition for free. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players. Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live-action prediction options on the Triton Series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top-up, up, up to $250. Become a part of betacr.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience.
out of that. Let's see if the blinds wake up. Oh, no. Sturm. Yeah, this is unfortunate. Sturm with the shortest stack. Down to 11 big blinds, certainly. Nothing he can do in this spot. There is no getaway car. GG. Young Leon. Unless he can find some hearts, <laughs> ladies, okay. or Broadway. It's as rough as it really gets. All in brought to you by betacr.eu. 3.1 million in the middle. Paris can hold here. Kind of be tied alongside DMP. As it comes, Jack, 9-8, and suddenly 16% for Sturm as he picks up four clean outs. Eight of diamonds on the turn. Changes nothing. Ten of diamonds still working for Sturm. Glorious, huh? I thought I have one less out, but... Oh, it's, it's it's the 8-8 run out. <laughs> Bit of a sweat for Perez, <laughs> but does eliminate a very talented 22-year-old German phenom, Leon Sturm, in sixth place, who adds another six-figure score to his ever-growing, impressive live resume. 313,000. And certainly one to keep an eye on the rest of the series. Seen him come up with some incredibly creative plays already. Just four events in. Fresh off that seven-figure score and bracelet during the summer. Makiel with very playable hand, but it's going to cost him all of his chips pretty much. He's declaring oh, that he wants to go with it, barring anything catastrophic. I'm all in. Well, this is catastrophic to be dominated here. Yeah, once he commits himself, always going to be stacking off to a rejam behind and get shown the bad news. Shemian, who's already eliminated two players so far from this final table, just five cards away from making it three scalps as the ace, jack, seven, Rainbow board makes that even more likely now. Four diamonds on the turn makes it official, not even a sweat for the German as he crosses the 10 million chip threshold. He's closing in on almost half the chips in play with four players left. Thanks, Jamil. A kill with a career best cash. This fifth place finish here, 400. $604,000. That's what's guaranteed for the final three players here in event number five, the 50K 8 Max. And leading the trio is none other than Oli Shemin, who... You know, we spoke about how certain people come into final tables with chip leads and feel like they just have to win every pot. That's not been the case with Shemi. He's been so patient, found some incredible rejam spots, and now finds himself leading the three players with a very healthy 58 big blinds and 1.35 million up top, Maria. Yes, yeah, so far that strategy has worked out really well for Ole, despite having the wild card left in Foo. And sometimes that makes it tougher for the chip leader to be able to navigate in the way that they would like. But so far, Shemian not stepping in it, not having any problems. Well, 
not having any problems in terms of rejams and kind of taking it to the streets with that one, but just before break, a slight misstep perhaps in terms of getting it all in against the ace queen of Dao Min Fu, who just was happy to beat him to the pot, doubling up to 32 big blinds. And really, I don't know, from an entertainment point of view, I think it's what all the fans wanted. It's what we want to see. We want to see Dao Min Fu with chips because this guy can really show up with anything. And someone like Oli Shemin, who has just so much live experience, knows how to adjust to these player types, but I don't think he's ever met a DMP before. <laughs> Yeah, food definitely livens up the experience for not only the players at the table, but for the viewers as well. And I'm sure he's going to continue to do the same, especially with a little more chips now in his stack. Well, let's not sleep on Roberto Perez, of course. The Spaniard, 22 big blinds, has cashed every event that he's played at this Triton Super High Roller Series in London so far. Known as an online enigma, one of the best Spaniards to come out of the game in recent years. And given the likes of Adrian Mateo, a run for their money when it comes to leading the Spaniards in the charge towards winning high roller titles. Can Perez turn things around as we throw it down to the main stage? Here's the shortest stack. But given the blinds going up to 125,000, 250,000, just one double up. And Perez against the likes of Shemian, he would become the chip leader. As down in Fu and Oli Shemian look to lock horns once more. Okay. Well, Shemian, I mean, <laughs> feels like you might have set the alarm a little bit late to come back. I don't know. I'm glad you, that you made it here. <sighs> Fu, right away. Just going to stab here with the five high. Shemian, that's a nice wow. line to take with that jack of spades. Pretty key card Shem for the texture. Yeah, Shemian just picking up like how often Fu has been stabbing. The frequencies just don't add up for Shemian. He's sick of it. Close to 100% C bet. What we've seen so far from Dam in Fu, but oh. take it back. But wait till you've got cards before you raise on the button. It does feel like an inevitable one. Especially looking at, even though a weak ace, still an ace, obviously going to come in with the raise here. Shemian, really nice hand himself. And again, just leveraging, having both of the stacks covered in a way where he's allowed to put max pressure and make the players call off for their tournament uh, life. Whoa. It's not good enough. Even with the prettiest card in the deck, the other one's pretty dusty, though. And Perez still in it, but, you know, just hasn't really had much to get involved with. But let's not forget that he is definitely a contender, even though it does feel like we've been watching the Foo show. Shemian, again, just open jam on the button. Nothing here for the big blind to call with. Some TV time for TMP here, I mean. It doesn't want Shemian to think that he can just do this with no resistance. Right. Maybe just a little bit of a Hollywood for that effect. Making him sweat. Needs to be careful though, using up a time bang, that might be a time bank that's necessary in a crucial decision, although. I don't know, he's acting pretty fast and it true. seems like he's okay with the tempo that he's taken in every spot. I gotta say when 
players play at a really fast pace, it does throw me off. You know, I obviously come in and I try to protect timing tells and things like that. But it's hard to not feel like when someone is acting so quickly that mm. it naturally makes you want to join them a little bit and you just have to remind yourself to slow down. Fine. And Fu not slowing down with this shove. King. Showing another ace. Offsuit on the button. Just going to pass up this spot, it looks like. I'm a little surprised by that, but maybe he does have some different gear. Shemian, though, still with his foot firmly on the gas there from the small blind, jamming into Perez's 15 big blind stack. Yeah, it just seems to be mashing away. Yeah, Shemian can probably taste it one hand on the trophy kind of feeling but he's still got some work to do here you know you're in a good spot when you can effectively be putting both of your opponents all in pretty comfortably with a lot of Balling. hands that really makes it tough for them to call off especially when they're trying to outlast one another they're really going to need to pick up a big one yeah look at that with Every all-in that gets through picks up 625k. Perez down to 13, Dam and Fu 21. Does need to be careful though. I mean, DMP not one to shy away from putting chips in the middle. He wakes up with a hand. All of a sudden, he's the chip leader. Tangs on the rail, rooting along Shemian. <laughs> Seems to have one gear at the moment. Really in his element. Face then, they fall. I think I would win the next one. Yeah. I say I, I just will. I hmm. ten. I folded aces. You just wonder though, if now Fu is just saying it, knowing that they don't believe it, but it's more for his own entertainment, it feels like. A hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. It's just at this point he's just having fun with it. High relinquished from DMP. Seems like one gear for Shemian. Perhaps going to shift down due to the fact that he's got a monster. And note the hand of Perez Maria. Is this just always going into the middle? Yeah. Eleven bigs. There is nothing Perez could do to avoid this cooler. So sick. It's been so patient. Given DMP every opportunity to bust before him. Blind v blind, it doesn't get colder than this. Foo. Ace King. Super happy about it. Dilemma. Not gonna hide that fact. All in brought to you by betacr.eu to get us heads up. In event number five, mm. 50k, eight max. Shemian finds himself two cards away 
I'm doing precisely that. Needs to fade a queen or a ten now. Okay, let's see if the jack nine deuce board as the five of clubs was off on the turn. Pair is drawing to seven outs once. Stand the hunt doesn't do it as Tao Min Fu celebrates with his rail due to the elimination of Roberto Perez. Love to see sportsmanship between Shemian and Perez there. Saying GG's to the Spaniard who has really got everyone at Triton looking his way. Cashed the 25k GG minutes, cashed the 40k. Mystery Bounty now comes third for a career best live cash of 604,000. And okay, small fields, variance in tournament poker, but three for three. Maria is certainly someone to keep an eye on is Roberto Perez, but our attention, of course, now to Shemian and DMP. Something you requested, I believe you. We kind of alluded to this is the heads up match. Yeah, ask and you shall receive. And nothing against Perez, obviously very talented player, but this is going to be a fun one. Shemian, who, you know, has all the chips, but Fu with all the heart. <laughs> That's very true. Well, heads up between the German Phenom, who hasn't recorded a cash since 2022. So... No tournaments, one would assume, this year. Rocking up to his first ever Triton Super High Roller Series. And what a way to kick off his Triton Super High Roller Series career if he can close this out against DMP. But DMP made it clear that he's already won this event before. Back in Vietnam, took down the 50K on home soil for 1.6 million. And look, three and a half to one chip deficit. But Dao Min Phu, capable of turning this around. And just with how fast Fu plays, you know, both um, timing wise, but also with the hands that he chooses, he could very quickly spin that up and turn things around and become the chip leader. So 915,000 guaranteed for both players. We've got ourselves a 435,000 heads up match on our hands between the two. Obviously, we're going to be throwing it down to the heads up, but perhaps a time to tease what to expect. Once we wrap things up here with Heads Up, we'll be jumping into the 60K 7 Max, where none other than seven-time Triton champion Jason Kuhn is leading the pack over there. So again, once we do wrap things up here, it doesn't mean that the poker is going to stop. We're going to be jumping into 60K. The stakes just seem to be getting higher and higher. 60K today, tomorrow, and then a 200K. Because why not? Why not? Like I said, a warm-up for the Invitational. So definitely getting to the meatier part of the buy-ins for the series. I, I wonder who came up with the schedule for the series. I, because it does feel like it's precisely that, right? A warm-up of what to expect for the 250K Lux on Pay Invitational. The, the tournament that everyone's been talking about, the pairings that have been announced. It's like, okay, you know, let's fire a 200K in there because everyone's going to be in town. People want to play more than one tournament especially when it's a six-figure buy-in. So I guess we'll see who exactly is going to pony up the 200K for that. Looks like we're just moments away from throwing it down to the main stage. Luca Vivaldi has brought out the Triton Trophy. The stage has been set as Oli Shemian looks to lock horns with none other than Dao Min Phu, the Vietnamese hero who joined us back in Vietnam earlier on this year and since then has been just a linchpin on the Triton Super High Roller Series when it comes to putting on a show. He's one of the men that we turn to for precisely that. Always chatty, always blasting away, whether it be triple barrel bluffing or check raising flops. As Maria mentioned at the start of the stream, you've got to be careful with players like DMP because sometimes they show up with the goods. 71 bigs, plays 18. Shemian, first ever Triton Super High Roller Series. And if I go all in, you have to call as well every card? Or, what? Yeah. <laughs> or you can fold. For his maiden trophy. You can blind all in. Blind all in, all right. 
Well, who's going to oblige? We know you, you're willing to do it, Foo. Shemi, and one of the names that often comes up when you think of players that have won it all, both live and online. It's a right. man's name into the it's arena, but a Triton trophy, something that is not a part of his trophy cabinet yet, at least. Could that change here in event number five? 50k, eight max heads up with a four to one chip lead. Yeah, to the jack, high flop, and Maria, is this just going to yeah, be over I inside mean. three hands? Based on the way that Fu likes to play, especially when he has a piece, it does feel like this pot is going to get a lot bigger. Top pair v top pair in No Limit Hold'em, heads up. Is about as cold as the deck can get, especially on a board like this. So many gut shots and straight draws. Plus draw as well, obviously present. Does the MP just want to shut this down here? It's reaching for fistfuls of black chips, Maria, and this is it. <laughs> Raising to 3.3 .3 million. I think Ola notices this. He's just giving it a quick think, seeing how much the raise is, seeing how much you have behind. I'm all in. Oh my God! And number three yeah. of heads up play, top pair yeah. v top pair. <laughs> Love to see the fist bump exchange between yeah. the two. I mean, <laughs> love that from DMP. Seven. So he's a Seven. good champion. Shemian calling for a card that he doesn't need. Maria, I don't know about. But you know what the they say, gods. always coming seven for the German. Oh, oh Deuce, my gosh. hello. Seven. <sighs> Hold the phone. Three outer on the turn and DMP yeah. finds the double and this. Just lucky, just lucky. <laughs> this heads up match. Is not over and done with, and these heads-up <laughs> matches have not disappointed up until now. What looked like three, seven. was going to be a three-handed heads-up match has now turned into a real battle. What a turn card. Hold your name. Who <laughs> <sighs> could hardly believe it, but... Again, just a cooler heads up. So nothing either player did wrong there. And the deuce was waiting there in the deck. You really never know what the poker gods have in store. Especially based on what we've seen over the last five days of this series. Yeah. Just like that, the gap's been closed from 55 bigs, plays 35. And all of a sudden, DMP a real threat to Shemian. Show must go on. Shemian, obviously a consummate professional and isn't really going to let that deuce rolling off bother him too much. He knows that that's going to happen from time to time and he's really just got to move on to the next hand. Still does have a sizable chip lead. Can you throw it here? Please? 
Yeah, when you think of experience, Maria, and life experience, you know, in the form of just that maturity to realize that, okay, this is the game I sign up for, this is the game I play for a living. Sure, I was two cards away from lifting the trophy. Didn't happen. Got to continue to do what I need to do. I still have the chip lead. And I'm still feeling good about my game and the way that I've been playing. On to the next hand. Really need to get into the habit of becoming a master of the art of letting go in poker. If you're going to go on and play these high rollers against some of the best in the world. Stalman Fu check calls once. Bottom pair as third spade rolls off. DMP spadeless. Some more equity for Ola, who would like to try to shake Fu off of these exact type of holdings, the 3X, the 6Xs. Looking to show down. Ollie with just Jack High. Bet flop, check turn. Three million out there to fight for. Really thinking this one through. The thing is, you are going to make some exploitative plays based on your opponent's one tendencies. And when you are up against an opponent who you know doesn't love to fold, but you don't really get to the river with a whole lot of showdown value, you naturally feel inclined to bluff and it's just a matter of if your opponent is able and willing to look you up in this spot Fu more prone to doing it than not but just not a great hand here losing to so many hands but as played Shemian won't really have you know two pairs he would probably bet those on the turn. He doesn't really have many flushes either and certainly wouldn't take this line with betting river for value with a 6x either. So I think that's a nice play by Shemian. But again, yeah, against a player who certainly leans towards calling than folding in a lot of scenarios, it always feels like a win to get them to fold anything. Yeah, well executed there. Shemian finding the bluff on the river and Damon Fu made him sweat. Really thought that one through. Eventually letting go of the pair of threes. Really they were on impossible call on that board. <laughs> But it's also the players that like you to think they won't fold that do find folds. And they're basically just trying to leverage the reputation that they won't fold so that you'll bluff them less. And a lot of times it works. Shemian defending the jack four against the min raise. See bet from DMP back up to seven point seven million. Is this one really gonna set itself up to be another classic ending to a Triton Super High Roller Series event after that 
epic three-handed battle yesterday between Jorstad Filivi and Stephen Chidwick. It's Oli now being what, two cards away from lifting the trophy. Dalmin Fu finding the three outer and then fading the river redraw. Potential battle ahead, 30 bigs effective as things stand. 90 bigs in play. Regardless of who wins, all I'm asking for Marie is that the final hand just be an epic one. I don't want like a ace high v king high kind of thing. Right, you I want, want this. You want Fu to have seven four then. Right. I want, you know, the flop check craze with Jack of Spades, Nine of Diamonds, future blockers to bluffs. I mean here we go. Shemian. Bottom pair, queen of spades in hand. Got to make the call and all of a sudden we're playing an inflated pot, 3.3 million in the middle. An SPR of less than two going to the turn as the board pairs. None of those backdoors materializing for DMP who seems uninterested all of a sudden. Yeah, doesn't like that he got called on the flop and feeling like that seven pairing on the turn is also pretty bad news in terms of the hands that Ole would bet flop and call a raise with. A little 15% feeler. It's met with a snap fold and Ole has once again extended his chip lead to around three to one. Looked like for a moment that DMP was right back in, but ill timed check raise. Yep. Asex v Asex. Ooh. 24 bigs effective. DMP limping on the button. <laughs> Setting the trap. Piles. Trap set, Maria. Ace king what is it? for Daomin Fu. And if he can hold here, all of a sudden he's the chip leader. All in brought to you by betacr.eu. Of course, 12 million in the middle. Just two cards away from being eliminated to now being five cards away from being the chip leader. Oh. <sighs> That's a fun one. Jack 10 7, inside straight draw for Shemian now looking for a nine or an eight. As the nine rolls off on the turn, and now Daomin Fu is the one looking yeah. Good luck. for the seven outer. <laughs> <laughs> Shemian doesn't want the preemptive shake. Not after last time, but they can shake hands now as the Deuce of Hearts completes the run out. GG's Dalmin Fu for his second place finish in the 50k. Event number five. Of course, a massive congratulations to our champion. Ali Shemian, would you believe, venturing out to his first Triton Super High Roller Series here in London. Just his third Triton event, if I'm not mistaken. I do a stand corrected, his fourth ever Triton event. 
came up short in the first three, but you know, why not kick your career off with an absolute bang when it comes to caches? And just convert for the trophy and the 1.35 million. Really has now won it all, Maria. Was one of the guys that we're talking about has won everything you can in both live and online poker. The only thing that was missing, of course, was the Triton Trophy, and he's taking care of that here. Being an incredibly tough final table. Kick things off by eliminating Danny Tang and David Yan in quick fashion, and then a very kind of disciplined final table performance from Ole, all the way up to three-handed. I feel like Ole came in here and he knew what to do. He really had a good read on the table dynamics, the game flow, which is what I think Ole is known for. You know, he started his career online and had an incredible results. But when he took his game live, he was very able, very quickly able to pick all of the live elements up and the live aspects up in such a way where it just translated to his natural game. Dialed in from start to finish without further ado. Let's throw it down to the floor as Ali Najad is going to have a quick word of our newly crowned champion. It's none other than Ali Shemian taking down event number five. All right, they say you only get one chance to make a first impression, and what an impression has been made here at your first ever Triton event, your first ever cash, you notch a victory for $1.135 million. That is what Ole Shemian has done here today. Looking at your hand and mob, Ole, you have recorded caches all the way back to 2011, and High Rollers just a couple of years after that. What took you so long to join us? I don't know. I was a bit lazy in the last few years. Didn't want to play too much. And yeah, I I was thinking to come, especially this year for Cyprus and Vietnam, right? Yeah. But then I didn't make it. So yeah, here I am. Well, you've certainly made it here at this FT Emerging Victorious, and you've played so many final tables over the course of your career. Walk me through this one. There were some very unorthodox things that took place, weren't there? <laughs> it was a fun final table. I had really good feeling from the start. Like, I don't know, I felt it coming. So, yeah, things ran together. Yeah. Well, on the topic of good feelings, walk me through what your first ever Triton experience has been like in contrast to some of the other tournaments that you've been a part of. Yeah, actually, it's a really nice experience, I think. Uh, yeah, nice tournaments, nice fields, a lot of fun to play. Yeah, nice people. I like it. It's obviously been a lot of fun for us to watch you as well, and it's going to be even more fun once you hoist this hardware. Luca Vivaldi stepping forward to hand you your first ever Triton title and perhaps more on the horizon, as I understand you're going to reg the 60K. Ladies and gentlemen, Ole Shimeon, your champion.
once again a massive congratulations to Ole Shemian taking down event number five, our fourth champion of the series, going home with the first seven figure payday, 1.35 million. And I believe he was itching to get out of the interview of Ali because he's got business to do in event number six, the 60K, which we're about to jump into, Maria. Very exciting. Of course, you know, we get to cover day ones after these final table ends. And as we mentioned already, as the buy-ins continue to escalate and continue to get bigger with the stakes being as high as ever, of course, we've got poker's best in the mix. We really do. And talking of the best, looking at the leaderboard is the usual Triton suspects up to no good. Daniel Dvoris leading the field, Jason Kuhn in second, Sam Greenwood in third. And also looking at the red feature table on the Triton Poker Plus at the table, we're going to be picking up action and Sturm has gone straight from the FT of the 50k to jump in to the 60k. So he's going to be jumping in alongside Punat Punsri, Ponokovs, Gottlieb, O'Dwyer and Boss Paul Poir. Um Early days, you know, day one action is it's a treat for us in the sense that we get to see how these world-class players just seem to always navigate these deep runs, see what they're up to on day one. Yeah, it's all about accumulating chips and setting yourself up to be in a good spot for day two. And of course, being able to put maximum pressure on your opponents with those big stacks. So day one's really important, but definitely takes a little bit of a different mindset and strategy in terms of how you approach it versus final tables, which we just witnessed. Well, let's see how these six are going to approach it. Boss, Paul Poir, over with the likes of main event champion. Cyprus, yeah, Ponokovs, Kolev, O'Dwyer, and the young German superstar. Is it too early to call him a superstar? Uh, no, I, I definitely feel like he's on that trajectory. Definitely. Everything about him says. It's being dubbed the next Fatal Holes. <laughs> uh, Leon Sturm. Uh, 111, I think. Atwire. In the mix, I mean, Atwire is another one of those. It's the, the start of at least my interest in the game of poker. It would just always be on my screen whenever I'd be watching poker highlights. 2010, 2011, if I'm not mistaken, there's been some classic hands between O'Dwyer and Shemian over the years. And hang on, was that Phil Ivey? Yeah, it sure was. <laughs> the Max Late Reg, jumping in with 20 bigs. Wait, there is a Lynn. But, but he has to walk or not? Oh, no. Gottlieb. Wow, that's... Have decision as well. This could be costly. How much is it? I asked if it was a walk. Yeah. I thought I heard yes. She yeah. said yes. Yeah. So it's what's the rule? Floor on seven. Floor's going to be called over. So Seth thought that it was a walk. See, we can see that is not the case. No fault of Steve Dwyer's. He's done all that he can do, I believe. I asked her, I asked her, if, I asked her if it was a walk. Okay, so call. cards haven't hit the mark. Fair ruling. Floor called over. And O'Dwyer sees the bad news. Seth has him dominated in the big with the ace four. But a queen seven four board. The poker gods work in funny ways. Yeah, definitely an awkward situation there. Oh. oh. You know, it doesn't matter. I'll do my best, man. How many best. hundreds and thousands of hours we spend in the booth, Maria? Those ones just always sting. Yeah, it's just really unfortunate there. The dealer made a mistake, but the cards I'm did not, not hit the muck, so they were still live. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but also, 
you know, I get that Gottlieb is sitting All right, there, there are a few <laughs> in the corner seats, which sometimes it could be hard to now see what the other those. corner is doing, <laughs> but I think it also pays to pay attention. Okay, well, shake that one off, ladies and gentlemen. Perhaps get a little soothing cream on. I don't know, what do you do? For stings. How long will you take? I can't possibly fold that. Ivy fresh off that second place finish last night. One minute. Straight back on the saddle, put up punts three. Someone who we haven't seen much of so far this series. Should they use it from the cutoff? Yes, ten of spades. And it's going to be met with some resistance out of the small blind from Seth and once double P. Just don't do a crime, I guess. Hmm. He's done ordering some food. He's going to look down at a couple of nines and... Well, 35 bigs effective against Seth. 24 against Puna. Does opt to just take it north. Is our concept. And I think go back to ordering his food while he waits his opponent's decision. Boss, by the way, rocking the new Triton Poker series cap. Big fan, the old TPS. Showing a little. But that seems unsure. What to do here? 24 bigs, cut off open. He's got the right idea of the fact that he does have two overs, two live cards okay. against some parts of Foie's range. Looking to Ponacos perhaps for some comfort or reassurance that the call is okay. Well. What's not okay is the 755 board. That's Punat. Finds himself drawing to six outs once now. Doesn't find it. Can't find the ace on the river like Seth did just moments ago. And we'll pull up to 627,000 now. 63 bigs. I believe late reg. Has closed. <coughs> so I guess the next event for Puna is going to have to be either the 200k or 250k Luxon Pay Invitational. Mm, yes. Where he is partnered up with his fellow countryman. KT, yeah. also known as Ten, but you, the man you got, with the you got some backward nines, right? Jacob and Co. Doesn't feel very timepiece, the yeah. functioning roulette wheel. Because why not? Why not put a roulette wheel in a watch? Was it free? Uh, no, I mean there was some action free mm -hmm. for the D Gen in all of us. We all have a little D Gen in us. What your on. numbers? Twenty three and eight. Yes. Okay. Eight, because culturally it's a lucky number in Chinese culture, and 23 because who doesn't love Michael Jordan? Okay, now I know that a bunch of LeBron James stands are going to come out of the woodworks in the chat because everybody <coughs> thinks it's a debate of Kobe. who's the best of all time. Ooh, Henry, I would not have taken you for a Kobe fan, but I like that because, you know, I'm from L.A., I'm a big Laker girl. So. There we go. Well, listen, if you want to go upstairs after we wrap things up here, 
to spin the wheel for a bit, you know? <laughs> Count that, me in. I was going to say that I was going in a. Did you hear that? Though? As if. No? Okay, just me. Only I. My mind went there when you were like, oh, if you want to. Okay, never mind. It's day, it's day five, Maria. <laughs> it's let's too early for this. Let's, uh, Guys, I'm on two hours of sleep a day <laughs> right now. Let's focus on the poker and the commentary and the Jack 5 3 board. Top pair for Ivy. 70k in the middle. Ponikovs. The King High Clubs. And some new shades, by the way, which, you know, Ali and I, we have this ongoing bit with Ponikovs. And listen, he, he plays the part. He loves it. There are days where Ponikovs is a Miami nightclub owner. <laughs> right now, I feel like he's got a hot cup of cocoa waiting back in the ski chalet with these shades on. I mean, I could see him hitting the slopes. I'm very interested in where he got this velour number that he's got on because if it's at Harrods, then count me <laughs> in for the trip. We're in. Top two now for Ivy. 116,000 in the middle. Ponikovs picking up a gut shot, but no longer has the king as an out. He's going to get to realize his equity by checking back on the turn remains unimproved and Ivy who just re-entered going to chip up nicely to 25 bigs you know Maria I rolled the dice on this food and oh no you know you, you, your you're reads are spawn I'm going to have to start coming to you for like you're not feeling for great co huh? for coaching I mean hmm. it's not even just that you would eat at the same place that you suspect caused the food poisoning, but that you would eat it with such lightning speed, you know, just really not giving the digestive system Whoa, hang on a lot of room there. I feel like you're doing me a bit of a disservice here because my time, obviously, in which to consume food is very limited. So, you know, I'm just trying to remain efficient so I can stay doing what I'm meant to do, which is talk nonsense into a mic for 12 hours a day. Chip counts. Brought to you by betacr.eu. Seth Goyev leading the pack. A sizable 81 big blind stack. It's Phil Ivey at the bottom of the chip counts with work to do. 26 bigs after just joining us with a max late reg. Oh, is that who I think it is? Sean Winter? Am I allowed to look at my cards without the mics? You know, Sean can't be bothered to come for the 25Ks, right? Really needs the stakes to be raised for him to show face. In all seriousness, though, I <laughs> I enjoy having Sean at the table. He's a lot of fun. One of my favorite people to commentate on, and I really mean that. He's just so entertaining. The, the needles, the, the wittiness, the verbal jousting, as well as just being a world-class poker player is so entertaining. And I think a lot of players would agree that Nobody can spin up a stack like Sean Winter. Yeah. I have seen that man firsthand. We've seen it. I've given him the spin. Yeah. <laughs> we saw it in Cyprus. You did? when he first joined us. Did it work? No. Five caches in Cyprus for 2.8 million. Oh. Four final tables out of nine events played. Just to give you an idea, 
what Sean Winter can do. Didn't manage to convert, but well, did manage to ladder in a few big spots. Cash both the 200k Lux on Invitational, okay. came fourth in that for 1.6 million, followed by a sixth place finish in the 100k main for wow. 600k. Now our takeaway from that was that if there was ever a nuclear fallout across the globe, there'd be three things that survived. I know the answer. Cockroaches, Twinkies, and Sean Winter. <laughs> Sounds about right. My phone never stops. Fucking all sports stuff. What do you tell you? I'm curious. So let's see a turn. I was done defending the big, <laughs> flopping an open ender. We'll talk about it after. <laughs> One of course with ace high. Remains without a pair. Yeah, Finds the turn barrel on the paired board and gets the 10 9 of Sturm to hit the mark. Oh, what? If you get it right, he'll show. He's three of hearts. No. Oh. Close. So you close. Said eight, <laughs> Why you change? You just need to Very close. get the suit. Sean's also been spooky with those kind of things. Oh, he got no, no. the ace of hearts, right? No more. <laughs> One was enough. One was enough. One show per day. But you weren't showing me, you were showing Bruno. No, I was showing you because you were most excited about it. <laughs> Bruno was curious. Thanks nah. I mean, he used time banks for fun. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. This, one's, this one's his, so I think so. Yeah. I think that one. Yeah, because they said you were over on this chair, yeah. So I think that's it, Sean. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be wrapping things up here. Day five of the Triton Super High Roller Series with a few levels. So we wind things down in this 60k. Tomorrow we'll be playing all the way down to a champion. Yeah, so it seems like a trend to have not very toned ones. You yeah, know, very light ones. Day. Yeah. And with yellow filter. It's a little tease. I don't, I don't get a pair like that. So what to you expect. Need spe spe special outfit for that, you know, yeah. just like... 200k, 8 yeah. max, event number 7. You're about so to get the guy, like... So is the guy with the... See, that's that's, that's Sean different. Winter. That's, that would not fit. I think Jams over like the Phil uh, Ivy open and the Leon Sturm small blind flat. It's going to pick up the dead 54k in the middle. <laughs> the dude's just like, an absolute rock star. Maria, like got a bit of a man club, crush, you know? not going to lie. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, yeah, like a, a light I feel like he down. could be in Top Gun or something with those shades and <laughs> shirt on. Sean's always been a bit of a cool character in the poker world. In the what? In the yeah, something like that. Sean, <laughs> well, I mean, you have a high, re a high number. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's good. <laughs> Sounds like some jokes being exchanged as to who's in for how many bullets. I mean, must be nice. 60k buy to just casually joke over. For two, three, four bullets. Seth still in front. Nothing's changed apart from Sean Winter joining us at this feature table. Chip Counts brought to you by our title sponsor, GG Poker, the 2023 Triton Poker Series in London. Great. Trying to all to make more than one. 
Too, too, what? too old. Too old? Mm-hmm. You're going to pay the bill? Huh? You're supposed to have tons of bullets. Yeah. The tournament. I get it now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I need to wire more money here just in case. I, I didn't see it. Rebuys. It's not enough. I'll see it. What I sent. I mean, it could not be. In. Hopefully it's enough, but <coughs> just in case. <laughs> Sounds like Ivy's really? sweating. Really? Like Ivy, yeah. you got second in yeah, the Ivy. mystery bounty, and what if I, run might, I mean, I get it, though. It's a There's a 200K just, just for funsies. Oh, okay. So the next step. 15. Here. 15. Oh, I didn't know I could do that. I didn't Good know news I could is. I can. It's just the only thing I told okay. Tell me you need to buy in this event. And don't do London. What about Brazil? What about Brazil? Or Cape Town? Cape Town is the best Ooh. place I've ever been. Cape Town in Africa, yeah. South Africa. So nice. Hard to get there with some people. Monte Carlo, people can bring family, go around far. No more Sochi? 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 It's now a war, how to go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Keep planting the seed, Mr. Ivy. Into bosses head Brazil and South Africa. Sound like great potential destinations. I do love me some Cape Town. I have to agree with Ivy there. Another 9-5 in the middle. Seth is going to empty the clip after opening. The more you make, the more they take. the gun. Until 50%. Wow. It's crazy. So London Casino, very hard to make money now. At least boss knows why I no longer live in the UK. Not a fan of the tax man myself. First time, first now you know I'm not raising. Oh, Good start. Thanks. Where are you from? Uh, I live in Puerto Rico. Oh. Probably the first person in history for their first turn to be a 60k. Not saying someone's oh, no, the I highest. Played, I played tournaments like. Oh, uh, I thought you meant the uh, first yeah, yeah. ever turn. <laughs> Hanukovs doesn't like it. Any info? I'm trying to get a read off of Gottlieb. All right. Wow. Okay, Seth. We see you, dude. Might be terrible fault. The triple. The dick pills. The the dick pills are are pretty. Yeah, I did. If you tell me what you had, I'll tell you what I had now. Uh, he's four. But hey, now hey. because of King COVID, there's a lot of people who... <laughs> okay. I love this honesty between Ponocos and Seth. I heard, I heard the locals don't treat the people from out of town very well. It's 10-10, right? In general. No, there's like one loud so in 12 years, uh, there's some over business in Puerto Rico. Yeah. It's considered uh, U.S. Right? Puerto Rico. If I still have yeah, a business by then. But you don't have to pay, you don't have to pay tax on... Uh, 40? on, on Hopefully, long term games or something like that, right? You don't enjoy it? No, I mean, I enjoy it, but I think at some point I want to be retired, you know? Yeah. I guess. Yeah, you're right. I guess I could be retired now too if I wanted to. You can just cut your hours back a little bit. Yeah. You like the beach? Yeah, of course. Maybe I won't be. Yeah, there's a nice. Have you even It's not about money, it's about. The, just the visit, the, uh, uh, the Ritz in Dorado, it's like 30 minutes. It's always a little bit of money, right? Probably one of the <laughs> nicest. <laughs> okay. Sturm <laughs> raising it up with yeah. Jack yeah. 9 yeah. suited yeah. in the cutoff. Uh, I don't have private jet money, then, really. You know, scope it out and see if you could ever live there. I can rent yeah, a private I'm gonna jet. Do, I'm going to do that one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's tough when you start setting down the Hmm. You're playing the invitation, right? Yeah. Hmm? I think you got approved for the VIP. Sorry? They put it on the grill. Yeah, on the pro side or VIP? Pain. 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 Pain.
pink. Uh, yeah. I understood paint and I thought you just meant a different color. Yeah, okay. Pink. Uh, I, I, I have no idea about pink. Curse. Is that like. Huh? Hmm? I don't know if I'm going to Well, it's only on the back, so I, even if it's contagious, I don't think you'd die from Great. it. Great. Well, I bet you do. Marie and I, of course, will always do our best to keep silent when players, you viewers are here for the likes of Ivy, Paul, Gottlieb, uh, involved in conversation. Yeah, there were two side combos <laughs> happening simultaneously, and both were pretty interesting. Yeah, it was hard to yeah. follow. You had to choose one. Yeah. You had to choose one. But where to focus attention to, I'll tell you what, David Malka, who playing his very first Triton event, not series, first event, jumping so straight into the 60K night. with an open end that does not want to see <laughs> an eight. That's worse, no? As he opts to check raise out of the big and apply pressure on Ponikovs. Backdoor hearts. As well as the best hand. 104 runners, by the way, in this 60k. As soon as this hand's over and done with, we'll give you some info on the prize pool. As the board pairs on the turn. All the immediate draws bricking 185 to fight for. See if David Malka can find the double barrel. Kind of like the Similar-ish ballpark figure, round one third. Gonna knuckle it on over to Ponikovs. He's really giving me. <laughs> uh, you know those. You like it too? Yeah, you know those like one dollar teddy bear machines that you like get <laughs> the crane and like Ponikovs looks like the prize that you win <laughs> at the the fairground. You know, I love it. A small bet here, turn just north of twenty percent. Malka, deeming the price a good one. Try and see the straight. Fortunately for him, doesn't make the eight high straight. Ponikov's improves to two pair and rivers. Decent showdown now. This hand might not be over and done with yet. Ponikovs now with showdown value. It's going to check back. I used to value that on the turn. Sean Winter. Sean Winter <laughs> just always with the one liners. Um, How is he so quick, Maria? He's so good. So funny. Just. His brain just immediately just goes there with the one-liner. Sees the nine high. <laughs> it's like <laughs> nice value bet on the turn, mate. I would love him in my home game. Not as a player, but just to have around. You know what? I think we need to try to get Sean Winter in the booth as a guest commentator. That's what I would love to hear. I agree. How do we uh, play until the end of this break? Ten more minutes. 
That's it? No, no, no. Until until this break. Last one no. more level. 50 more minutes. Yeah. 50 and we're done? Yep. Yes, sir. Y'all heard it. 50 more minutes until day one in this tournament How much is, is done. Like that is when the coverage will end and then you all no, pack it up and no, well, that was just the see first you guys back here tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah, I believe. So, uh, really? Yeah, it's kicking things to, off earlier than we have been tomorrow, according to yeah, there was, it was 30 producer for yeah. James so Dempsey. The last couple tournaments have been 12 levels. Start of day two will actually be at 12 p.m. I think it's 12 only going forward. Yeah. So 1 p.m. local time. We'll be going live as so we'll be on an hour-long delay to protect the, the, right. the integrity of the game. Well, and we've got a long day ahead of us yeah. tomorrow. It would appear so. Yeah, it's... it's uh, it would it would be sad to miss the next one, I guess. Huh? I feel like you did this, but also not sad. <laughs> Probably. What's the next one? Two hundred. Tomorrow? Yeah. Two hundred? Yeah. It's Tomorrow's two hundred. Already? Yeah. And Five? then the one it's it's not the invitational, but it's the uh, it's two hundred. They made it a three hundred k. Look, we didn't. I yeah. Uh, I mean, it was it was always that, but like this is the first time up. they've done this with a Triton where they've had a, another. I thought really it was huge like a one hundred and fifty. Like last 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 series, it was only seventy five. Oh, it's the same as seventy five. What? It was the same as seventy five. switching it. Instead mm -hmm. of a seventy five, it's a two hundred. Yeah. And nobody's complaining about it. Who doesn't love more high stakes? Just keep upping the ante. See how high we could go. How many six-figure buy-ins we can squeeze into one series. I'm complaining about it. <sighs> just because I got nothing else to complain about, so. Except that yeah. food you just ate. <laughs> True. 200 has 45 minute levels. I mean, I, I, I like it because you still get and, time to do whatever and, um, morning or whatever. There's only 10 levels, only 10 levels tomorrow of the 200K. 45 minutes and Reg is open until start of day two. So anybody playing, like everybody playing, even the winner of this tournament will still be able to Reg because it's uh, Reg until start of day two. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a good idea to make it 200. I do. I don't know. We'll see how it works out. I, think, I was talking to Paul about it. Um, he was saying that he's hoping and thinks there will be some some VIPs that will play the 200 that wouldn't play the 75. Mm. But we'll see. Yeah, that's right. We don't have a 75 on the schedule this time around. We've never had a 60, or at least not since I joined over a year ago. Certainly not had a 200 that hasn't been an invitational. I do feel like London is a good place for it just because the ease of getting here compared to some of the other stops. And we've already certainly seen that in some of the earlier tournaments with first timers and people choosing London as also just a desirable place to visit. Gottlieb opened from the hijack with fours and Sturm came along with King 10 off in the small blind and Winter, nice suited, connected hand in the big. Oh, a little something for Sturm, for Winter, Gottlieb, only one over card to his pair. Player's gonna check it around to him. Gottlieb with the C bet, trying to shed all of the overcard equity that's out there amongst his two opponents. But Sturm, with a really nice hand. 57. Check raising, but small, but does feel committal.
What does Winter want to do with his flush draw? Probably would be a little bit happier to be drawing to the nuts in this situation. Sturm could certainly have some better suited combos. The ace X of hearts, the king X of hearts. But given Sturm's stack size, Winter <laughs> says raise the minimum, just trying to shut out Gottlieb behind him. I don't think I've ever raised the minimum. ever heard that before. And it's been a long, long stint in the booth the last few years. It's, um, it's happy to stack off against Sean Winters. Raise the minimum. We say Jack on the turn for a swear. How about the four <laughs> spades? <laughs> then you probably had a heart. I think so, yeah. Stern finds the hold and... Totally. ...to 43 <laughs> bigs, fresh off that 50k final table, straight into the 60k, max late reg. 22-year-old German pro. Building a name for himself. I was actually just gonna call. Uh, I'm live poker oh, wait, scene. You, you, yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna call yeah, just to, to see a turn well. too. Dang it, Sean. Practice. Sure. Sean, at a loss for words. <laughs> Sean was probably just thinking, like. I don't care about the fact that I shut you out and you would have won the pot. What about the chips I just lost and doubled up Sturm with? Boring turn. No? <laughs> no? Sean seems more annoyed at the fact that the turn didn't give him a you know, additional outs. Jack, King, and Eight. Sadly, I'm not the one who decides. I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of don't care. Too rich. Yeah, I guess so, huh? Too rich. Too rich. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll take the too rich. <laughs> I'll care for the 200k, but not for the 60k. Honestly. I feel like I've seen. You became a millionaire. Uh, 29. I remember because uh, I had a goal of getting there before 30. In hindsight, do you think that was a good goal to set? What? Do you think that was a good goal to set? To set? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think it is. Yeah. So, you told I think you if you want serious advice, the uh, yeah. best, the, what I could say is don't, yeah. don't give yourself goals that are too far above where you are, give yourself reasonable goals and then make a new goal when you hit that goal. Don't try, because you'll just exactly, paralyze. But you want to make a goal you'll that paralyze, you're not supposed yeah. to reach easy yeah. Yeah. Well, if you, if you give yourself too ambitious of a goal, you might paralyze yourself and then just feel like there's no chance where, you yeah, know. Yeah, but you, you still have to set it higher than your easy. Yeah. I like that. I like that advice. It makes sense. You know, if you're going to set arbitrary goals, make sure that they're uh, achievable ones so that you can keep yourself motivated to then move on to the next milestone, the next milestone, because it's easy in poker and in life, right, Maria, to get demotivated if you set a massive goal and the end doesn't seem in sight to kind of get distracted or... I, I can see why Seth would offer that advice to the 22-year-old Leon Sturm. 
It definitely feels like a very genuine question, too, coming oh, out of Sturm. It's 22. You know, absolutely ready like to receive that type of advice. Before 30. There was exactly that. I mean, I, I said that when I was 26, so it's not like I said it for decades, you know. Mm. But I set the goal, yeah, when I um, started my business, I said, I want to try to... So you felt it's important to reach exactly that net worth? Oh, no. I just think it's good to have attainable goals. No. Yeah. No, I just... Uh, can we get this guy a podcast or a, something? An attainable goal. A million by 30 is a pretty, like, it's, it's, a, it's a strong goal, but it's not crazy unattainable, you know? My first goal is just to be successful not having a boss, having my own business, and make, you know, 100k a year and not have to work for anybody. That was my first goal. And then my next goal was a millionaire by 80. It's like in business, you have a bit more, I mean, maybe not, but more gradual growth towards that. Seven yeah, five. poker, it's yeah, kind of... Yeah, poker, yeah. It's, it's uh, yeah. Just like meeting, meeting, meeting. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Internal. Yeah, in poker, yeah, poker maybe it's more like just don't lose a million dollars before you're <laughs> maybe that's maybe that's the right goal. Uh, it depends on your approach for sure. <laughs> I get mine. Twenty seven I guess. Paul doesn't get sticky with the fives. Makes a good fold but against Winter numbers. here with the Your overpair. 29 and my 27. Yeah. Probably the same as like 3.5 milli or maybe 5 milli. How old are you? 31. 41. Almost 32. How old are you? 22. Yeah, you look young. Oh. That makes Reasonable. Sense. <laughs> Reasonable. Yeah. So, uh, new level, 6, 12, 12. His million dollar goal is 15. <laughs> <laughs> Couple years left. Yeah, not really. I said, you said you won the 50K, the World Series, right? Please, you right. It puts you free. <laughs> you know how that stuff works. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. I got you. That's for life. I got That's you. for life, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I gotcha. Lines up to 6K, 12K with the 12K. Ante. Sturm <laughs> jokingly saying that he's set for life after taking down the 50K at the World Series of Poker this year. But, of course, for a lot of players, when we talk about buy ins that get that's steep. Of course, there's going to be some action oh, sold, yeah. some pieces swapped, <laughs> but still not too early no, for Sturm think, to yeah. make smart so. decisions with the money yeah, gotta, that he made. Whatever I amount that what about, turns yeah. out to be. I've heard things. They're gonna make him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I will, I will have new goals then. <laughs> it's yeah, always the talk of the town, isn't it? Nowadays, yeah, when someone ships a, different number. Right. a big tournament for the first yeah, time, who's maybe not, not crazy, made a name for themselves it's in the high roller scene, everyone yeah. to speculate. How much did he have? How much did he have of himself? Or she? Yeah. Mm. Don't ask questions you don't want to know the answers to. That's my advice. Sturm turning more equity on a board that really favors 54. his pre-flop opening range and Hoping to shed Malka of, off of these weak one pair holdings. Yeah, I know we've touched on it already, but it's really clear to see why this young kid has the reputation that he has already. But Malka, no pushover. Keeping him honest for two and. 
Oh. Damn, then gets there. Just really putting Storm on a hand like Queen Jack, Queen 10, Jack 10. And now Storm really hoping that Malka actually had some type of Ace X holding that he would love to get value from, but instead, I like their Malka a lot weaker no. than that. What would he be willing to pay, though, to see it? I prefer to have Queen Jack, but and what Jack is a reasonable. Square G's a gigant, no? That makes sense, yeah. Speak Portuguese to him? Yeah, yeah, he's Brazilian. 214 in the middle. If I Three, three, three seven back. Do we just go <laughs> for the jugular here? The B150. <laughs> Our opponent has an ace. Is he really going to fold? It looks like he's going to go for uh, all of it, bar the 1k chip back and snap fold for Malka. Failed attempt to keep Stern honest across three streets. This 60k, by the way, just scrolling through the field. Streaming? They're streaming. That's some serious potential to become another. Triton Classic, I mean, exactly that just to list off some of the names, Jason Kuhn, Greenwood, Voris, Barbero, Davies, Petrangelo, like Boyfin, aka Marcus yeah. Lykonen, Espin Jorstad, Alex yeah. Kulev, Pascal Lefrancois, Santos Savana, Sean Winter, Kerry Katz, Dan Smith, Ivy, that. Kelly, Makita Batiakuski, uh, Brewer, Justin well, Saliba, Fedor Holtz, uh, Timothy uh, Adams, all still in the mix. 36 players left. When I'm in a flight. That makes sense. Alex Boyko leading the field. It's two seven figure payouts in this one. 1.57 million will be going to the eventual champion. 17 places paid with a min cash of 98,000 as Stone Flats plus one. Some pro. Some. Brazilians, rather, in the mix as well. This is one of them. I mean, you want it? Yeah. We got. I think I'm going to have both in 32 minutes, so let's take it. Thanks. That'd be impressive. I do drink a lot of water. <laughs> I need a few rounds in sauna to drink that amount, I guess. Yeah, I don't want to win this spot. It'll be a big downswing. <laughs> six, six, six on the flop boat for Sturm. Actually, that's not true, right? I saw Kuhn win a tournament for 666,000. He won everything after right that? after. <laughs> Celuon continuing the more, the de the devil likes to represent the strongest part of and under the gun opening range. That's the series of six. Six is doing well in this series. Um, there's tons of sixes on the board. Yeah. Uh, you're right. Weird. Yeah, right. I didn't think about it. Right. About those six. This could turn into a really fun one. Rodrigo unblocking <laughs> ace high. So unblocking the cool, cool folds of the world. Eight <laughs> diamonds on the turn. <laughs> Some concerns, you know, if Leon has nines, he's going to have eights, one. tens, maybe even. Jacks at some frequency good, good start to feels the, uh, unlikely given how deep they were. I, uh, to start of the hand, but Rodrigo uh, got to continue got King, telling Daniel the story, Bruce. Maria. I got Daniel to call, that he's call got a big pair. Yeah, really trying to target some of these cool things that you <laughs> mentioned, but especially <laughs> effective against some of the smaller to middling pairs. If you're hoping you to call here as Sturm, 
To see your opponent uh, shut down is one thing, but if you see your opponent continue for a triple barrel, then yeah. your nines are really going to be put to the test. Oh, my. Oh. Jack well, of spades. Apologies, Maria, for cutting you off. Come on. No, I was going to say, well, now <laughs> we know. That was just dumb. That was bad. Yeah. Yeah. But the other one wasn't so bad. The other one was just unlucky. Well, you make some hands, you'll get paid. Yeah. I mean, I got... It would have been more fun to off. see the deuce roll off and see what Celuan wanted to do there oh, after from getting Brazil. called twice. That's true. You're right. He's from Brazil. He's the hitting Brazilian, with the one, two, three. Yeah, the Brazilian factor should have been a consideration. <laughs> Truly are some of the toughest players in the world to play against. And always a treat to commentate on. That looks You're like savage. a wall of chips. That's your that is an right? over bet jam. And <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's a beautiful. A funny feeling that we were going to be seeing that regardless of the river. <laughs> the same he thought. He squeezes a lot. Rigo has really found. No, actually, no, actually I get your idea. One of the few hands that could look him up here. He's ahead of. To be honest, I don't think it's something Nine's like tens. complete out of line. It's fine. Sevens. Fades the snap as well, which is always nice. Some traps. Yeah. Could have eights and aces. Yeah, but other than that, Sturm's range certainly capped here. So if... Selwan knows that Sturm knows that, then could he perhaps get him to level himself into a call here when he is beat on the end, doesn't go for it? The classic, he knows that I know that he knows kind of leveling. See where your head's at. Straight back on the saddle. Getting involved with the ace deuce of spades. Sean Winter just kind of flat. The Cowboys one seat over and opening the door for a potential squeeze behind or a potential flat. Some suited connectors for Seth. What does David want to do? Strikes me as, uh oh, I mean, is this just the classic, I can't resist oh. squeezing with 105 out there and Sean Winter has played him like a fiddle. Sean loves it when a plan comes together. and 30,000 out there with just 25k invested. How good does that feel? It increases stack by almost 50% without even having to see a flop turn or river as Malka is caught with his hand in the cookie jar. He's going to ask for a count. So if there's anything that the viewers at home take away 
from the Triton Super High Roller Series is Sean Winter's posture <laughs> at the feature table. One you of know, the best. Exactly. Saves you, you know, a quarterly visit to the osteopath. Trying to make Sean Winter swear. Sean will happily seal five for 412 apiece as the Queen Jack does hit the mark. <laughs> Leon Sturm's face just looked like, yeah. come on, bro. That checks out. Had ace, deuce of spades. And with that, Maria, we are wrapping things up. Just as I was eating in event number six, <laughs> Sean leaves us with the final one-liner of the night, just as things were heating up for him. Sean Winter picking up 230k up to 617,000. And with that, we're picking things up here in the booth tomorrow, 1.30 local time. We'll be jumping back into the 60k where we'll be playing down to a champion and said champion will be walking away with 1.5 million and change two seven figure payouts We're going to be going to one of the or two rather of the final 35 and it's none other than seven time triton champion jason coon leading the field coming back tomorrow uh maria just a lot of fun with that cast of characters in particular we didn't really have much to jump into in the booth ourselves. There's just a lot of banter. It didn't really feel like a 60K. It was more of like a, a home game vibe. That's definitely the theme I feel like across the board in these tournaments. And whether it's a first timer, a newcomer, uh, somebody who hasn't been here before, they're always welcomed into the fold. And there's always going to be some casual convo. And of course, Sean Winter's one-liners, we didn't want to talk over that. Well, as some of the players teased as well, tomorrow, the two 100k is going to be kicking off so the plan is we come back 130 maria her alongside ali najad will be kicking things off we're playing down to a champion and then the stakes really get high here as we warm ourselves up to that luxon pay invitational from Mir maria rather and myself here in the booth i'm going to wish you good night and we'll see you all tomorrow for some more triton super high roller series london action